will be on and joining us to talk about what he's been up to lately. BMX dad life and much more coming up. Uh, Chad Reed will be coming on. Robbie Wageman will be coming on. Nuclear Blast Yamaha rider. He is. Uh, he just won a two-stroke race at Glen Helen this past uh, uh, weekend. So we'll have Robbie Wageman on. We were supposed to have our buddy Kenneth Watson on, but Kenneth uh, canceled on us uh, about five minutes ago. Never change, Watson. So what we're going to do is uh, just tweet us at Pulp MX Show. Tell us who you want to hear from, and we're going to give somebody a call tonight, uh, somebody on at Pulp MX, uh, Show Twitter. We've already got some recommendations. Seth Rarick, David Villeman have come in, uh, Chris Betts, Michael Byrne. These are all the suggestions that are flowing in. So please uh, give us a tweet and tell us who you want to hear from, and uh, we can figure it out a little bit. So uh, thank you to uh, uh, everybody for uh, suggesting that. So we'll – We'll work on that, but Reed and Wageman are coming on as well. Also, I want to thank the, our partners, Motorsport.com, Fly Racing, Decal Works, Vortex Racing, Race Tech Suspension and Engines, Vertex Pistons, X-Brand Goggles, Michelin Starcross 5, Maxima USA, the Firepower Batteries and Chains Guys, Pro Filter, Skosh, Atlas Neck Brace, FMF, Guts Racing, Get Data, Works Connection, OGO Power Sports, Art of Sport, MotorcycleIndustryJobs.com. We'll have the job of the week coming up here shortly. Ride Engineering, product of the week as well. WUSA, love the guys at W, doing a great job with everything that they got going on there. And uh, Intense Cycles, Works Chassis Lab, all on board with us. And uh, just starting out now, you may have seen the ORW butt patch on the uh, Chaparral Honda squad of Mumford & Shock. It's the off-road warehouse. They're, uh, they're an off-road truck warehouse, and they're uh, on our show now. We're very, very pleased and proud to bring these guys to our shows. They got locations in Temecula. San Diego, Corona, and Vegas here in Vegas. So they're proud to be supporting Team Chaparral in the 250 West with Mumford & Shock. ORW is the place to go for all your truck and off-road accessories needs. Stop in and check out the latest in truck, Jeep, Overland, UTV, and racing products from the industry's leading brands. ORW stores are staffed by knowledgeable, experienced team. Plus, they install everything they sell, from suspension kits and tires and wheels to steps, bed accessories, and more. Get your bike to the track with style and performance from Off-Road Warehouse. To find the nearest location, check out offroadwarehouse.com. Again, Temecula, San Diego, Corona, Vegas. Uh, if you want a deal from the folks at ORW, they, along with everybody else on our show, just about are on board with helping you, our listeners out. So use the contact form at pulpamex.com. Send us an email. We'll line you up at the closest store to your house, and we will give you a deal. ORW, offroadwarehouse.com. Welcome to the show. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. And again, uh, sponsor deals on pulpamexshow.com. Uh, for all the codes and everything else, we can hook you up that way. So thank you to the folks at uh, uh, all our sponsors, all of our partners. And if you go to a sponsor deals on pulpamexshow.com, you can see the codes for Karcher, for Arma, the couple of people that we uh, affiliate with, and everybody else in the industry. So uh, let's welcome our co-hosts in here tonight, uh, both of them uh, dear friends of mine. Uh, first up from Fly Racing and flyracing.com. He's a German Supercross champion. He's a Montreal Supercross champion. It's Jason Thomas. What's up, JT? I'm good. Did a little uh, e-biking today. Mm -hmm. We'll we'll get into that. <laughs> Do what's, a little. What's, what's going on with the chairs? What's happening with the chairs? Well, we got a, we got we issues. got issues on the yeah, table. Yeah, there's a whole mess oh. going on here. So what's I had to slide this way. I'm I got a lot of tension. Like the mic oh. doesn't really stretch this far. Oh. so I had to slide this Needs way. Needs to yank it more. A lot of tension. It's not yeah. great. Okay. I right. tried to pull it harder. I got unplugged while you were doing your. I plugged intro. them back in underneath the table. It's hey, what's up? Chris Kiefer, what's up? Kiefer right. testing, how are you? Hey, everybody, 96.9 <laughs> FM. That's right, it was 87 degrees in Vegas. Right. How's it going? Good, how are you? Good. Uh, this is bugging me. Why? So what's wrong with it? I should have I checked I should have checked this earlier. I'm going to fix this. Yeah, I, so I, would, I would love that. You gentlemen okay. discuss the e-bike ride. Yeah. I'm going to go down below okay. and Whoa. fix this out, okay? Well, take your time. All right. Hook us up. <laughs> Sounds gay. So anyway, let me tell the story, JT. This is how I saw it. Bring it. We go on this e-bike ride, of course, as usual, Steve hosts this, you know, wonderful. There, you go. go ahead and get Come in. Come on boy. in there. There, yeah. Um, yeah if you're bareback, and be careful, dude. <laughs> five minutes in, I get a slice of my tire. My shit's blown out. Right. So it was not five minutes in. Thirty minutes in. Okay. Is that better? Yeah. Well, I mean, it do, it wasn't five minutes. Like we were all the way on the other side of the. It was. It was deal. around a little hill. We were. <laughs> we, Hold on. We might have been in a different county. <laughs> Hold on. So I did not know. First of all, you've never ridden an e-bike. Never. No. Then I come to find out later on that you've only ridden a mountain bike 10 times in your life. Probably 10. I mean, definitely not more than like 15 or 20. That's for sure. Right. So we're pedaling. It's windy as balls in Vegas, 30-mile-an-hour winds. We got a headwind. 
Little JT's getting blown all over hell from the wind. I'm, I'm riding behind him. I, like, I didn't feel like I was getting blown all over. It was whatever. I, I, ride, I ride my road bicycle in the wind a lot, dude, so it's whatever. A couple times we had some moments. Well, that was more from the e-bike. What I was explaining to you guys because – so I'm used to a bicycle, right? When you let off and you brake, it brakes, right. right? So that's the motion I'm used to. Well, that e-bike, it wants to keep going. Right. Like it's it's gonna it's got its own little engine going, so my apexes were all jacked up, so I was pushing wide in the corners <laughs> right. and whatever. Yeah, but a scary. Uh, so we re- we basically rode thirty minutes. If you can picture you riding a bicycle thirty minutes, you get geared up. It takes you thirty minutes to get geared up to go on a mountain bike ride. So it does not take thirty minutes, dude, to get to your get shit on a gathered bicycle? up, to pump your tires up, check everything out, load up, go to where we're well, going. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm saying minutes. once we were there. Yes, it was like um, two minutes. We get there, we ride, Psst. thought it was a fucking rattlesnake. It was a blown tire. I said, yo, Steve, JT, uh, I got a sliced tire. So Steve has uh, parts to fix this on the trail, but he's like, do you want to fix this? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'll fix it. And he's like, nah, let's just go back to the to the uh, bicycle store, which is right there where we, where we park and go. And I agree. So I ride a couple miles back. Um, I get to the bicycle place. The guy, I go, hey man, can you uh, can I purchase a tire, as well as uh, can you you know hook this up for me? I don't got time. Straight up, just said, looked at me and said, I don't got time. So we're like, okay, I'm going to proceed to fix my own tire. I look over at JT and Steve, and I go, hey, they don't have it. Uh, he's not going to do it. Homeboy doesn't have time. I'll change it. I don't like that answer, by the way. Hold I, on. I hate that answer. <laughs> JT's like, up. Oh. That was good enough for me. Yeah. That was, that's, that's, well, hold that's, on. That's, that's good like, enough for me. JT's like, yeah, I'm good if you guys – like, I'm good. Well, okay. Well, slow down. Okay. I can't. Slow down. This is one – it's 1.15 p.m. Oh, my God. Okay. We have a show that starts at 5. We are way the hell over there. We're practically in California. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> right? If he was out in the desert, if we put him in the desert he, naked and afraid, he'd fucking die. Yes, that's a fact. But – so complete think about it. colossal failure. But you got to fix. You got to fix your tire still. Yes. You're the one that said 30, it first. 30, you're 40 like, minutes. You're like, yeah, okay. But by the time like I fix, like he's like, you guys go ahead. Yes. I'm, like, I'm not gonna just. We're not gonna just leave you at the truck. I was going to ride if I fixed it, and I would have met you back. But we didn't have fun. time. Like, it's gonna be two o'clock. Even you said it's like it's gonna be two o'clock by the time we get going again. Like, what are we gonna do here? Right. And I'm like, we don't have to keep going because of me. I don't care. Obviously, I don't <laughs> care. Steve, let me ask you this. Ha, 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 ha. In his tone, did he sound like he was good to go? Yeah, he sounded like he was very good to go. Oh, yeah. yeah. Very I was good absolutely go. good to go. No problem. <laughs> you know, JT, you, you know, you're an athlete. You, you, you rode bike a ton. Yeah. You raced motocross for, for 100 fucking years. And, um, but you've always been like, ah, I crash on mountain bikes. So I yeah. don't really like them. I do. You know what I mean? I, I don't, yeah. I've never, like, you, you, you've bailed out of a few mountain bike rides since you come here. And I'm always like, Come on, dude. Like, it's a fucking mountain bike. Like, you know what I mean? You're an athlete yeah. and it's a mountain bike. I don't know, Kiefer. <laughs> like, <laughs> he like, didn't uh, like it. He didn't yeah, he like didn't it. like it. Like, no. like he, there's something to him yeah. bailing out of mountain bike rides. Well, I will say that I was way less sketchy for me feeling with the e-bike because it is more stable. Bigger, it's yeah. heavier. Yeah. The, and the tires are more planted. What happens to me on a mountain bike is I, I start out cautious because I'm scared. And then... I get in the groove of it, and then I think I'm on a dirt bike. And then I overtrust the front tires, and I come in too hot, and I think it's a dirt bike, and it's going to respond like a dirt bike, and it has the capabilities of a dirt bike, and it has none of those things, and end up <laughs> oh. flipping down a mountain. None of that's good. Well, I'm glad you got to ride an e-bike in 10 I enjoyed it. I would yeah. do it again. No right. problem. I'll go 30 minutes again. Let's go 30 minutes You know what again. I would enjoy, though? I would enjoy, like, okay, I have a full-time job, so I'm at work, but when you go, like, super early in the mornings, mm-hmm. that would be fun. No wind. It's not hot out. Temperature's awesome. Right. Like uh, that would be cool. It was. I, I get up super early anyway, so that it would was be windy out there. Cool. Yeah, it's a little bit more picturesque in the morning. I bet huh. too. Yeah, whatever. Third time in a row, he's come on and worn the FXR logo. He's paid to shirt, hat, just repping the brand. Just is it a is coincidence or are we uh, just uh, repping the brand? Okay, all right, just check it, bro. It's, it's fine. It's, it's fine. fine. He's wearing a fly shirt. <laughs> Yeah, Motorsport Fly Decal Works <laughs> on board with us tonight. <laughs> um, so that was fun. It was good to have. Which, I mean, honestly, we would have only been another 30 minutes. That's what I'm uh, saying. Uh, like, okay, it wasn't, yeah. it's, I was definitely fine stopping, Yes, but I was okay to keep going too. I wasn't like, hey, I think we're kind of done but here, But what guys. I like about the dynamic of buddies, right, if you have buddies, instead of just going, hey, I'm done, you would not say that. You're like, oh, I'm good if you guys are good. 
That means yeah. in the world of buddiness, you're done. I was totally fine to keep going. <laughs> oh, my God. I ride a bicycle like an hour and a half every yeah, single day. Yeah, I feel like endurance-wise, he's Oh, fine. no, I'm no. not complaining. Oh, like, yeah, 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 I know that. I just feel like he. I'm good. Right, like, right. I'm no, not yeah, having that well, good of a time to it, keep like, going. Like, it when, wasn't going well. When we crossed that first rock thing and you said you had to get off, I'm like, oh. Like, you don't trust a mountain bike. Well, no, I hopped off, had flats on, right? So it was yeah, easy. Yeah. And then yeah, I yeah. didn't shift down, and right. I'm still trying to sort out when to shift to boost and yeah, trail and yeah. all that stuff, yeah, too. Yeah. So, yeah, whatever. Okay. Yeah, what happened? Good. He saw it the first time I spun because I was in the wrong gear. Yeah. So I'm trying yeah, to got, sort all, all he, that he out. He said it perfectly. It's a 125. You got to shift it. Yeah. 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 Up and down, up and down. He's right? got to ride like, like a 125. Yeah, you really do shift a ton. Yeah. But yeah. anyways, I'm glad we all went. Good oh, times. Thanks to the folks at I would go again, no problem. You should really do like a pre pulp show mountain bike ride. I do that a lot with guests. Pass the guests. Organization. I don't know what that means. 20 people. No. Let's go on a ride. No, I don't do that. No, no, that sounds horrible. I don't want a bunch of people out there with me on the trails. Yeah, that, <laughs> no, that sounds terrible. All right. I don't want to do that. Uh, directing the show tonight, uh, holding everything down there, working on the app while we're doing it. Hopefully he's not tired tonight. <gasps> Feels hard. Lee, Travis Marks. What's up, Marks? Happy to report that I am not. Okay. All right. So. Hey, you know, I was stocking the fridge with Red Bulls. Uh-huh. <laughs> and I started thinking, that guy doesn't even drink Red Bulls anymore. That's uh, that's false. When's the last? Jeremy, if you're listening, I need some. Thank you. No, but really, do you? Are you you've been cutting back on Red Bulls. I have Big been time. cutting back. Right. Yes, uh, I will probably never be completely off. I right. enjoy them far right. too much, and they help me work. That's mm. my excuse. I, I just I haven't so. seen you dip into those here in the studio. So, um, well, I didn't get my afternoon nap today. Okay, so I'm probably going to shortly. Okay, all right, fair enough. Taking your calls over there, holding things down. Uh, the Talon Taylor. What's up, bud? How are you? Hey, good. How are you? Good. How's, what's happening, man? Ah, not much. Right. Good to have you in. Uh, Tiff uh, Legendary let you come in. That's very nice of him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had me on the schedule for last week, too. I think he was trying to get me to come in on our off week. Oh, yeah, yeah. Figures. <laughs> Figures. How's your neck? Back. Good. Yeah. yeah. About ready to ride. I think in two weeks I'm going to try riding. Nice. Yeah. So I'm he's gonna probably try, a I'm going to try tomorrow. Yeah. So, yeah. Ooh. Yeah. We're going to talk red. about that. We're going to ride. Let's ride, talk ride. about that later. Okay. Yeah, right. we are. We're also going to talk. Uh, you had a very popular video out where uh, you versus Aiden, your kid, yep. did some motos. I have some things to say. There's some <laughs> so controversy. Do, so do I. And we're going to bring in Heather, oh, your wife, God. later on the show. I apologize in advance, everybody. Yep. We'll see how that goes. So, um, so Talon, so far, because um, of Watson Balin, who are people want to hear from? Uh, so far, we get a lot of Rarick and DV. Mm. And then a few Rarick. for Chiz. Huh. Rarick, huh? Burner, too. A lot for Burner. I wonder what, what's up with Rarick. It must be Chicks. Chicks, yeah. Tweet, chicks chicks saying yeah. it? Yeah, probably. Um, thanks to ORW again for coming on board. Really appreciate those guys. Uh, again, San Diego, Temecula, Corona Vegas stores. Uh, use the uh, email form on pulpamex.com to send us an email. Um, we're going to talk some silly season stuff. Looks like AP is mulling over a Red Bull KTM offer. Oof. So we'll talk about that a little bit. Uh, I got some other stuff on that end of stuff. JT, this... This uh, coming Saturday at Atlanta, we are going uh, for three in a row in Atlanta. You're debuting some fly racing mesh. Here? Yes, Friday. It'll go live Friday, but yeah, all the riders yeah. will wear it Saturday. Um, yeah, it's it's every time this this year, this part of the year. Um, normally, it's in March. Normally, it's Daytona. Unfortunately, if you follow the news, you've seen all the shipping containers that are all off the coast of California yes. and every other place. So that really put us behind. Oh, he goes around. He goes Red Bull. <laughs> Uh, that really put us yeah. behind, so we are doing it at Atlanta instead, um, which it's okay. I would have liked to have it a month ago because inventory is really low for everybody in the country right now, but these things happen, so, so we will be going live this Friday. On sale at Dealers Friday, Yes, and uh, riders will be in them on Saturday, and fuck you, Kiefer. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. I it's going to be great. I it's like gonna be Kinetic great. Mesh, honestly. It was good. It's good gear. Yeah, um, so check that out, everybody, if you can. Also, JT, there's a Fly uh, Road to Recovery Ride Day. At uh, uh, Elsinore, Elsinore, yep. the weekend before the first national. Yeah, yeah. So Road Recovery is putting on a great event. Um, obviously, you know they do great things for people that really need it, and uh, we will be a large part of that. So uh, you can, I think there you can check out the Road Recovery website for more information. But uh, we will have our our Supercross setup down there, container and everything, and yep. then there's a ton of sponsors being involved. And then obviously everything goes to Road Recovery charity. So go check it out, do some riding. I'm sure it'll be. Uh, decent weather, May in California, and then uh, the na- first yeah. nationals the next weekend. Will the beast be there? He will be there. Oh, about yeah. Everyone should go then. <laughs> I got a buddy who just loves them. 
Really? He yeah. would pay you a lot of money for that water. Really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> that is not for sale. <laughs> okay. That is Just not Just saying he would sale. get a lot of... Fireman Dave, that's who it is. Oh, yeah. Fireman Dave does like... Dave Martinez? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Oh, no way. Loves. Yes. Yeah, oh, yeah. No, awesome. I've talked to Dave about it. He loves Bradshaw. You're right. Um, all right. So, again, thanks, thanks everybody, for listening. Um, Cooper Webb, what the... Yeah. He, I mean, we're looking good. Yeah. Beast mode. Right? Yeah. And, and I don't see... Like, so people are saying, oh, they... T- Tomac's the king of Daytona. These Atlanta tracks are not Daytona. These are soupy. Mm-hmm. They're yeah. going to be. Well, it's going to be. It's going to be like Charlotte. Yeah. Is what it's going to be. But not uh, rolling sand and that kind no, of stuff. No, it's, it's it, it, red, yeah. red, orange, Georgia clay. Right. Yeah. More supercross than Daytona. I think it's going to be. If, if anybody wasn't around then, too young, weren't around the sport, whatever, go back and watch the 96, 97, 98, 95 Charlotte races, and you'll get a, a very good idea of what it's going to be. Really long straightaways with tons of rhythm sections because they go the length of the speedway. Not a lot of turns. Red clay, perfect dirt. Yep. Um, I, personally, as a racer, you know, that was right when I turned pro. I raced 97 and 98 in Charlotte, and I thought it was awesome. I loved it. I would have raced there every single year. So I think as the guys, all these guys that are racing now, they weren't around then. I think they're going to have a great time. I think they're going to love it and ask to go back next year. Uh, yeah, it should be interesting to see. I, You know, part of this, I got to believe, JT – you know the Georgia Dome, the, no, the Mercedes Benz Dome, mm-hmm. and the series have not got along very well the last few years. It's expensive. Yes, really and, and expensive. security has been a big hassle. Yeah, uh, but that th- is, and that for Feld, they're like, so what? No, but bitching from teams, yeah, and, teams yeah, yeah. and riders. But it's and the so, cost, right? The co- I've heard it was like double. Yeah, double the cost of the Georgia Dome to attend an event there. So oh. we could be ending up at the Speedway in the future. Um, yeah, and we'll see how it goes. But you know that Mercedes Benz Dome is so nice. I hate to not be able to go there but if we can't go back to full capacity like and we saw the first baseball game today right your beloved blue jays played a full capacity Put stadium a hammer on the uh, they did the but it was like the full first full capacity sports game that i've seen but if we can't go back to that there's no chance because as soon as i saw that we're going to have limited capacity for supergrass i'm like well georgia dome's out or mercedes um, benz zone because there's no way we could afford it we could barely afford it before so to me, people are talking about Tomac and his Atlantas and a chance to get back into this. No, no. I, I just I don't see it. It's going to be soupy. I mean, Tomac could win. There's not saying he can't win. But back in the championship, no. Yeah, yeah these don't, these races don't favor Tomac like a Daytona. Are they able to use the full area in Atlanta versus like Daytona? They can't use all of it. I don't depends on what. Well, we're, we're I mean, it's yeah. it's still the the front grass area. It's right. gonna. I mean. So do you think lap times would be comparable to Daytona? Yeah, I do. Okay. It'll All be right. similar. I, I don't know if you've been on Instagram today, but like Dave Prater, it's people posted pictures. It's going to be very similar to Daytona, but not sand. It'll be all clay. Um, okay. Also, by the third one from sitting outside in Georgia, which if we don't get weather, which some people are saying there might be some weather, uh, it might be very hard packed. Well, and, and my question too is, you know, with a track like that, once they – because they have to lay that clay foundation, mm-hmm. it's difficult to change that. So are we going to see three very similar racetracks? I don't know. I, I think they have to because right. you weigh the clay down. That's your base. You can't just move all that base. Like that yeah, takes – Throw some water on it and move it? I don't know. I don't think you can, though. I don't I, – It'll look, be interesting. Go look at the photos, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Right. Like once they lay it down, you're going to – That's right. a, It's like a road. Like it's yeah, difficult to change. That's the base, so then they can just scrape the jumps off and put the move the jumps around on the Well, they the could base. change the jumps, but I think the layout, yeah. oh, the, the course, layout. would right. be the well, same. Um, I, I, I don't see – Anyway, Tomac is it has an advantage for these three, which is what I've read on some social stuff, and I don't see how I don't think anybody. It matters. Yeah, I don't think anybody's going to slow down this web guy. No, e- even if Tomac is on fire, if I think it's, out, it's, it's too far matter. gone. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. too far yeah. gone. Um, so um, Kenny has a one for six races, Kiefer. Yeah, I think uh, right, I just right. wrote this in my notes here. I think from what I've heard, and from what I've uh, some of this is coming from some of the Honda guys, obviously, but I think we'll see a different Kenny little bit some little changes oh. um so i'm not saying he's gonna be tons better but i think he'll yep he'll be a little bit mentally relaxed i think he got a little bit of a rest i think he needed some of that i think he needed a reset so if this helps anyone i think this helps kenny more than cooper yeah because count me as surprised that he had the lead in dallas three and got caught from behind like and do you think that's a fitness issue though no i don't no I think that's more of a mental breakdown issue as far as... I, I don't know. I, maybe because just Webb's going faster. <laughs> no, because you look at the end of that race, yeah. Kenny caught back up. And and you can't say Cooper was 
relax because he didn't have that big of a lead. Mm -hmm. He only had a second or two. So Kenny found something after watching Coop, and he picked up on it. It sucks to lead from the start at times. I'm sure you can attest to this. You don't know where that guy's going. You have to kind of think, man, that's, this guy's yeah, – you hear him behind you. Okay, that's must where he'd be making up time on me. Well, you don't really know until he gets by you. Those two sand doubles, he was getting killed before so the finish line. you think Kenny's going to develop some testing I think, and be a bit better? I think Kenny will win two more races. Out of two the out five of five left. Out of the five. Wow. Okay. That would be great. Yeah. But lose the title. But Webb's got the The title. thing that concerns yeah. me – unless they found something within this testing this two weeks, is if it is what, what JT says it is, hard pack, I think Cooper's bike is better in these conditions. Um, it's been proven. Um, anything that's loose, hard pack. Um, Kenny has some, some difficult times in that area, as well as the Yamaha does. But if you watch those bikes, anything where it's soft, you got some traction, Honda's really good. Um, I think some of this where he lost some time um, in Dallas. You know how it got loose and slick in the whoops. Um, for I mean, we always talk shit on Coop how he needs to improve his whoop speed. He caught Kenny in the whoops. In a yep. min many laps through yeah. there. Yeah. Um, so I think Honda needs to look at some things for hard pack. Uh, maybe it's chassis, but um, engine delivery. But I think if it is hard packed, that goes back into Cooper's favor again for the bike. And Salt Lake, we know it's hard packed as well. Right. I personally just think Coop is in a place where he's found his stride now, and I think he can manage it. Even if Kenny has a great night and Coop has to settle for whatever, I think he'll bounce back. And whatever edge that Kenny had early in the season, like every time it seemed like Kenny was the fastest guy. Early in the race, every round we were at, it was like, man, Kenny looks damn good. I don't have that same feeling anymore. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if it's Kenny dropped off a little bit or Cooper improved. I would tend to think that Cooper – improved a little bit and Kenny dropped off a little bit because Tomac's now in that mix as well and he really wasn't but it just seems like mentally now Webb is kind of like that's okay you can get the whole shot at whatever like I'll, I'll see you in about 15 minutes so that's a that's a really difficult thing for Kenny to overcome with you know five mm -hmm. rounds left I, with two of those being at altitude where we saw Kenny not always have the best experience here's what I think I, I want to go back to it I don't know if you you heard what MC said about Kenny. Yeah. MC says he should have punted Cooper off. Fully agree. I disagree. Um, not everyone works in that way. You know, not everyone has to retaliate to feel like they've got the bigger balls or the bigger dick. It's, it's more like a dick measure. Hey, I'm going to show you mine. I'm going to show you yours kind of thing. Like, I don't think Kenny works that way. He doesn't function that way. Just like we always say in the show. Why cause problems for yourself, you know? Yeah, Coop got him, passed him, punted him. Not even, I wouldn't even say punt him. He just kind of passed him. Kenny got amped up. There's always this 10-minute window after a race where you're fucking fired up. And you say some shit that you probably wouldn't normally say if it was 30 minutes after a race. Kenny said some things that he was fired up because I think he thought that the title was slipping away. I just don't agree with MC saying you need to do this, this, and this because that is the way to put him on notice. That is not I mean, the end all, be all of saying. I know MC is the of, king, but he had, I'm not saying T-bone him off the track, but he had a couple chances to get aggressive and didn't. Just he wanted nothing to do. Not, <sighs> just how about a block pass? How about a slam into the side of a guy? Can we do that? I think I think he's got a find a way to stand his ground somehow. I, that's my true belief. And, and it doesn't mean you have to go knock him down. It doesn't have to mean you have to T-bone him. But I haven't seen anything, anything where it, make, it makes Webb stop and think, oh, I, I didn't see that coming. Like, it, it just seems like to me Webb can be like, But do you yeah. think even if Kenny did that, that yeah. would not do anything to Coop. It probably wouldn't, but can we, you know? I mean, you got You know Coop. He, that's going to gonna fire out. him up more. That's fine. You need to find out because right now I think Webb approaches Kenny like, what's he going to do? But does Kenny really worry about that? No, he worries about himself. He worries how fast he he's going to go. He says he's worrying about himself, but like, I don't know. But that's what you do as a racer. You you worry about how fast you can go. You race the track. If if Cooper passes you, he must be going faster somewhere. So blocking him or or Rough just, riding him is not going to do anything, okay? You just got to learn to go a little how faster. How many times in a race have you seen two guys going at it, okay? 
A guy gets by somebody in a Are turn. we talking at this level? Are yeah, we talking yeah, mid-pack Any guys? level you want. Okay. Any level you want. JT's level. My level. Okay. Your level. Yep. You pass a guy, okay? He, he, you pass him underneath him in a turn. You come out. You go through the whoops. You come back at him. You slam into him a little bit. Nothing. Mm-hmm. Totally super cross fine. Mm-hmm. He gets out of balance. He has to dab a foot. He has to stop, like dunge at a... So what, what, pausing what? him, you mean. Pausing him. Okay. And then you get that gap that you need to maintain. You break his rhythm. You break his flow. And he can't catch you by the end. It's a perfectly legal move. It disrupts flow. It disrupts rhythm. And the guy can... And and you've, you've now counterattacked and saved your spot. Whatever spot that is. And certainly JT has been in that spot. And so have you as a supercross racer, time and time again. Like, it can happen where it affects you. But, correct me if I'm wrong, Okay. more times than not, that causes more problems within a race than it does work. Not at that level, I don't think. I think they're fine. They're not idiot kids. Tomac was up their ass. So if they screw with each other, Tomac would have got by. I'm not saying they need to, you know, stop and do chicken and chicken and, I, and right. Larry Ward at Seattle. I get it. I'm just saying you come in. Kenny had a chance there to go. To, actually, it was a left turn. Kenny had a chance to go in there, mm-hmm. get him a little bit, disrupt his flow. You know, do he just wanted nothing to do with it, man? I just think in today's society, we all think, yeah, just ram his ass back. No, it's gonna, it's no. gonna fucking teach him. It's not gonna teach. Kids. I'm saying aggressively block pass him back and maybe take him out of his rhythm. And maybe you hold on to that spot because, A, he bobbles, has to stop. <laughs> Look what Chase did. Chase did it, and he fucking came back and won the main. It just fires him up. Like, it doesn't do but anything. if that's a main event, Webb's on the ground, and you get a bunch of points. And yeah. do you think there was anything wrong with Chase's pass on Webb? No. Anybody? No. I, I know you're checking your stocks right now. No, I'm not. Okay. I'm not. <laughs> I'm answering an email. But there's no... There's no problem with Chase's pass on Webb. Absolutely not. And there May- was nothing wrong with Coop right. d- did to Kenny. Yeah, and so maybe... You know, maybe that'll do it. Maybe that's all you need to do. That's all. I know, but I, I just heard this MC thing, and I love MC, and I respect the shit yeah, out of him. Don't you talk shit on MC. No, I'm not. I just think right. he he portrayed it like Coop just bumped him and jacked his whole race up in that in Daytona? Daytona. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing. No, no, it nothing. did no, nothing. No, no, we're fine with that. We're fine with that. Kenny overreacted, 100%. So, but, but do something. I don't know. I just think all of us here, idiots that are talking about this, there's only one guy that knows. It's him. It's Kenny. He knows what he's like. He knows what is the best for him. If he hasn't done it already, you th- you think he's dumb? No, he would have fucking did it already if he thought it yeah, was a good he, idea. He, he, yeah, but I... Th- so why are we saying, man, we know more than you, bro. Go rip his ass. We, that, we know more than Kenny. <laughs> <laughs> but, but like, the, the, you think he's a professional rider that's won championships... He would have done that by now. That's the first reaction as a racer. You know this. German Supercross champion. You got to bump and get the fuck out, right, to win at those tight tracks. So why doesn't Kenny bump and get the fuck out? You can't these days, man. There's so many good dudes. You can't do it. Webb's doing it. No, he's not. (laughs) What has he rammed someone off? He hasn't. He's been aggressive with guys, more so than Kenny. I just think Uh, we're we're, we're bum-rushing Kenny right now. We're not bum rushing. I just think everyone's up like, oh, God, we're off the Kenny. Dude, Kenny's good. <laughs> Nobody's course, saying he's of not. Of course he is. Right. But if you're looking at those two, mano a mano, which is coming down to, you can't, you can't possibly argue that Cooper doesn't have a very distinct edge right now. Yeah, I'm, I'm not battle, debating right? that. So we're just saying how do you, the, how do you flip the momentum the other way? The man, on, the man on the phone here knows a few things about championship battles with a rival. So let's get to him. He is the Supercross Motocross legend, the 2-2. Chad Reed, what's up, man? How are you? Oh, my gosh. I didn't miss that talk. <laughs> 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 we could just swing it into BMX if you want. Right? We just go right uh, into that. It's like on repeat from, like, the last 10 years, the same conversation. Well, listen, we're in the media. That's what we do. <laughs> it's what we do. Um, you but, got two weeks off. What the fuck else are you going to talk about? Yeah, yeah, you know. Oh, um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> How's it going? Everything good, man? We're good, man. Yeah, you are I BMX been dad. In a while, yeah. Let's get bench racing. Let's talk some shit. Yeah, let's do it. So, basically, no, I no, no, I don't mean <laughs> talk some shit. But you know, we we are. I do have this. I want to talk to you about your track you got going on there. I want to talk to you a little about BMX stuff. Uh, Arma as well uh, on board with us, of course, and, and you're a big part of the Arma guys. But first of all, um, uh, yeah, like I I think Kenny had a chance to 
send Webb a message at Dallas 3. Perfect. And he, and he chose not to. And I wonder if he should have, Chad. That's all. I just wonder, like, I'm not saying no T-boning, no taking out, but can you be a little aggressive with your main rival like you would be with James back in the day? I mean, when you when you don't have any a, a backup plan, which clearly he doesn't, then yeah, you gotta you gotta go mess with him, right? Run into him, <laughs> do something, right, right, something. But yeah, but he does have points to play with, right, right. Yeah, yeah, no, that's true. Um, I mean, yeah, he's words. He's got points to play with. So. Let me let me ask you this, Chad. If okay, your role's reversed. You're Kenny Cooper's stalked you in the main, passed you, pulled away a couple seconds, and win. Does that fuck with you during the week? What do you do mentally to recoup that and come back, because you were one of the best at this, come back next week and kick their ass? Like, what goes on? I mean, to, I've taken enough ass whoopings over the years to, <laughs> to go home with my tail between my legs, but um, you have to, I mean, I don't know that you, you know, you kind of thrive on it during the week, but you have to, you have to change up the game plan. And if the game plan is, you know, Cooper's not winning because he's straight up, like my situation was different. My situ, like my situation was more like what Cooper's is in my opinion than what, you know, I think that as far as raw speed goes, Kenny has the upper hand for raw speed. Um, you know, and I always had to try to find raw speed to match James, you know, and whenever you didn't have the raw speed, then aim for his foot or his front wheel or something to slow him up and not let him get a flow going, you know, like try to make him think about something. Um, I had two go-tos, one aim for him, put him on the (laughs) ground, um, or, or two, if he was just that fast, it was actually easier to let him go. And then somehow he just would grenade himself when he had an easy win. So right. if, you know, so that, that was my two game plans is like, one, try to match his speed and pressure him and, you know, try to let, like, don't let him find his happy place. And then if that's not going to work, um, then sometimes it was just letting him go and grenading himself. Um, but. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't think yeah, Ken- like that's different though cuz neither of these guys are James that way. Right? Okay, can yeah. we can we No. Yeah. Well, I mean, Kenny, you know, Coop just has to basically take as long as you take Kenny's strength is is he he rolls his roll speed through the team the turns. Yep. Uh my advice always to Cooper is take his roll speed away and and he doesn't he's not he's not he's, he's just Kenny, you know. Right. It's not like he goes out and put he can't put a clinic on if if you take his roll speed away from him. Um, and then, you know, the, the other way to beat him is, you know, stay with him for the first 10 laps and yep. you're going to beat him. Um, so, I mean, Kenny, you know, Ke- Cooper has a lot of cards to play. Kenny has, you know, dropped a hammer and go and, and then just don't let, you know, don't let anyone hang. And he seems like at the beginning of the season, he's well and truly capable of that. Um, and then as the season gets older, um, he seems to find, yeah. find that a little more difficult. So assuming you're in this situation, right? You're, you are Kenny and you're down. What's the points? 15, 15, whatever it is. Yeah, 15. Okay. So you have five rounds to go. You're down 15 points and you've been in this spot, right? You've been down a handful of points with several rounds to go. It seems like every year <laughs> good for you, but, um, how do you approach this? Like it, that was the argument we've been having. I know you you're sick of this conversation, but I, I still believe if you don't take the fight to someone, I believe Kent, like in, in Cooper's mind, I believe that he feels like he owns Kenny right now mentally. Like I, if you asked him with true serum, he would tell you, I own that guy mentally. Like if it comes down to the last couple laps, this guy has no chance of beating me. So if yeah, you, I mean, I don't know that Kenny. I don't know that Cooper needs true serum to admit right, that. Exactly, I sure. that. I exactly. Sure. I think he. I think he, he openly you. admits to that. Right. Yeah. Um, yep. The true serum might be more given, better given to Kenny. To Kenny yeah. <laughs> um, but I think that yeah. I mean, I agree with you. I mean, it, nobody wants to go. I don't know how many races left. I don't five. know how many races left. Five. So you got five races to go. I mean, so it's still a lot of laps. Um, 
you know, th- is this thing over? No. Um, and I think that, in my opinion, a two-week break is always healthier. I think it's, it always helps the person chasing. Um, I think that in, in some cases it helps Kenny because he got to stop the bleeding right away. Right. Um, because, I mean, three wins in a row was obviously, you know, was it four in a row or three in a row? Three and three, obviously three. Three in a row three. and five out of six. So, you, yeah, so five out of six races, I mean, you go from playing it cool and announcing to the world that, hey, I got a points guff, you know, buffer. Uh, I would rather be the one with the points buffer. To now you're 15 down, so how do you downplay that, you know, at this point? He ain't freaking out, and he's just having fun. I call bullshit. Losing ain't fun. <laughs> um, so, I don't know. That's, I think that it helps Kenny in a lot of ways in the fact that, he, like I said, you know, he gets to stop the bleeding. He gets to regroup. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, is that regrouping, focusing on outdoors, doing some outdoor riding, and then, you know, and then all the good feelings come back, and then you get to kind of reset. And then you do have five rounds. 15 points in five rounds is doable. Um, but the other way you have to look at it, I mean, man, we have a stacked class. We have got 10 winners. Cry me a river. Um, <laughs> I'm about to win 100 bucks on Twitter. I'm actually pretty excited. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, somebody, a fan bet me that there would be 10 winners or I don't what? even know how oh, many. Jesus. But okay. there'd be 10 or winners, and I said, they wouldn't be half that, and I'm so far I'm doing yeah. well. So yeah. Yeah. let's hope that this two-week break that everybody didn't find speed and <laughs> and fitness and all those things that it takes to win races, and and I lose a hundred bucks. But I think that that's going to be the, you know, like when I think of all the situations where I've had to come back from fifteen down, it's all the similar things, you know, like the the cream is rising to the top at this point. I think there's four guys that can win main events. Mm-hmm. Um, and outside of those four, I think there's a fifth potentially in Jason Bananas if he gets a whole shot. But other than that, I don't really think that there's, you know, anyone else can win main events. Um, no disrespect. That's just my opinion on what I see. Um, and it's pretty factual at this yeah, point. Yeah, I, I, like, I think you're totally on. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. I don't see how anybody I, can get in there. So I think that, you know, Bam Bam whole shots, you got to, you know, he's simple, hard racing. I think that you have to take him seriously. Um, he seems a lot more consistent this year. seems a little more, um, he seems a little less Bam Bam and just actually hard racer, which mm-hmm. is nice to see. Um, Eli, you just, don't know Eli may go win the next five races and he may be an eighth place guy we just don't know what Eli is going to show up um so in that case I think it makes it challenging for Kenny to bank on that you know like I don't think I don't think uh I don't think Coop gets weaker over these next two weeks I think that Alden athletes always find an edge when there's a, a weekend or two off um that was always the hardest thing for me is I always had to, you know, race those guys and somehow they always found, found more in that break. Um, so I think it's going to be challenging for, for Kenny. Do you think, uh, do you think Salt Lake matters at all? We saw Kenny struggle there last year. Do you think if it comes down to it, I don't know, you know, like we saw him have one good race and then he'd have a race where he got lapped, you know? So I don't know what the struggles there were, but if it comes down to it, I'll, I will take Cooper just because, it seems like he thrives in that situation. I don't know what we're going to get from Kenny at altitude. Yeah. Uh, what is it? Is it, is it, I think there's only two races yeah, in two. the altitude yep. though, right? Yep. Two. Yep. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, in the, in the event that we go down to the last two, uh, both seem pretty, I mean, I wouldn't say that they seemed equal, but like when Kenny was on and Coop was on, they seemed pretty evenly matched in the altitude. Um, you know, both bikes and the fact that, you know, like a Honda is always good in the altitude. And I had to slow my KTM down in the altitude because their altitude setting actually was too gnarly for me. Um, so I think that both bikes are good. Um, it really comes down to, you know, starts in the altitude and then obviously, you know, dealing with the altitude and only having two races. So, you know, technically if you wanted to, you could, you know, you could, cause I would imagine it's going to be, Saturday and Saturday, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. 
So, you know, mm-hmm. so technically those guys are going to fly in, race, and then fly out of there and then come back and race. Um, so it's not like we'll be dealing with those long downtimes and, you know, uh, exposure to the altitude like we had last year. Uh, Vertex Pistons bringing you Chad Reed tonight. Uh, Vertex Pistons OEM supplier to KTM Husqvarna. Uh, Beta TM, uh, gas gas as well. No matter which brand of bike you ride, when it's time to rebuild your top end, Vertex Pistons will have your engine performing better than new. Two-stroke, four-stroke Pistons, email sales at pivotworks.com to get a deal. High compression, replica, anything you need from the folks at Vertex Pistons or Wrench Rabbit or uh, uh, Pivot Works or anybody else, email sales at pivotworks.com to get you dialed in. You mentioned the bikes, Chad. So this is something I was always thinking of when I when I knew you were coming on the show. You ride a different, uh, I don't know, when you had a break, you rode a lot of different bikes. And then you're watching these races. I, I think you're at least watching these races. What do you see from a KTM and a Honda? And I kind of think you rode a Honda and a KTM when you were deciding on what to race. So when you watch these, what's the difference between these bikes, and what's the advantages and disadvantages? Uh, well, I mean, the, it's the new Honda, and I have personally not ridden the new Honda. Okay. Um, obviously, I talk to people, and 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 more importantly, I watch it. Um, it seems like the bike has a better balance this year. Like I see that, you know, Kenny's bike doesn't seem as is uh as soft in the front and 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 have to be so stiff in the rear it seems like he his bike balance is back to a little bit more normal um as far as the bike i mean it it seems that both uh both him and chase you know it's a typical any like a modern day bike in the pa- in the fact that when they're on and they're in their window they, it seems like the bike's really really good um, and then whenever they're having a little bit of an off day or not quite in their window, then it seems like they struggle a little bit like everybody else. Um, I think the strengths are, you know, Kenny being good everywhere and probably having the upper hand in the whoops, um, to, to what, uh, to what, you know, um, Cooper. And I think that the KTM is just a, it's, just not great in the whoops you know like i would consider myself a you know a a, a comfortable whoop rider right and even i even i at times find it a handful in the whoops um and so it it just doesn't have that same uh level of comfort in the whoops as what what the japanese bikes do um but what it makes up for in the whoops is you know when the whoops are jumpers or in the case that even if they're not jumpers and uh, Coop's able to, you know, kind of skim a few and then kind of like, you know, triple out or whatever, you know, like the last, uh, like one of Coop's best wins that I've seen was the last one in, in Dallas, you know, like at no wow. point did he really have, he didn't have the pace. Um, like as far as just straight up roll pace, that was literally Coop just, you know, lap after lap after lap just grinding and and trying everything to make it work and i think that he just you know the whoops he would try something it wouldn't work and then one lap he would get it and then right when you think oh he's got the whoops dialed and then he would kind of jack it up so makes me think that the whoops were challenging to get a you know a rhythm through them um and then he ended up having to just kind of blitz them and then kind of like triple triple out um and then eli just you know, kind of <laughs> came up. It was more Eli, I think, and just he made too many mistakes behind him, mm-hmm. and that that allowed Coop to kind of settle down and then get get his nails kind of clawed back into into Kenny, and and then I think he just did his normal thing at the end there. Um, but I think that what was impressive to me was how hard that win looked, um, but yet he was able to kind of make it make it work. Um, yeah, I, uh, so, I would have bet a lot of money at Dallas 3 that Kenny had it. Whole shot, yeah, gone early, because you know, yep. I had watched, uh, you know, like when you watch the heat and you watch how everything kind of played out that weekend, yep. um, he, Kenny definitely seemed like he found his legs and, and was, you know, having the upper hand. And even Eli at that point, I would put that, you know, both Eli and Kenny were really on. Mm-hmm. Um, and you could tell that, you know, when when the laps were clean, you know, Kenny was able to hold his own and, and Eli was, you know, trying all he could to, you know, do something. I just think that Eli was a little bit too nice. Um, you know, when he had shots at 
that Coopy didn't take him, and I think that he he paid the price um, at the end there because of that. But it was that was a fun race to watch. Actually, it was probably the best race of the year. It was the best track of the year. Yeah, it was a good. Track. Um, it was a good track. It was kind of more of an old school track. It seemed like it just sometimes simple works. You know, like just going back to that you know, that repetitive old school, you know, a couple of nineties on the ends of the stadium and then just the one eighties. And, you know, it just, it just seemed like it raced well. It seemed like the the guys could move around and they, they could go inside outside and, and make, make something work where a lot of the other tracks just seemed just, you know, there's just such a dominant inside outside line kind of thing. I was watching, uh, Dallas 2005. Gary Bailey has a YouTube channel. Yep. And there was an on off. Is that the that was is so that the boat? Right after the, the boat finish race? line. No, that was no. six. No. There was an it was a huge on off. Right like, after and, the finish. And Gary would film the practices and most of the guys weren't even doing the on off in the first couple of practices. Like yeah. it took a while. Right, right. It was and then everything they, they was so peaked. They lifted up a little bit. Oh, they did. They did. Yeah, it yeah. was gnarly. Like before they did that, I don't know that anybody was going to do it. Dude, jeez. That's all I remember about O five. Right? James's first win, right? Uh. O five was, was Dallas. It, uh, Dallas he wrote, Dallas O five was James's first win he wrote in the unseated. big bike class. Yes. He wrote unseated and he, on Friday and almost killed him. Uh, yeah, and that that's what I remember. I I don't know why, but I just remember that they built this sand section. It was the dumbest thing I've ever seen. And James almost killed eighteen guys mm-hmm. because he was <laughs> yeah. twenty seconds a lap faster. <laughs> yeah. And then they ended up having to move him to the factory practice, which is crazy that they, he wasn't in there anyway. But yeah, it was that, that's all I remember is that yep. stand section. I couldn't tell you anything else about it. Yeah. Speaking of this Arlington race that we just had, I felt like that track, for once, and we never see this, I felt like it was built to the level of both a factory 450 and the talent of the guys riding it. You could go yeah. huge if you wanted to. Like You could pull yeah. big rhythm sections, and most of the tracks I look at, I'm like, okay, well – a stock 250F can do every jump on the track, and there is no yeah. option to go any bigger. Like, I don't care how good you are or how good your bike is, you're at the limit of the track. More dirt. Yeah. Yeah, whatever the whatever yeah, the reason I, is. I agree. Um, you know, I'm not a big fan of the big jumps, but, like, if you're going to have a big jump, then let's have it be a table-to-table kind of thing like they were, you know? Like, mm-hmm. it, 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 it's kind of like the, the less of all the evils, I think. Um, you know, like an actual physical quad. I just don't know that, it, you know, we don't need quads, but it was, I agree, JT, in the fact that um, the only thing that I've seen that it could do better and, and in more just from a racing standpoint when I was watching it is when they go through the whoops and then they kind of 90 across the start straight and then 90 into that step on, step off. I would have liked to have seen like almost like no berm on before the step on, step off so that it, everyone could kind of race in there a little bit wider. And I think it would have opened up where you could dive down the inside rather than just, you know, kind of going from inside to inside. Um, that was the only thing I saw. But, man, it actually looked like a really fun track to I ride. Thought that, and, I thought it was a little unfortunate that they had a 90 after the whoops because we saw so many guys get a run, and then you could just yeah. pinch, yeah. pinch them off to the inside of the that, 90, and then you were screwed. Yeah, that's when – that's what like saves people like coop you know like when you're struggling you can kind of limit the damage right there and then you know and then obviously you work you just basically just know that you're going to suck going into that section and you just got to work hard on everywhere else and it just seemed like that's what he did he just went to work everywhere else like i was surprised if i'm honest kenny is so good at sand and he really struggled in the sand like yeah. Uh, I don't know that I would say that out of like all three of those guys, Kenny, Coop, and Eli, I'm not sure that I would say that Coop's the best sand guy, you know? Um, but man, he really figured out the sand. And I think that that was like a big part of him yeah. like walking away. Like yeah. he kind of put yeah. that pass on and then he, he literally just for three laps put that, nailed the sand and just crushed, crushed both of the other two, you know? And I think that that was, um, that was interesting for me to watch it, watch Kenny struggle so much in the sand. You know, it was really weird. Like that was right in front of me where I was sitting and Kenny was trying to go to like, he would come out of the turn, stay right. And it was pretty smooth, but both 
Cooper and Eli found on the left side, there was like this little like Knuckle. kicker Knuckle, yeah, yeah, that yeah. developed. And he, they were using that to get some pop, and then they would go double-double from the left side and then sweep across mm -hmm. the inside of that corner, and they would carry to so right. much more yeah. corner speed through there. And, and I agree, like, that's usually something Kenny picks up on really quickly. Kenny was probably just like, hey, yeah. if, I go, if, I, if I go there where it's taller, I can go double-double easy. Right, but, but it's he like, yeah, yeah, he was He was going yeah, to the right, but I yeah. mean, it just wasn't working. That, like a Honda just looks like it's on rails, or it looks super nervous to me. And for whatever reason, I think that the bike was a little bit of a handful for Kenny because I do believe that Kenny's so much better in that in those conditions. And the fact that Chase crashed there, <laughs> I'm going to put it down to maybe there was something missing that particular weekend in the sand for those guys, you know, because yeah. it just. Man, Coop was fun to watch. Like, I mean, I didn't even know that. And no one walks the track, right? But right. I imagine JT that they were big, they were deep because they on on TV visually they didn't look gnarly. But when you watch those guys, you know the best dudes in the world currently on Supercross literally look pretty average. Mm -hmm. It was. They, I, I am or, imagining that they were really deep the, or something. Or the, the, most, they or, were or the privateer guys look like I mean, that's, that's where I was watching these privateer dudes. Well, I mean, they were just the most challenging part of them, and and literally like they were right in front of me. The most challenging part is the backsides were super steep, right? So uh -huh. if you didn't get any pop, you would kind of clip Slap it and down. swing forward. Yeah. yeah, and you could. So when those guys were getting pop, like they were getting. That, yeah, and it seemed like the sand. Like anytime. Well, and you got supercross suspension on, and it handles like crap in the sand anyway. But like, it just seemed like anytime you got a little front end heavy, like yeah. you clipped it or something, it yep. just was like yeah, it was gnarly. It would push them deep into the stroke, into the sand, and it, uh, bad things would yeah. happen every Speaking time. But that's such a. I'm a hater on sand in supercross, but yeah. I think that like it was a really good sand section. Like if you're yeah. gonna have sand, have it there like that. Like that makes sense. Like it actually, you know, it allows a racetrack to create you know different varieties of things to do and how to go through it and you could you know you could go basically like jt said like from the left and then double double to the right mm -hmm. or you could do what kenny was doing or you could go outside like it kind of had options and i it, I, I really liked the way it raced dumping sand in, in a, just a corner is the dumbest thing ever so for, yeah. for sure yeah. far away to piss riders off yeah uh chad, <laughs> yeah. chad we had uh, our buddy dv up here a couple weeks ago and his rant on the whoops is just was just all time. He, he's very upset about the jumping. He's upset about the small whoops. He's he can't figure out why these guys can't blitz whoops. I've saw you on social as well. Uh, uh, this is a real time for JT to shine if, if he was still racing with all these jumpers. <laughs> <laughs> so, I think that there's two two answers to it, and it's frustrating to watch. But I also have to be a little bit easy on on them, you know, because I think that modern 450s or modern four strokes they're just not stable motorcycles like they used to be um there is also not bridgestone tires um so i think that the combination of those two things um is the combination of what you're seeing you know like even even visually whoops that you should be able to just blast right through them i've had troubles and you know bike moves around and whatever and it's just I think the tire and the, this, you know, this generation bikes are just, they're, mm -hmm. they're really sensitive to the whoops. And anytime there's lack of traction, anytime, actually, I almost think that the bikes are so good in the fact that there is so much electronics now and that they hook up so much that now the bikes just want to, as soon as they bite or they like hit like one of those cupped out things, the bikes get so much traction that they just want to take off one way or the other. And I think that that's what's making these guys l literally look like they're, you know, they've never ridden whoops in their lives. <laughs> um, and that's my experience. What I've kind of, you know, eh, since 2009 of Suzuki and, you know, traction control coming more and more and more and all these electronics that we have now. Um, I just think that they get more traction than they ever have. The tire doesn't, um, you know, can't, can't take it, and it just goes side to side, and, and it just makes it really challenging for those guys. For those people listening at home, what did the Bridgestone do so good that you just have a hard on for it? The Bridgestone just, uh, it just wouldn't react to anything. You know, like, like I said, you know, like when I say, like when I visually look at a whoop, and I look at it, you know, on the parade lap, you go, oh, yeah, you know, you look at it, and you're like, there's a, there's a perfect line, you know, whether it's down the middle, left, right, whatever. 
and you, you, you can see it, you know, and, and you really only need about a foot, foot and a half. And you're like, there's a line. I see it. I can do it. But for whatever reason, every little groove, every little tire mark or thousands of tire marks that's been through it through the day. And suddenly the bike just wants to react to it. It wants to go left. It wants to go right. And that's where we get that like tic tac or, you know, sketchy looking, you know, where the bike wants to move side to side. Um, and on a Bridgestone, it, even when they looked gnarly, you, you wouldn't feel it. You could just be like, Oh, I got this. <laughs> and just, you know, you just send the thing in in third gear and, and that just wouldn't react to it. It would drive through. Um, but I do believe it's a combination of the bike and the tire. It's not just, it's not just tire, but the, uh, the Bridgestone was just it was just unbelievable in that particular area for some reason. Hmm. So, and even like, like to comment on that, like, like when I talk to my MotoGP friends, like basically, obviously they don't have whoops, but on a lean angle and you start talking about all these things, they, they say that, you know, their Michelin tires that they have now, they don't do what the, you know, the Bridgestone did. And it's like, basically our comments, though very different in, in how we're, you know, what we're commenting on, but really similar um, comments of like how much better the Bridgestone was in, in certain areas. It's weird because it must them. be like a, a vendor or a, a rubber carcass feeling where they got the rubber from, I would assume, right? It's just construction. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's not rubber. There's actually so very, very little rubber in an actual motocross race tire. These it's you, mostly, you know, it's, it's mostly plastic it's, now. It's, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, the mold, it, there's a lot of plastic in it. And then you have, you know, then you have a like, multiple levels of rubber on the top of that um and that was what bridgestone just i think that they obviously had something that no one else has and clearly i'm sure that dunlop and pirelli i know for a fact pirelli you know all these people have cut these tires apart and tried to you know try to copy them but there, there's something missing always. So I have a question uh well and i want to comment <laughs> the ktm guys have been pretty vocal with how uh, different the tire is from MotoGP this year. They're just lost right now. I just heard comments from those guys saying how much they change a tire. And the tires change Front from year tire, to year, yeah. right? So, yeah. like, Michelin will come with a new soft, right, mm -hmm. for MotoGP. And, and if if the teams were building for X tire and Michelin brings Y tire, they're screwed. Like, they are completely yep. screwed. And that's what you're – I know you don't watch it, but if that's what's happening, they have no chance, oh, like, yeah. just because of the tire. So my question, though, is – if you go back, let's say, 15 years, okay, and you ride well, less than that, 12 years, you go back to like a 2008 Honda 450, okay, bike was super balanced, or a 2008 Suzuki 450, bike was super balanced, it's pretty light in the front, right, and it just felt like you could hit anything at speed, and it was really predictable. At mm -hmm. some point, all the OEMs shifted to this really front-heavy... Weight bias. Right. So, and... Kiefer, you may know this, Chad, I don't know. Why did they do this? When was like the big shift is like, okay, well, we're going to put all the weight on the front and we're going to make it turn better and we're going to take all the predictability out of it, all the stability out, because I hated that. I hated every Start with ounce that of that change. Start it did. With that it did, and then yeah. everybody yeah, followed suit, Honda, and I don't know why. Honda really started it in 09, um, and it took until I was there in 11 to really make that bike rideable, you know? Um, to the point where it was awesome. And then, in my opinion, it just got worse after that again. Um, we were able to find a solution um, with the 09. And then, you know, then beyond that, we I personally never found a solution that, that the balance was the same. My opinion is, is they're not building bikes for us anymore. They're building them for, you know, Joe Blow that goes and buys them. Um, you know, that person can't turn doesn't it put just it through turn? what we put it through Boom. um and and he just wants it to turn right yeah. like he literally wants to turn the gas decel and the thing turn and pull over in a turn um that doesn't always translate into a an amazing race bike but you know it keeps the customer happy yeah. um i just I would could be never, really i could I never would, find i would stability. love if there was a way to like a brand new 2008 Honda, if that's what you want to do, and then like a brand new 2000 and you know 2021 Honda, and literally stock stand. It'd be fun to go ride them, right, you know, and right. just literally, like, yeah, just literally ride them and and see, yeah. um, you know, how that is. And, and it's 
all the bikes feel the same these days. It seems like everyone's gone that direction, and it's kind of like, in my opinion, it's who can get the, you know, their, their focus is always, let's get the weight low, let's get the weight centralized, and all those things. And I think that that's what hurts a motorcycle. Whenever everything's low, means it's harder to go side to side. Uh, when it's centralized, then it wants to go, you know, weight. When you brake, it goes all to the front. When you accelerate, it goes all the way to the rear. Um, and I think that KTM has kept a, a pretty similar balance to what they've always had, you know, and it's not always centralized. It's not always um, things. So I think that that's why those guys get away with some things, um, you know, better than what, what some of the Japanese brands are. Uh, Chad, uh, brought to you by Vertex Pistons, by the way. Sales at PivotWorks.com. Get a two-stroke piston, a four-stroke piston, whatever it is. Uh, Chad, how was uh, – you rode Soupy. A little while ago, we saw on social. How'd you feel? How how'd it go? Uh, okay, so I have to be honest. Um, I was actually let's put it, let's word it. Okay. My kids and my wife really, really wanted me to race. Okay. And so I'm like, all right. Well, if I'm gonna race, then we have to go put the work in. So we're like, all right, we'll go to Florida for five, six weeks, and I'll ride and train. And I'll race Atlanta. And I'm like, all right, I don't really want to do it. But <laughs> if you, but I don't personally want to do it. Like, it wasn't like, ah. Oh. But then the thought of it, like, I looked at the track maps. And I'm like, if I'm going to do one, Atlanta looks fun. It looks right. cool. Yep. So I'm like, and it would be rad. Like, I really didn't get to race last year. My kids weren't there um, at my last races. So I'm like, it'll be fun, you know, for the kids to be able to go. And they have this new appreciation like, I don't get it. It's actually frustrating because, <laughs> you know, for 10 years, my eldest hated motorcycles or anything about them. And then now, you know, everything's moto. We're going to go pro moto. We're going to go pro BMX. Everything two wheels. My kids <laughs> love right now. Yeah. So then, so here we are, like, my kids know everyone and, like, they're, like, rooting for people and they've got favorites and you know, we're, we're staying up to 11 o'clock on Saturday nights and Tuesday nights to watch Supercross. And I'm like, what happened when Jazz was racing? Like, you couldn't even you couldn't even stay awake through a heat race. And Ellie's just like, what the hell? Right. Anyway, so long story short, I'm like, okay, I'll do it for you guys. That will be fun like that. But I want you to know that, like, that doesn't just get to say, hey, I'm going to go race Supercross and we show up next weekend. Like, yeah. Like, dad's going to have to go to work, you know? Like, it's going to be hard. <laughs> exactly. And so we go down there, and I start riding and whatever, and it just kind of one thing led to another. The riding was fun, and, you know, and then um, what did I do? I got maybe three three days of riding in. Well, then, like, Joey, Jason, and Hunter, maybe even Jet. When did West Coast start? Or East, yeah, when did West Coast? West Coast started in Orlando. Um, so maybe it was Orlando, right before Orlando it was, because I was riding with Jet on Supercross, and then they switched over. So I was in Florida that week. So then, and then next minute, everyone just leaves, and I'm by myself, <laughs> and I'm like, this really isn't that fun. <laughs> and, <laughs> and so I didn't really ride while they were gone, and then, uh, and then, you know, just one thing leads to another, and my, I get done riding and, and I, you always knew, like you always understand, like it, you, you have to be so unbelievably selfish as, as an athlete. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you know, like I felt like I knew that, but I didn't know it to this extent. Like you have to, like you literally just have to be one track mind and like, that's your everything. And I'm just, I'm not there. Like I just, I told Ellie and the kids, I'm like, I'm not racing. Like this is like three weeks into it. And I'm like, I'm not like, I can't find, I can't find the balance. And I thought yeah. the balance would come and, right. you know, maybe I'm not going to be at my, you know, my all time greatest fitness, but like, I, I at least wanted to get to a level of like, you know, like, Hey, I want to go and, you know, feel that I could comfortably race, you know, uh, the race. And I just couldn't, like, I couldn't find that rhythm where I could get my work done and then I could spend the time with the kids riding and, and BMXing and all those kinds of things. And so then I ended up just being like, guys, I'm, I'm out. <laughs> I'm out. I'm <laughs> done. I'm bailing. And they, yeah. Hey, and they're just like, what do you mean you're out? And I'm like, <laughs> I, I don't want to do it. Like, like I didn't understand that dad had to, 
like basically <laughs> turn life off yeah. and and just do one thing. Well, but but we'll let you. And I'm like, yeah, but like you don't understand. I don't want to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's so, hard. It's hard anyway, enough when you want to do it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, I never struggled. Like you know, I mean, it, towards the end, I always like for me, it was always about like I I enjoyed the working out. I enjoyed the hard work. Um, and again, I enjoyed it when I was doing it with the guys, but yep. I didn't, I didn't have the drive to do it on my own. Um, so for me, honestly, perfect timing. I don't miss the racing side of it at all. Mm-hmm. Um, I, you know, I actually generally enjoy sitting on the couch and, you know, talking to my kids and, and kind of somewhat, you know, telling them and predicting things that's going to happen and then it happening and then i look cool so um <laughs> it's always good dad credit right uh, yes so yeah i i was going to race atlanta in this these next three races but i'm out <laughs> that's awesome. i quit i love it it's <laughs> but, awesome that's but awesome. i think yeah. i think that's the most important that you don't like the you don't have this constant feeling of like i wish i was out there and it yeah. was the same no. for me when i stopped i wanted nothing to do with that. i did not want to be Still out don't. there no but i was very content <laughs> To sit in the stands and watch it, or sit at home and yeah, watch no, it. I, I was cool. I, like I'm good. And I mean, JT, you know me well enough. You were around me for a, a, a long time, and then like, I just I loved it, and I like I feel so I'm like pumped and proud and whatever else you want to call it that I got to that point where I was like, you know what, I'm good. Like this is this is it because it. I don't want to throw him under the bus, but like, I went to lunch with dunge when we did our car thing and he still is like he he, i can tell that he he still doesn't because he you know he was talking about we all know right like Mm -hmm. he wanted to come back this year and he's you know and and he's trying to tell me the reasons why he didn't come back and and again it's not really my story to tell on him but like i kind of want to compare it and and i hope he's not mad but like he wants to tell me like, Oh yeah, but I talked to this person and this person, and this is what I said. And I said, Dunge, why didn't you call me? And Lindsay goes, that's exactly why I didn't let him call you, you know? And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. and I just think I would have had a different perspective. I would have personally told him go racing. Like if, if you, if any part of your heart says that yeah. you want to race a dirt bike, you have to do that. I think because, whether it be six months from now or one year from now, it doesn't like that doesn't get easier. You know, like it doesn't get easier to come back. I truly believe if Dunge was to put in the work and the effort, like he could still come back and be competitive. Like I honestly believe that. Um, can he win races and win titles? Probably not. But you know, I do think that if he, in his mind, he went, you know, what, I'm going to do it. Um, he could. And yeah, it's so, I'm glad that I don't have that feeling at all. You right. know, like yeah, that's like really just, cool. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's just yeah. And a lot of racers. That, a like, lot of guys struggle with it. You know, a yeah. lot of guys. Well, a lot of guys yeah. struggle with it. Sure. And, and I think a lot of people always like. For me, it was such a perfect timing in the fact that the world stopped and I got to walk away. You know, when the best years were were kind of gone, mm-hmm. and my kids chose that they would going to become active kids and want to race dirt bikes and race BMX bikes. And so it kind of like that transition just couldn't have been any more perfect. Um, and so, yeah, I was, I was pumped on my timing and, you know, going and playing golf with James and having, you know, kind of hearing his thoughts and his reasons and, you know, the things that still go through his head. Um, it was, it was cool to kind of feel that again. Well, I don't. I don't think most people get to make the choice. Usually, the choice is made for someone, and yeah. you know that you got to make that choice years after most people would have made their own choice, right? So, yeah, I think you were in a very unique situation on both fronts. It's like, okay, well, I'm choosing to stop. This is my choice to stop. I'm not, you know. And you were what, 37, 38, or whatever. You're like, I, I could race again. Yeah, I could race again if I want to, but I don't have to. And no one's taking this away from me, which. I mean, yeah. most people that I've ever and raced professionally, they're like, just like, even today, not. like, I still feel like, if, you know, like I always said, oh, I'd be rad to qualify for a supercross at 40. I have to wait until March next year. So it's like, <laughs> there's a part of me that's like, you know what? Like, if I want to race next year, I still like, no one's stopping me, you yeah, know, like, yeah. like at this point, like, if I feel like I want to do it and I want to put the work in, then, Hey man, like, let's go do it. And if I don't, then I won't. If you prepared <laughs> next year, there's no doubt. 
Yeah. I, I have no doubt that you would qualify. Oh, God. Easy. Well, and I think, you know, the first rounds are going to be tough, like they always are. But if you choose the yeah, rounds I mean, you if want you're and smart, you prepare. Like yep. you, yep. You'll either show up at Anaheim 1 because I think that, you know, well, I call it Anaheim 1, but who knows if where we're going racing, whether California will reopen again ever. Right. Um, but, like, you know, if the first the first race is always a fun one because everyone's a spaz, mm-hmm. you know. And it's just like there's just a weird race. And then – then everyone kind of catches fire and about five, six races in, that's when you jump in because it seems like, yeah, yeah. you know, the, everyone starts getting beat up and hurt or whatever. And so you jump in there at that point. How, clo- uh, how close were you to the boys when you were practicing? Uh, so like I was probably like, like 1.2, 1.5 off. And then, uh, and then when we did a, a moto, well, when they did a moto and I decided to jump in, um, they were doing 20 minutes and I was going to just kind of jump in for a few laps. So I actually ended up, I was out there for 15 minutes and then I saw 15 minutes and I'm like, geez, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I was in the moto. I was probably, uh, like Jason, for whatever reason, Jason had a rough moto and I could kind of like, I was, you know, sometimes within a second and then other times like he started catching fire and then I was getting tired and I was probably about two seconds off. Um, so yeah, it was, it wasn't, you know, like yeah. on, I yeah. never did like, I never jumped in on sprints. Like I never was like, Hey, what do you, you know, like what their sprint lap is on my sprint lap. That was more just like moto times. Like, right. you know, when, when I actually physically had to go multiple laps, um, which wasn't easy at first. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's really funny right. cause I, I'm lucky. I never, ever struggle with arm pump. So it's, it's fun because I can pretty much for the most part, jump right in and actually have fun. Um, but man, like I hadn't, I mean, you guys all follow me on social. I really hadn't rode or done anything in months. Um, so like it felt fun to get back on supercross and you know, like the, the, the flow was there and my rhythm and everything was still pretty decent um but man was i out of shape well, oh I, my god i have to jump in there because you say we all follow you on social i do not follow you on social yeah i still block well, i think you're, you're I still am blocked. blocked i am yeah. blocked you can't follow follow me you on social, social. <laughs> why the fuck are you blocked <laughs> no oh, uh, I, he you actually follow me but i you're blocked yeah well i i technically can't i yeah. try uh, i try he it, wants to maybe error. maybe i should let you maybe i should let you. i just no, follow, no, I, I live vicariously no. through ellie i <laughs> yeah. follow ellie so i get i get oh, like secondary go. information yeah let's talk about ellie screw chad how's ellie doing uh, ellie's good man she's she's a she's what is she she's a she's a teacher now she's full-time homeschool <laughs> the closest i get yeah, to following really. chad is watching their kids race bmx on live yeah. Uh, oh my USA, god. USA BMX footage. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. That's my kids are nuts. They're right not. They're, like, they're deep into it, huh? God. Dude, we're deep. We are so <laughs> deep into this. And then what's scary and like, it's exciting, scary because it's like it's scary because, you know, as a dad, you know, you've you've done this right. The moto thing, like I've been there, I've done it. You know what it comes with, and you know everything about it. So it's like there's nothing hidden. Like it's all there, and I've been there, I've lived it. And I love it, and I wouldn't change it. And if my kids want to do it, I would never stop them. But they're, you know, the BMX thing was fun, and it's awesome. But they're, they're slowly starting to ask those questions about moto, and mm-hmm. um, which oh, is, boy. you know, which is cool. Whatever, I can go hang out at the races with JG and Nick and everyone else at my age. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, good point. Red <laughs> we'll dog, be, red dogs in red, it. Red yeah, dog. Yeah. Um, and it's so funny, Red Dog. I, you know, Red Dog and I still talk quite a bit on mainly just commenting on each other's social, and it's just, <laughs> yeah. we just give each other shit. Um, but yeah, he's just like, I told you, I told yeah, you. Yeah. <laughs> but he, yeah, we're we're into it, man. We're, I mean, yeah. we got a fifth wheel. We're back oh, on the road. Dude. I'm getting to see. I love it because I'm I'm getting to see the country from the ground. You know, like I I think that. I love traveling and with the way travel is, it's not fun. So I've, I feel like I've seen the United States from 30,000 feet up. Right. Um, and so it's really fun for me to go and like, I, I actually enjoy, you know, burning the midnight oil and <laughs> driving hours and hours and hours right now. It's not old. It's, it actually feels quite fresh. Cause I, you know, yeah. what the last 25 years, I really haven't been on the road. 
um, you just been kind of doing the air, you know, the flight thing. So right. it's, yeah, it's, kind of a change of pace and it's been fun yeah connor fields uh fly racing zone connor fields he's he's been out with you a little bit and uh yeah he told me the same thing last time i saw connor he's like dude chad is all in he's he's looking at gear ratios he's looking at bikes he's, yeah connor I mean, texts me all the time he's he like hey man your guy is all in he, is he I'm the like, nick like, way of bicycles I'm, I'm I, I, chad's looking for setup we're looking for setup. <laughs> he only knows hey, one way so, to do something right right there's only one way to do it right and you, it's <laughs> either you're, you're you're in or you're out and that's it yeah. so it's fun because yeah, like I mean, dude, you got crank length, you got gear ratio, you got rollout. Like, Thank God they don't things. have suspension. <laughs> Thank God you would have you would have Tate's internals of his suspension <laughs> taken apart every oh, twenty minutes. <laughs> we're working on it on the eighty five. <laughs> we're, we're working on it. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Man. At least like so funny. Like we'll go riding and like I watch him and I'm like, ah. Oh. They, they, that doesn't look right, and I'll go and like mess with it. Nelly's like, "What are you doing?" And oh I'm like, boy! I'm like, "We're just giving it a little tweak." Yeah, it's all just, good. Don't just, worry. Don't worry about over here. Yeah, what we're doing. Uh, by the way, uh, Chad's a, a big part of Arma. Uh, I use it every day. Mountain biking, the Blitz, and the uh, Fire stuff. Um, absolutely great. I mix it together. Pulp MX20 to save at Arma. So use the code Pulp MX20 to save at Arma, and uh, go ahead and get yourself dialed in with some of that stuff. So um, I like the Strawberry Fire. The strawberry fire is good. Yeah, strawberry I love fire. It. Yeah, uh, um, yeah. Let's take some phone calls. We got some people on hold. They've been on hold for a while. They want to talk to Chad Reed. First up, it's uh, Josh. What's going on? What do you want to talk to Chad about? How's it going, um, Chad? I'm from your area, and I recently rode at the Dirt World before you purchased. It, and I was hoping you can maybe talk a little bit about that. What you got new there? Um, maybe you added bathrooms. Uh, just kind of what's going on, and what made you want to kind of go into that route? Yeah. So. <laughs> uh long story but um we'll try to keep it short but you know like just like everyone it's it's close it's the 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 location of the place is awesome i loved it for the fact that my kids like i could take my kids on the mini bike track and it was just super simple i felt like they could learn the fundamentals um but like everyone else i hated how dusty it was how (laughs) you know just ran down the place was i took my bike out there once I did literally one lap of both motocross tracks and a lap of the woods loop and put my bike on the stand and didn't ride it ever again out there. Um, so we've completely redone everything. I mean, all there's three race tracks or three tracks that are going to be completely different. The place doesn't even look like the old place. Uh, we fixed the woods up. Uh, to answer your question on bathrooms, uh, yes, there will be bathrooms. There is a million things on the list of things to do, but I think at this point we are going to just open rather than stay closed and try to get everything done while everything's, you know, close. Um, obviously the weather has played, played a big role. We were planning on opening yeah, last month. weekend. Um, so yeah, I think that you're going to be quite impressed with the place. I think that we, we have, uh, you know, a lot of new goals, a lot of, you know, completely new ownership. Um, there's four of us involved and all four of us come from completely different backgrounds. Um, so that's been fun. You know, like I've been learning a lot about different things in business that, um, you know, that I was always interested to learn about. Um, so yeah, I don't know if you have any particular questions about it, but that's where is this track? Where where is this track for people who want to, it's in Statesville, North Carolina, Statesville, uh, right off, right off I 40. Um, it's about five miles down from I-77. Okay. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's, you know, like I'm in the Charlotte area. It's what are we 40 minutes from Charlotte. Um, and it's, yeah, I mean, it's, I've nice. personally been putting hours and hours and hours on machines and dozers and tractors. And I was, I'm a lumberjack. I bought a <laughs> chainsaw. I've been cutting trees <laughs> and and these are all things that I've been doing since I was a little kid. So, like, the retired version of me is so pumped. Ellie hates it. She thinks that did did we really do all this to become a lumberjack? But right. I think that I'm living my best best life at this point. So, nice. <laughs> it, it's awesome. Uh, thanks, Josh. Cool, man. Thank you Thank guys you. for doing what you do. Appreciate it. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, Skippy. Hopefully we'll see you out there, Josh. Skippy, what's your question for Chad? Yeah, what up, boys? What's up? What up? Uh, no, I know that uh, Eli had made some points about, uh, you know, really, you know, 
wanting to make some track changes and stuff like that. And I know you've been a, a, a solid voice for the riders over the years. And I'm just curious what you think about, uh, you know, what Eli was wanting to add back in in regards to the Dragon's backs and just kind of what you would, you know, like to see, uh, you know, for the tracks uh, going forward. Yeah, I mean, I didn't, I don't know. I'm not aware of what Eli said on comments. Um, but if I had to guess, Eli is one of the more old school guys now. Um, Eli happens to be multi-skilled, can go through whoops, can go through turns, can go through gatorbacks, um, is very capable of riding a technical racetrack. So I would imagine that Eli is wanting more of that. Eli is not a great starter, <laughs> not a consistent starter. Yeah. And so tracks that don't promote passing and, and you know, separation, um, Eli probably pays the biggest price out of everyone. Um, so yeah, I think that any individual that, you know, is capable of doing all those, you know, having that, that skill set wants, wants those back in the racetrack. So, all right, I, I agree. Whatever Eli said, I agree with. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Skippy. All uh, right. Cheers, boys. Yeah. I mean, I've been, I've been cutting Feld some slack and columns or on my shows about the tracks. They've been mostly uninspired. We're tr- they're trying to get the series done. They're trying to make it happen. They got Tuesday races, so I get it. It's been it's been a weird year and not a very thrilling year to cover the races or to watch many of the races. It really hasn't. It's been a, it's been a slog for sure for 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 us, you know. And and yeah, I mean, whatever. Sometimes uh, I think the the my only thing is is like the tracks look. You, 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 Feld's in a lose lose, right? If they try something and it doesn't work, they look silly. If they don't try it, then people complain that the tracks are always the same. So I, I get that and I mm-hmm. cut them slack for that. But this year in particular, the tracks do seem they they just don't seem their normal selves. You know, like even a bad track or even you know, like they just consistently have been pretty average. And I don't know why. Like I don't know if it's that's what they're going for. They're trying something new. Like I keep trying to figure it out and I can't figure it out. (laughs) Like the one Dallas track, the one that landed and it kind of did the zigzag and up and over the elevator turn. Yeah. Like what was that? I was so (laughs) angry. That's the one Steve said it was so great. It it looked okay. When we first showed up. Yeah. 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 Saturday morning. You watching the same room. No, no, no. no, Saturday morning. Watching the same you no, don't have to be getting the same paycheck or watching the same race that Ricky was. <laughs> Listen, it was before bikes hit the track. Before bikes hit the track, I'm like, hey, man, we got a split section that looks like equal. We got an elevated oh. turn. We got a big old yeah. bow burn. I was railing against I'm this, like, by the this way. thing could be good. And, and I'm like, no, no, it was terrible. I was, was terrib- so angry it, it was at terrible. his opinion of this. Um, but then that's what I get so frustrated is you get a track like that that I hated, and then you get a track on the same floor with the same amount of dirt, and it was great, the last one. So – if you're capable of making something so great, how can you also be capable of making something so poor? Like, I don't, I don't like know if you didn't, how that happens. If you didn't know any better, when you take the last race track and then you see the previous two race tracks in the same stadium, in the mm-hmm. same dirt, because yeah. you know, we know, like we know they didn't bring more dirt in, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. That is highly, highly <laughs> unlikely that yes. that happened. So, like like JT, I like, couldn't agree more in the fact that, like, how did you get two racetracks on the same stadium floor with the same amount of dirt so badly wrong, yep. and then yet you nailed it on one? Yeah. And it, that, that for me, is what it's just you're always at the mercy of the blade, you we, know, the yeah, guy let, with the blade. I let, me, let me voice this question. Let's just say, okay, hey, bring, hey, what's up? It's Chad. Hey, it's Feld. We want you to come on a Friday evening before every round. Okay, paint, I'm just painting you a picture. It's here. too late on Friday night, though. Hold on. Just, okay, yeah. whatever day. Okay. Okay. Thursday night, whatever the day is, or to ride the track. Oh, ride it. Have Chad or whoever Trey like let's ride the track. Yeah, How is it going to race? Ride it. You know what I'm saying? You, you you can tell like you've been around it. You know, like you you for good or bad, I've been around it long you enough. You can look at the map. You can look. You can look at the map on a piece of paper and know. Can't like pass you there. You kind of genuinely know what they're, you there. know, like there's, what's that? You can just be like, can't pass there. Not going to be able to pass yeah, there. That's it. 90 like, at the end of that section. What are you going to do totally. there? You know? yeah. I 100% agree. Um, and, and I'll you save f- you the rest of the conversation in the fact that that would never happen because that would take them putting, you know, 
you're trusting somebody outside their, yeah. you know, no, their bubble. Trey um, tried that. Trey tried it, man. He was. Yeah, man, but man. I heard a lot of things that Trey did too, and right. I don't, I don't know that Trey did it the right way. Um, but <laughs> I also get a kick out of. I hear Jimmy Perry's that guy. Jimmy, Jimmy is. Jimmy's up in the booth. What? Well, so, he's not the track guy, but he's the Feld. something. Yeah, he's the Feld guy. What is he? Because I don't know a human that hates Feld more than Jimmy. <laughs> yet, <laughs> yet, he's that guy. So I'm like, what, what the hell he, happened? He's Mike LaRocco Sr. where he's like, hey, tell that guy to move. Tell that photographer to move. Hey, move this banner. Move that tough block. It's catching guys. Oh, he's that guy. That guy. That kind of guy. Oh, my God. Yeah. That that makes sense. That even completes the story even better than what I thought it was. Okay, all right. Um, I mean, how yeah. many years have we sat in the in the semi with Jimmy when those conversations come up? And I think the fact that he's that guy is amazing. <laughs> but yeah, I I yeah. wish, and I would I would personally, I really would. That would be something like I don't have a desire to go do the booth. You know, like the right. TV thing doesn't interest me. Um, at this point, you know, maybe I get down the road and it does, but at this point, like I don't have a desire to want to be in the booth or do TV or anything like that, but I would, the ground, what I call is like the, the, on the ground zero, like being there and working with the track guys. And like, I keep saying it on social and it's like, it's so simple in some way right. to do some of the things that they're not doing. And I keep, like, I talk to Prater they changed the track in one of the races in Orlando because I text Prater and immediately they, they changed it. And I told Prater, I said, Prater, I was watching the heat races in the lights class. And I said, Prater, you need to put a, um, a pole up before the finish line. Someone's going to jump it. Jason Anderson in the next heat in the first 451 jumps it. And then yeah. they had to put a pole up yeah. and he's like, and then he sends me a picture with the pole. And I'm like, I told you. And, <laughs> and it's just, it's the little things, you right. know, like, Bikes don't go through whoops. Let's let's just take the talent out of it and be like, okay, bikes and bikes just don't go through whoops like they once upon a time did. Why don't we make the whoops easier in the fact that like you don't need to make steep whoops, you don't need to make big, you know, like make them so that make maybe make them bigger and rounder in my opinion, further apart so good guys like Eli Kenny can blitz them. But then you got your good guys like your Marvs and your mm -hmm. rest of your KTM umbrella that can jump them. And, you know, even AC is better at jumping them than he is skipping them. So why don't, and then you kind of got variations of, of things, you know, yeah. make the whoops bigger and rounder. Then you can like, it's a 10 minute and I posted it on my social. I hadn't driven a dozer in three years and I fixed a set of whoops in Florida in 10 That's, minutes. Basically. I, I saw that. Yeah, I saw that. You know, it, it, yeah. I literally timed it and I'm like, Dave, like this is, you know, like this is, I'm not being a douche. And obviously you like, I'm like here, this is facts. Like I haven't driven. This is not my job. Like I'm not a professional dozer driver. If I can do it in 10 minutes, your good guy could probably do it in eight or nine. And you, and then suddenly you have 20 feet of racetrack that becomes playable, you know, yeah, it has, has with, a different with, options, has options, has, right. Yeah. You know, like yeah. look at the races, like one of the races, I don't know where it was. Mookie crashed in the whoops. I don't know where it was. It might've been one of the Dallas's. Um, and I'm just like, Mookie should never have been so far right because the track went right anyway, but yet it was the only piece of track that was like halfway rideable. And it's just like, I don't know. I just wish that oh, this, it's a little thing that they could do to, you know, to just mm -hmm. make the the show better. That wouldn't, it doesn't cost money. It doesn't, all it does is it takes planning. Like literally. So like, I'm not stupid. I see what they're doing. And every dozer that they've had has rippers on the back. You can't back whoops when you've got a ripper on the back. So it's like, you know what stadiums you're going to months in advance. Put a, you know, put your order in for your dozer yeah. to have no rippers. You know, it's that easy. Trey, uh, and, Trey's theory, sorry to interrupt you. Trey's theory is like, look, some of the operators aren't, you know, you have the world's best riders. You don't have the world's best operators. Hmm. They're not paying enough. They, they work you too hard and they're out of time. They're just out of time to do it right, take the time. That's Trey's theories on, on track building, both of those theories. He's like, some of the guys aren't very good. They're just like, you know, some of the privateer riders aren't well, very good. Who, who some is, of the dozer guys aren't very good. Who is advising them? 
I would ask that. Yeah. Who, I, like, I, okay, I, yeah. you have. Do you have a tryout for the tractor guy? Like, you trying this but, dude but out before who, you. Who that's ever done it? Who's ever had to go through those obstacles and race a track like that is giving those guys See, advice on what works and doesn't? No idea. I don't yeah. know. I mean, you, you guys have been around it week after week after week like I have. We do not have new guys week after week or whatever. Like, we do have a crew, you know, that's consistent. And Meninga seems to be the head of the guys at yep. this point. I don't know if that's true or factual. Um, but he seemingly is the guy that's, you know, almost taken Rich's job. Um, would you agree or no? Yeah, yep, I think so, yep. So, I don't know that I agree that, that we don't have good guys because – you know, Meninga's good. All yeah. the other guys, like, they're good equipment people. Like, they know how to build tracks. They, like, I don't think the tracks are built bad. Like, I think early years, 20, 2020, uh, should I say, 2002, 3, 4, 5, like, those years, I would say that the tracks didn't get enough attention. They were built average. I don't, that's not my comment today. Like, I right. think that they build them well. They finish them well. I think they way over water them. And I don't believe that you can blame that on any of the track crew. That's a Mike Mui and, and a Dave Prater um, who have zero idea on how a racetrack should be watered. Um, and I think that that's the, that's the problem. You know, you, they, They're only building a racetrack off of a piece of paper that they did not design, in my opinion. They may claim it, or they might say that, hey, Dirtworks built them. I don't believe they build them. I think that, that those go across the desk at Feld, and I think Feld pretty much does what they want to do. Um, and I could be wrong, but mm -hmm. that's my opinion. Yeah. So I, I don't know that I agree fully on, on that, like okay. that they're, you know, that it's right. a, a lack of, you know, talent in a, in yep. a dozer or a bobcat. Like I, I think the crew's good. I think it's a solid crew. I really do. I just think that they're limited on what they can do, sure. how creative that they can be. Um, and then also how much dirt they have to work with too sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. The dirt thing is, is absolutely true. Uh, well, we've kept you, we've kept you long enough, Chad. Thank you, uh, for coming on, man. Always good to catch up and, and, uh, get yeah. your thoughts on everything and your, your track guy, your BMX guy. Very busy, very busy guy. Yeah, <laughs> so. yeah, no, busy for sure. And yep. and this new racetrack at uh, Moto Forty is gonna gonna keep me busy. We're hoping to open it this weekend. Um, nice. We got pounded with rain last week, so <laughs> we wow. were we were all set. We're like, all right, we're open and nice the weekend. We're gonna we're, we're gonna go Friday, Saturday, and it yeah, we got rained out and we had to push it. But yep. um, we're hoping that everyone yeah comes out and has fun and enjoys enjoys well, the new track. Is it a is it a track just open weekends? You guys have weekday practices or so, how's that so working? So right now it's uh we're we're doing like Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Okay. And then uh and then beyond that point, um we're really trying to figure out what what the customer wants, really, to be honest with you. Um you know, like we want to take a lot of data over the next couple of weeks and figure out like what is the customer wanting? Do they want right. is it a Tuesday, is it a Monday, is it Wednesday, is it 3 days, is it 1 day, 2 days? Um, and so we want to be able to try to figure out what that, you know, what that, what those days are. Um, but for, for right now, the goal is Friday through Sunday, um, you know, so the weekends and, um, we have a lot of people wanting to come and camp. So then we're trying to figure out, okay, if people want to come camp, we need to work on our parking. So that's a big thing that we've been working on right now is maximizing the parking space and then trying to figure out like the, you know, your trailer hookups, your 30 amps, your 50 amps and, and all these kinds of things. So it's, it's kind of like a, yeah. you know, Jeez. it's a clean slate and you get to, you kind of get to have fun with it. You know, like obviously I've been to so many different tracks and, you know, there's things that you love and things you don't like and there's things that you would do. And, um, and so, yeah, trying to, you know, put all that in and then, but then you also have to make dollars and cents of it. Um, you know, cause it, I'm always a creature of habit is the fact that if you're going to do it, let's do it big. Yep. And you know, the, you got three other partners that you have to sell that to. Um, so I kind of, you know, shoot for here and then they cut me down to here and <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it's always fun when you got budgeting, but, yeah. uh, yeah, I think we're, 
we're gonna have fun, man. We're gonna I'm gonna go out there and I'm gonna work. I'm gonna put some water on the track and drive track. Chad Reed flagging. Yeah, flagging, cutting down trees. All yeah, yeah, I yeah, might yeah. uh, I might have a. I'll probably have a red flag and a yellow flag. Huh. Um, get, weech, get Weege out there. Yeah, get, yeah, get, yeah. I think we should get Weege because Weege doesn't go to the races these days. No, so he, he doesn't. No, no, yeah, and he's a great flagger. He used to flag at English Town, so he's on board with <laughs> oh that. Oh my gosh! And uh, I will. I will send you guys pictures of weeks when I got it, when I give him a flag. Please, please do, please do. We need to see this. I think that that um, would be perfect. No, that'll be great because we bug him all the time. And I'm glad to get you off the line here without you and JT talking about MotoGP for 20 minutes. So, oh, yeah, yeah. I was gonna so actually good. bring up MotoGP. Uh, no, 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 it's do okay. You, you guys, do can, you not watch it? No, no, I, I, no, I don't watch that. I, 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 oh, I have other things to do, geez. like clean out my it's closet. It's so or good. Um. All right. Thanks, Chad. Appreciate it. Uh, good luck with everything, and uh, keep in touch, Thanks, man. Thanks, Chad. Thank, thank you again. That was fun, uh, right. bench racing. It's been a while. It has been. All right, buddy. Thank you. Yeah. Later, guys. See, See ya. ya. That's Chad Reed, everybody. Brought to you by Vertex Pistons, of course. Uh, good interview, as always. Yeah. You think but, he'll ever unblock me? No. No. He, no, he loves not. it too much. Uh, a couple calls for Kiefer real quick before commercial. Spencer, what's up, man? You want to talk to Chris Kiefer? Yeah, I just wanted to say thanks to Kiefer. I actually sent him an email about 11 o'clock last night. So probably 9 o'clock their time, and he responded to me. I had some questions about my 450 with handlebars, and he answered it really quickly, and it was really helpful for me. So I just wanted to thank him for that. My pleasure, man. That's why we're here. Family first. All right. Thanks, buddy. Thank you. Uh, yep. Brandon's been on hold for a while. Brandon, what's going on, man? What's your question? Yeah, so I've got a couple of questions. Um, the first question is kind of for all three of you guys, but I'll kind of start with JT. Um so I was in the pits in Dallas 3, I think it was, and JT was kind of talking about how factory bikes don't really have a lot of engine brake. And I was just kind of wondering how they kind of achieve that. Is it like an ECU thing? Is it a transmission thing? What exactly are they doing to eliminate engine brake? It's something to do with uh, with the timing and the way the ECU works. I don't know. Maybe Steve or Kiefer can explain it better on the engineering side, but it's definitely a thing. Well, it's it's a thing. It's production bikes. Think about the production bike versus <clears throat> a old production bike. They've gotten rid of engine braking. They've got rid of the decompression lever. You know, they've figured it out with – I don't think the ratios have changed, Kiefer, so much. They're still like just 13 to 1 or whatever, right? But I think uh, but, factory-level things, I think what he's talking about, it's, it's a mixture of things. It's ECU, what JT said. You can tune some of that out. It's crank, um, having a, a different crank, um, crank mass. Uh, also, we used, to, we used to take our counterbalancer out sometimes. Right. Yep. Mm -hmm. Also, transmission, tumbling transmission, um, polishing transmission. But that takes but, some drag but, away, but, too. But, but if you ride a 2012, 2012, 2000, yeah, there's differences. Right, right. 2005 YZ450 Correct. versus the 21, you'll be blown away by a production bike engine braking. Just from a production standpoint, that has gone away mostly because of chassis balance. So a lot of times when we do production testing, we consider engine character for chassis balance too. So if the, just like Chad was saying, look, a lot of these new production machines are front wheel bias, and he is right. That's because of the average consumer. They're built for people that buy their motorcycles. I hate, not, I hate it. They're not built for the racer guys. So the racer and the teams have to figure out a way to balance the bike out. I know Yamaha struggles with this. Um, the race team at times. So um, <laughs> it's kind of a hard thing. you got to find a right balance yep. to please the consumer. And sometimes the front wheel bias is too much. Sometimes it's not enough. And you figure that out over in production. You know, um, The test riders can say so much, but it's up to the production engineering team of that manufacturer to decide which way they want their bike to go. Brandon, we used to have these slipper clutch from Japan. They're factory parts. They were... $10,000 each, these clutches, and they were intricate, and they used all these sophisticated, uh, um, uh, what are those plates called? Uh, Fibers? Steel? No, 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 but the place you put in it. <laughs> Basket? Pressure plate? No, no, no. The, 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 the little uh, jutter, jutter spring. Jutter spring, yeah. We had jutter springs jutter in there, spring, yeah. and we had fibers, and we had a, a ramp, and we had titanium balls that ramped up. I mean, the whole thing. And it took away engine braking, right? And we used them for the first year, and they worked really well and everything else. And then STM came out with a slipper clutch that you could buy for like 600 bucks, and it was way better than our factory one. It was amazing. Uh, and then from there, we started. We took one out one time, and the guy's like, I don't really notice it. Like, they were like, no, oh, let's just use production yeah. stuff. And some like, of the engine braking is good. Yeah, yeah. You have to have some. You get some front wheel traction off of that when you let off, right? You got yeah. some front wheel bite. So yeah, you, you need can, a little bit. You can use it to your advantage for right. sure. Uh, anything right, else, right. Brandon? Yeah, yeah. So the second question I had, 
So I was listening to the Re-Raceables podcast with you and Wygant, and you guys mentioned, and JT was on it too, I think it was the Indy 04 one, yep. um, and you guys were talking about during the parade lap how you guys were just, or JT was saying that you just had to keep the bike revved out the entire time around. I was wondering what fuel were you guys running that would cause you to I don't know. Do it was that. uh well it, it was the was it un- VP stuff Yeah, it was or? VP, the unleaded fuel came in and everyone was using one kind of unleaded fuel and we found on, on our dyno charts that this other unleaded fuel produced more power, worked better. Our riders liked it better. However, the 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 the, the bad thing about it was you had to get it you had to get the motor hot for it to work well, otherwise it would foul plugs. So it was whatever mixture it was. So that's where JT was saying that our guys would just rev the shit out of our bikes on the starting line, on the parade lap, everywhere, oh. to get the temperature up so oh, that yeah. the fuel would start working. It was uh, hor- horrific at times. We fouled. We used to have five, six plugs in our in our. What in year our, is this? Oh five. When okay. did the, when did the rule come in? Oh five. five. Yeah. Uh, so it was our blend of fuel that we were running. No one else was running it. Like we were like, why is no, no one else? You couldn't want a different plug. Drop, having to hold your bike wide no. open the yeah, whole yeah, parade lap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it produced more power for us on the dyno, hmm. so that's why we ran it. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. So and All also, right. uh, did you catch that re-raceables where JT said that sometimes when he was getting lapped, he just didn't give a fuck and didn't move over, right? Because he was angry yeah. about his own race. Yeah, I did, but okay, I'm, so- I'm still upset with JT <laughs> about the whole Joe Robbie thing. And saying that, yeah, Joe Robbie, the Georgia very, Dome was yeah, he's, the same thing as the Mercedes Benz Dome. It it is not. You're angry it about is. it, but just remember, next time JT, yes. next time JT rags on Vince or any other lapper, remember his words. Sometimes he's so pissed he would never move over. Just remember those words. I, I'm not Ridiculous. mad at Vince about not getting out of the way. I'm mad at Vince for several other things. All right, just remember well, that. Sometimes I, I will. Know. I'll I'll keep that in the back of my mind. All right. Thanks Thank for the you. call, man. Thank you, Brandon. All right. Keep it Thanks. up, guys. Thank you, man. All right, before we go to commercial break here, Chris Kiefer brought to you by Decal Works. For over 30 years, Decal Works has led the industry in quality and customer service by offering the best custom motocross graphics uh, and rider ID products out there. God. They're fishy. Lo- what? I, for- I just keep forgetting. You keep forgetting? Yes. Why are you for? I don't know. They're right there. I know. Decal Works, officially licensed with Honda, Yamaha, Cowie, Suzuki, KTM, Husqvarna, and Gas Gas. We have a Suzuki RMZ voicemail question for you two gentlemen. Mm. You know, for All right, yeah. bring it. Uh, oh, you're not RM Army anymore. I'm not. Yeah. Red, red. Red, red. The expert staff will I'm back. Stop it. I'm, I'm back. back. Their expert staff will go above and beyond to make sure your questions are answered, quality, service, and knowledgeable. Of course, Cooper Webb, Marvin Muskan, running the Red Bull KTM factory graphics from Decal Works, decalmx.com, Pulp MX to save 20% off. They're making... Chris Key for some custom graphics here very shortly. Yeah, I gotta do that. Pulp MX code to save money at decalmx.com. All right, uh, we're gonna call Kyle Chisholm. We just think Chiz won that. Chiz, what, what's wrong? He's feel tired. He's bogging, dude. I see I'm his not, eyes over I'm there. I'm not. I'm oh, looking okay. over there, and he's All like, right. "Let's I was, go." To, I was looking down. We're gonna we're gonna call Chiz when we come back. Talk a little bit about his season, oh, Blue Crew. That's a good call. It is a good call. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna got, talk to JT about uh, uh, riding again. He's uh, gonna hit the track tomorrow. Oh, yeah. We got uh, oh, Robbie Wageman coming up, who you had a beef with. I didn't have a beef. At a local we just had track. A you had a beef jerky with? Yeah. No, yeah he's a good point. kid. Uh, we'll go to that and much more after this commercial break, everybody. Thanks for listening. Fuck you and your show, Mathis. <laughs> Those who love motocross know Motorsport.com has the knowledge and expertise to make your next ride your best Best ride. ride. Motorsport.com has a broad selection of in-stock parts and gear at competitive prices. We specialize in bringing you OEM and aftermarket parts, riding gear and accessories for dirt bikes, motorcycles, ATVs, and UTVs. All thanks to the most dedicated and experienced team of gearheads in the industry who use the very parts we sell on Motorsport.com. Motosport.com always offers fast shipping and free delivery on orders more than $79 to ensure you never miss a ride. Whether you race on the track, ride the trails, or commute on the street, shop Motosport.com today for the best customer service and experience when buying the parts and gear you need to stay on two and four wheels. Make your next ride your best ride only at Motosport.com. Steve. Kiefer. You want to hear about one of the best rides I've ever had? Dude, it's not time for After Dark yet. <sighs> Chill down, dude. I just want to talk about race tech stuff. Oh, that's it. Okay. Gosh, go man. 
basically I've had the chance to do some stuff with Racetech recently with the CRF 250R and of course the KX250. And as you know, I've talked about on the show, I wasn't a real hardcore fan of Racetech stuff back in the day. But since Rob and Andrew and those guys have assembled at Racetech, the stuff has been great. So uh, for you guys out there listening, if you guys are looking to get your engine work done or even some suspension work, or Steven says on the show sometimes, get your seals and <laughs> your oil rebuilt in your, fork, in your fork and shock. Get it rebuilt. It helps. 15 to 20 hours. Head over to Racetech.com. Check out. They even got a cool little simulator. You can look at uh, what size spring rate you might need for your bike. So a lot of cool features over there on the website. But uh, And as you know, Yamaha Blue Crew guy over here, you guys have some of that on your bike. It's fantastic. Zombie Blos uses it. Jerry Robin uses it. Starling, all of those guys over there. Malcolm Stewart won a Supercross with Race Tech stuff a few years ago. Pulp 19 is the code to save. Mention Pulp MX when you, when you call. You can save on the service. You can save, save on motor work. You can save on springs if you just want to do that and get it put in yourself or do it yourself. Race Tech is the one-stop shopping for motor and suspension work. You can also mention the code Home Life 2020. That's better. That's a better code, I think. We'll do either one. Just <laughs> listen, people. Give your bike some love. Get your suspension modified service. Get your motor modified serviced with the folks at Race Tech. Good people. Want a chain and sprocket kit but aren't sure what you need? Then call Vortex EK at 800-440-3559 and get hooked up with the right sprocket and chain kit for your bike. With more than 30,000 possible gearing combinations, Vortex EK has more gearing than your garage has room for. It's a ridiculous amount of gearing for nearly any bike. Join the ranks of Star Racing Yamaha and Supercross champion Dylan Ferrandez and run a Vortex Sprocket. Available in red, blue, black, orange, silver, and Kawasaki green. Yes, green. Call a doctor because things just got sick. Warning may cause extraordinary power, excessive performance, and speed so fast your eyes will be. Call Vortex EK at 800-440-3559 and mention promo code PULPMX2021 and get the best deal on your next order. Maxima Racing Oils was created for world-class racers who challenge the limits of possibility. Their demands on equipment drive us to look beyond conventional ideas and to exceed industry standards. It's in our DNA to identify problems, formulate solutions, and execute at the highest levels of competition. Case in point, the championship-winning Factory Kawasaki Race Team, longtime Maxima partners who extensively use Maxima throughout the bike. Maxima's USA-made products exceed JSO requirements and can be used in all motorcycle brands. Kawasaki, Honda, Yamaha, Suzuki, KTM, Husqvarna, and more. Maxima Racing Oils. Experience the difference. Visit MaximaUSA.com for more information. Hey, Pulp Nation. Andy from Guts Racing. We are the leaders in seat technology. We feel like for any need that you have with your seat, we've got you covered. For 2021, we're going to be adding more colors to our, our product line, and we're going to be adding more merchandise to our product line. Also new for 2021, we've expanded our distribution through motorsportoutlet.com. So please support the people that support Pulp, support Guts Racing, and also support motorsport.com. Hope to see you guys at the track soon. Once again, this is Andy Gregg from Guts Racing. Thanks again to Pulp Nation for all the support. FMF Racing is proud to celebrate over 45 years of fun, building every FMF exhaust right here in the USA. Owner and founder Don Emler may have started FMF Racing in his garage 45 years ago, but Don is still hands-on in our 100,000 square foot state-of-the-art manufacturing facility in Southern California. FMF's goal? design and manufacture the world's best performance exhausts 100 percent in the usa under one roof fmf is a proud sponsor of the lucas oil pro motocross championship for over 25 years hi it's tomax superfan dylan here the only thing i love more than seeing eli win is michelin motorcycle tires and Michelin is introducing many exciting new tires for 2020. 
For V-Twin riders, the Michelin Commander 3 Cruiser and the Michelin Commander 3 Touring Tires offer improved wet grip and enhanced tread life. For sport bike and track day riders, the Michelin Power 5 tire and the Michelin Power GP tires feature the same architecture and profile for effortless sport bike setup from street to track. If you'd like to have the same tire that won the 2019 Red Bull Ayersburg Rodeo, the Michelin Enduro Extreme tire is the tire for you. And the Michelin Star Cross 5 tire range is now available for young motocross and off-road riders in sizes for 50cc bikes and up. To learn more about these and all other Michelin two-wheel products, check out www.motorcycle.michelinman.com, visit your local dealer or online retailer, and follow at Michelin Motorcycle on Instagram and Facebook. Hey guys, it's Mathis. Look, if you're still not wearing a neck brace in 2020, it's time to go get one or at least think seriously about it. It's been over 15 years since the neck braces first came out. They're not the clunky, oversized devices they used to be. Atlas came in and changed the way all neck braces were designed by introducing flexible technology to the world and proving that neck braces can be something you can actually ride in while performing at the highest level. Look at Jason Anderson winning Supercross championships or look at Martin Davalos or anybody else. Don't take my word for it just because I have two Manitoba championships to my name. Wait, I have four. Just look at how many other brace designs look like the Atlas one. Atlas pioneered all the modern neck brace features and have been refining them ever since then. While the competition has been trying to catch up, grab the brace that's been leading the pack. Check out atlasbrace.com. Get yours today. There is a pulp discount if you check out sponsoreddeals.com on pulpamexshow.com. So be like Chase Sexton, Martin Davalos, and many other guys and wear the Atlas brace. Atlasbrace.com. For over 30 years, Decal Works has led the industry in quality and customer service by offering the best custom motocross graphics, plastics, seat covers, and rider ID products. Decal Works is officially licensed with Honda, Kawasaki, Yamaha, Suzuki, KTM, Husqvarna, and Gas Gas. Their expert staff will go above and beyond to make sure your questions are answered. Decal Works is a proud sponsor of Red Bull KTM Factory Racing and the Rockstar Energy Husqvarna Factory Off-Road Team. Visit decalmx.com and be sure to use promo code PULPMX at checkout. Quality, service, and knowledge is what makes Decal Works stand out. Decal Works, number one for many reasons. Our guys at Works Connection have always been there for the Pulp MX show, and they're there for you as well. Uh, they're just as passionate and as dedicated to the sport as you are. For over 30 years, Works Connection has been designing and producing innovative products like the Pro Launch Start Device, the 123 Easy Build Elite Perch, Elite Axle Blocks, and much, much more. You'll find Works Connection products on AMA Pro Riders bikes under the canopies of Team Honda, HRC, Star Racing, Smart Top Honda, as well as top teams and privateers alike. The best part of this deal is Pulp MX20 code saves you money at worksconnection.com. Stop by your local outlet and check out the new lineup of Works Connection products for 2021. I've got the perch on my bike. I've got the engine plugs. I absolutely love it. Great product. I've got the uh, start device as well, which helped me in one moto at the World Vet Championships in one moto. Not so much. Worksconnection.com. Pulp MX20 is the code to save. Please check them out. All new. 2021 products now available. Thanks for listening. Over 65 years ago, Vertex Pistons was born out of a small technical workshop in northern Italy's famous Motor Valley. Expanding and maturing among the racing legends of Ferrari, Lamborghini, MV Augusta, and Ducati. Today, Vertex Pistons are the pistons of choice for motorcycle riders and teams throughout the world. Because of their renowned reputation for exceptional quality, Vertex Pistons is a factory piston supplier to KTM, Husqvarna, Beta, Gas Gas, and TM. From the Motocross, Supercross, MXGP, GNCC, National and World Enduro Series, you can find Vertex Pistons winning championships. Vertex Pistons strives to provide you with world-class factory technology at a very competitive price. No matter which brand of bike you ride, when it's time to rebuild your top end, Vertex Pistons will have your engine performing better than new. To see our full range of two-stroke and four-stroke pistons in replica, 
high compression, or GP style configurations, visit us at vertexpistons.com or stop into your local dealer and ask for a Vertex Piston Kit today. Have, uh, Jason Thomas and Chris Kiefer in studio. Great interview by Chad Reed earlier. Always, uh, always insightful for Chad. And uh, we got the Race Tech rant of the night. I forgot to ask you, gentlemen, if you have one. I already got one. Load it up. I got one too as well. Uh, we got the X Brand Goggle Tariffs coming up and the Motorsport.com Tweet at Talon segment. All coming up here as well. Uh, we took a poll on Twitter. Uh, well, not a poll, but just basically. Who do you want to hear from when our buddy Kenneth Watson bailed on us? And um, uh, it, it ended up it's Chiz. So, yeah. We, Chiz uh, is good. We thought, we thought we'd get Chiz. I mean, why not, right? Oh, no shit, asshole. I don't like the baby Chiz thing. Infant Chiz thing. Infant Chiz. I don't like it. Cade has a long way to go. Yeah, just, in- he doesn't fit that guy. Okay. No. I just don't feel it. What Fair do you feel enough. like? I just kind of... I'm agnostic to you the whole care. thing. No. Yeah, just keep living your life. Mm-hmm. Okay. Profilter.com. Please check these guys out. The Motorsports uh, Motor Concepts guys, I should say. Use Profilter.com. Uh, our listeners get 30% off uh, the discount. Pulp 20 at uh, checkout. I guess it's 20% actually. My bad. 20% uh, at Profilter.com. Pulp 20 at checkout. Pre-oiled uh, air filters. You never got to uh, clean an air filter ever again. Imagine the alternative way that eliminates the time and chemicals required to clean and oil your filters. Sold through Power Sports Dealers Nationwide. Pick up a pre-oiled, ready-to-use premium air filter, oil filter for your next service. Thanks to Pro Filter. Uh, uh, they make air filters, oil filters for dirt bikes, street bikes, side-by-sides, and everything in between. Thanks to those guys for coming on board. Also, I want to thank the folks at Michelin. Our buddy, uh, Randy Richardson over there at Michelin, doing a great job. The guys at Michelin are fantastic. The Starcross 5s, which uh, I use on my uh, Blue Crew, and I'll be using tomorrow when uh, I am roosting the shit out of Jason Thomas out there. Western Raceway. Bring it. Sucks. I'm going to miss it. It, it, is, it does suck. You're going to miss it. So thanks to the folks at Michelin, whether it's the Starcross 5s, which are great dirt bike tires and they're available for the <coughs> smaller size bikes now. The V-Twin guys have the Commander 3 Touring tires. Sport Bike and Track Day guys, you can use the Power 5 and the Power GP tires. Uh, are Michelin, are they Are they in MotoGP? Who's that? Michelin? Michelin. Yes, they, are the, they have spec tire, so you can only use Michelin. You can only use Michelin. Yes. What, what was Chad talking about? How the guys... It used to be Bridgestone... Back in the day, it used to. Well, it's been Michelin. It, and it they spend huge money, right, to be the spec tire. But it used to be Bridgestone in um, MotoGP as well. Was there ever two tires available? But wasn't Chad talking about just now that somebody knows that this tire is not going to be no good at a course? Well, so in right, MotoGP. Yeah, but so like wasn't right now, Michelin they bring new tires every year. Yep. To the race, okay. right? So KTM. When they build their chassis, they're expecting tire performance to do one thing. Yeah. Well, when Michelin brings a new tire for 2021 and it does Y and they're expecting it to do X, the bike is like, yeah, we can't race. Well, we, we're, maybe they should call guys. Randy and get the spec on that tire. The problem is they don't really know what they're going to get. Like, listening to one of the riders talk, <laughs> they're not going to call Randy. <laughs> they're not going to call Randy. No, I don't think so. Not for MotoGP <laughs> spec. Oh I don't think. No. I would call Randy. I just like when you just – it's it's actually a joke. And then and JT goes on like, well, you know what, Steve? <laughs> Let me just tell you something about that. <laughs> but in all seriousness, right, one of the riders, I was listening to him talk, and he's like, 
okay, we tested six months to get this bike, the KTM new motor. Because it's all they're all one off. Is bikes. it like F one kind of thing? They yeah, have, like yeah, these yeah. bikes are not meant to be sold right. ever, right? right. They're one off built bikes. They build them for what they think their tire is going to be. And they test for months and months and well, engineer. Well, they should have tested with the new tire. They don't know what it's going to be. That's, well, see, that's bullshit. That's bullshit. They F1, should, at least F1 gives you the tires. Should have called Randy Richardson. They didn't know. So I don't know how, I don't know how the pro. Well, let me tell you, Steve. I don't know how the, the process reason. works. But I know, listening to all these riders, they're like, this, oh, yeah, listen, we're way off. Our, our next guest is Samsonite. on the line. Samsonite. And, and I didn't in, intend this from this Michelin read to go that way. Oh, I see now you, you woke the you poked the bear. Has the bear been poked? I, I just want to talk about Michelin. Billy Bolt you, yep, wins the a, Enduro Extreme with he's a woke. Michelin. Starcross fives, Commander three. Their 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 sport touring tires are next level. So maybe the jerk offs at KTM for MotoGP should try some Commander three. It's not just KTM, but I, they were they have been very <laughs> vocal threes. about it. Commander three. Hey yep. man, Listen. hey what's up everybody? I'm Randy. I got some Commander threes. You want to slap on this son bitch right here? <laughs> <laughs> he talk, does not talk like that. <laughs> Listen, when it comes to tires, whether it's Formula One or MotoGP, everyone's going to be unhappy. It right, doesn't matter right, what right, you right, give right, them. Right. They're going to be unhappy, okay. whether it's performance or whether it's wear or wow. whatever. Try the E-Wilds on e-bikes. Try the Wilds on mountain bikes. Uh, the official sponsor of the wrap-up show as well. Is that what I got? Wilds? No, you have the DH. Okay. Yep. Uh, so please, motorcycle.michelinman.com. Visit your local dealer or online retailer. Follow at Michelin Motorcycle on Instagram and Facebook. And uh, also, thanks to the folks at Art of Sport. I love this stuff. Uh, JT, do you need some more? You want to take it back with you? I don't know. If yeah, you, yep, I would like right. to. Yeah. We have some more Art of Sport for you as well. Uh, so please check them out. They are a body and skin care brand, and they are the, one of the fastest growing out there. Kenny Roxon's a partner in this as well. I use a deodorant. I use an activated charcoal body wash. I use uh, uh, the deodorant as well. The products are formulated with natural botanical ingredients to keep you smelling fresh all day. Even better, they leave out the bad stuff. There are 7,000 five-star reviews. They're available at Target. They're available at, uh, at uh, Walgreens, at CVS. They're available at all these stores now. Every product's under 10 bucks. Artofsport.com. Dude, Heather told me something, uh, what they sell at Target now. I couldn't believe it. Hmm. I could not believe it. They sell women toys in the pharmacy area where you get- Give them massages. No, 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 no. Oh. No. Okay. All right. Artofsport.com. Can okay. I just get into that? Yep. Uh, Crunchal look, region. Please check that out. You won't be disappointed. <laughs> Art of Sport is pl pleased and proud to bring you our next guest on the night. He's a fill-in. Answered my call right away. He deserves to come on fill the show. Fill-in caller? He's been doing a great job this year. It's everybody's favorite Chiz. Kyle Chisholm. What's up, buddy? What's up, guys? What's happening? So, um, I'm stopped on the interstate uh, in Tampa. On purpose? Why. Just, yeah, just on purpose. Just to talk to you guys. Oh, okay. Traffic. Oh, I like it. I like it. <laughs> no, uh, Dad, Dad was getting my – I got to go – I had my race engine rebuilt, suspension redone, just some maintenance stuff. Stock, stock engine. Right there, so. <laughs> so I had to go get that race bike, get the practice bike, get it broken in tomorrow. So Dad, typical, you know, gets up work at like 7, and right. we're there till you know, 10, get everything ready. And Cheers. Driving home now. What's the so. difference between your practice and race bikes? The same fucking motor. No, I'm just saying. No, I just, I, we just rebuilt it. Just top end and stuff. Oh, okay. So oh. I'm just going to – Got a breaker in. It's it's a great chiz, and you know we 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 pump you up. We the chiz is gonna chiz. We've been doing that. For, you're on a stock motor. You have an exhaust and some race fuel, and your map is stock too, he right? Has zeros on his map. Yeah, you have zeros on your map. Well, and I do the hard hitting map too. I go back and forth between. Oh, the you do. Okay. okay. <laughs> so like like at one of the Orlando's, I wrote at the one that I like. I hold shot and let a bunch of the. LCQ and then Dino passed me like towards the end. Yep. So between the heat and the LCQ, like remember how slippery that dirt was? And I was just like, and I, so keep in mind, like you just said, my bike stock, FMF pipe, and then just Pro 6, you know, race fuel. So I was like, the bike was too, too fast for me. It was too snappy because the dirt was so slick. So between the heat and the LCQ, I went from, I think, the hard hitting to all zeros or whatever it was. <laughs> I just you know, did a little, did a little change. Yeah, a little change. So it felt a lot better in the LCQ. You're on the so, line. You're like, Gary, get, pull out your thing. cell phone. Gary Bear, pull out your cell phone. <laughs> get, this, no, get this map it's, changed. It's my, it's, it's my cell phone. It ain't his. He <laughs> doesn't know how to do that. So that's me. What a, what a, but, what a, what a, a sales point for Blue Crew. Dude. And I don't Jeez. know why they're not using that more. He whole shots factory bikes. <laughs> like if it they really, could go 16 really for 16 good. with Chiz, do an ad. Yeah. You know? Yeah. 17. 
17 cents. Really cool. But, yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Uh, water, baby. A lot of times, fast the faster your bike is, the harder it's to start. Yeah. The thing's just got yeah. so much it torque, you can't up, right? control it. Uh, and the, mo- so, the Yamaha's motor's already strong, you yeah. know, so, yeah. Like every every weekend, it's a it's a game in our house to see where Chiz is on the start around the first corner and where the star guys are. Right, right. Most of the time, Chiz is ahead of all the star dudes around the corner. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, the, bike, the bike is really good stock, and I've always said, like I said, I rode the Suzuki a couple years ago. Yeah. It at least stock in the bike that I rode a couple years ago. It wasn't bad by any means, but like it didn't have the most bottom. You know what I mean? But I got I got really good starts on it. I think you guys see it now. The Suzuki gets good starts. I think it's because, like what JT just said, it really, at least the bike I rode, didn't have a ton of, like, bottom-end, like, response. So it's, like, easy to be consistent. Yep. Out of, the, of course, it's fast no matter what, right? So, like JT was just saying, when the bike has so much power, it's hard to control it and get it to just drive. And that's what made that bike good. But flip that to like so my yamaha my blue crew it's literally stock and when i say that i like people probably think oh yeah it's kind of stock ish it's literally stock like <laughs> you can't make it more stock besides the pipe and the race fuel that you yeah. can buy and put on oh, that's great so like yeah i think that does help me you know in that scenario sometimes so when you but text key for honest, oh so go, go ahead yeah i was gonna say but to be honest on the track i really don't show anywhere i'm not like oh man i wish i had more bottom there's like a point you know, maybe one percent of the time, I'm like, oh, I could use a little more bottom right there. But I literally run stock gearing, so I could just go up a tooth on the sprocket. You know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. The bike really is good. It was good. But anyway, good. Yeah, you, you made a big mod a, a couple months back. You got a new sprocket on the back, like an aftermarket one. Yeah, big mod. I, yeah, yeah. There you go. That's that's. See, my bike's not stock because I run a sun steer, sun star sprocket. So no, it's not. I, I so, wish, I wish I was a mechanic still. No, you and, don't. Yeah, well, I don't. But I wish I was a mechanic still and Chiz was around doing what he's doing right now. I would just fucking unload on my guy. Imagine if you were working for Nick and then you had to yeah. deal with Chiz. I, I, when my guy comes in, he's like, dude, I, I just I couldn't make the pass there. I need like a, a CC of oil. <laughs> I'd be like, you motherfucker. Like, look at, go over. I'm going to come over here. Come over here. I would drag him like a child <laughs> over to Chiz's pit. I'm like, he's got Gare Bear. He's got a steel sprocket. He's got race gas, you <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> and then I would start yelling at him again. Like, that's what I would do. I would just freak out. I'd be like, this guy just beat you or just got you right. off the start or whatever. I, I just, I would get hey, so mad. <laughs> to add to my mod stories, too. So not this year because Daytona was more, not as sandy. The sand they brought in was sandy, but the rest yeah. of the track, you know, they didn't dig holes because they were afraid of the rain. So they didn't really get down into that normal, like, black Daytona sand. So... So I didn't do it this year, but last year in 2020, um, in between the second and third practice, like the two time qualifying practices. So keep in mind, my bike was the same last year because you know, Yamaha was the same. I ran 49 sprocket, Pro 6 fuel, FMF pipe, you know, same bike. And I was struggling because I wanted the bike to like mellow out and not rev as quick and be smoother. So I'm like, I either need to go down on my gearing to like a 48. Or I practice with pump gas. So I'm like, let's just try pump gas. I was tr- I'm like, I need yeah. the bike to be more mellow. So between the two practices, my truck driver went over to the Sunoco and filled up a gas can with some 93. And that's what I ran the rest of the night was pump gas mm-hmm. at Daytona just to make my bike a little slower. Uh, so, Chiz, yeah. at this point, are you, you're a little stre- You told me you're a little stressed, right? Because the Chiz is going to Chiz. Like you, like you, like you, like no, fuck, man. These guys no, created a monster. I'm not stressed. Yeah, I'm not stressed. But you guys, like, and I don't care. So anybody that's like listening, I don't care if you want to say. But every week, when that when they've allowed fans in the pits, it's like, cheers, gonna cheers. I got you on my team tonight, and I'm like, oh god. But to be honest, I don't care. Like, right. it, it's it's whatever. And I told you earlier this year, I'm like. Gosh, you guys are stressing me out. Now I have to go chin. But it's just it's what it is. Yeah. Have, any time, really any time in your career, have you made? I mean, I'm, I'm, maybe you have. But have you made every main in one year? Oh, for sure, he has. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Everyone well, no, has injuries and shit. Yeah, yeah, I guess, I guess. Um, yeah, yeah. So when you're sitting on the couch texting Kiefer, like, hey man, when Kiefer's just like keep a stock. 
<laughs> dude, he'll he'll call me like in between practices. Hey, man, I got a downshift to first right here. What do you think? I go, dude, I don't know. It looks good on. I've been watching daytime practice. It looks fine. Like, <laughs> I do. I do for real. Like I've yeah. texted him. I called him like a few times this year. Uh, Just he's honestly probably spent more time messing with stuff than I have. Yeah, yeah, for and, sure. And I'm kind of stuck in my way. So I'm like, what's this good? I just like leave it alone. And but if something comes up, I'm like, keeper's kind of my go-to for stuff like that. Like, hey, have you tried this? Try that. You know, what, what do you think I should do? I'm here's on thinking. Uh, Whatever. Yeah. yeah. No. I yeah. Should. Uh, JT, was there a bike that you raced that was stock-ish? Do you remember a model where you um, where you just told Forrest or or Araldo or Bill Dill or anybody, hey man, just put it back to stock. Not really, because you know the bikes have gotten so much better now. But you know when I ride a bike now, like I remember doing uh, the test with you. I think with Dirt Rider, mm-hmm. we did a the shootout. Shootout. Yeah. shootout, yeah. And I remember riding the Yamaha engine and the KTM engine, and even at the the Fly Media intro, I rode a brand new KTM, and I'm like, I don't think I need much more than this. Like the torque is so good, your horsepower numbers are like 58 plus or whatever. Yeah, if I had yeah. that, yeah. I but going back then, man, they were not near as good as they are now. So no, I was always looking for more power. What, what an advertisement for Blue Crew. Cheers. The it really is good, like what JT just said. Like, like I said, there's sometimes when a little bit more like for Supercross, a little more bottom or something might help me a little bit, or I could be in between gears somewhere. But like I said, there's so many other changes I could make with mapping, with gearing, whatever, mm. to fix that. But Regardless, like I could put a high compression piston, cans, whatever, and some head work. But I don't feel like I could, I might be faster for like a lap or two, or it might make something a little easier sometimes. But I think it, it won't balance out. Like more times than not, I would rather the bike be a little bit on the more mellow side because I can race it faster, more aggressive. You know, obviously we heard people say that with Barsha back when he was on Yamaha yep. uh, the last couple of years. Like, he wanted to go back to stock because he could race it faster. For me, it's just, like, what it is stock. It really is, it's good 99% of the time. And the 1% that I could use more or whatever, it's just not worth it to the negative it would maybe affect for doing a 20-minute moto, you know, not just, like, a one fast lap. So, it just, it's good for me. I think it's a really good broad power that just, it, it doesn't really need much work. So yeah. it'd, be, it'd be cool to get Chiz on a star Yamaha and see how he would do. Like, you know? <laughs> he might he might freak yeah. out. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. is it really, I mean, Chiz, honest, would Chiz be a little bit I better? Do we don't know. Better. Go ahead, sorry. I don't, so I'll be honest. Like, I don't think I would. What would make me better, and I think any rider for the most part, is like the full package of that program or any program of that caliber. It's not just the bike. Right. It's like, okay, here's what it is. Now we have all these resources to try all this stuff, the program, the focus on just riding or whatever. You know, that's what – it wouldn't be just like hop on this bike. Oh, my gosh, this bike is so much better as soon as I hopped on it. Now I'm getting top tens every week. I don't think that would be the case. If anything, I might do worse. But then with time, building the program, getting used to the guys, then knowing what I want – like, this, the ceiling is higher with that program. But right off the bat, I don't think you would just jump in and be like, oh, now I'm a top five guy. You know what I mean? Right. Like, it's not – I don't think it would work like that. But Art of Sport, cool for them. Art of Sport so. bringing you Kyle Chisholm on the uh, Pulp Mix Show. Artofsport.com. Please check out the anti dandruff shampoo, the charcoal face wash, the deodorant, all products under 10 bucks. Chiz, that's right up your alley. All products under 10 bucks. Sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic for you. Uh, I also want to thank the folks at X Brown Goggles. Of course, Chiss might be the longest consecutive wearing X Brown Goggle athlete in the pits right I think now. think so, huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah, Chiss has been X Brown for a long time. So Probably since 2010, I think. Yes. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Chiss has been on board. Yeah. EKSbrand.com. Also, Chiss using Firepower parts. Mm-hmm. JT, these guys are yep. crushing it right now. Yeah, uh, Firepower is. Arguably the fastest growing brand maybe WPS has. Mm. Um, wow. For good reason. Yep. Kirk has been uh, really aggressive in helping to grow that brand. And, uh, you know, I say it on the, t- on the show all the time. It's been fun to watch because I I knew it before Firepower was even a thing. I yeah. watched it in its earliest infancy days uh, before it even had a name. And to see what it is now, it's uh, it's its its own thing. YZ450 part number for Firepower mm-hmm. is 490-2531. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, all right. That's how many emails I That's get. That's how about. many emails you get about <laughs> Firepower batteries. Uh, they really, they really are an awesome company. Like, I have you know worked with a bunch of companies and even companies I work with. They're like always one of the best ones. Like, they get back to me so quick. They're so like. They're just on it, like just good people to work with, like mm-hmm. like like what you guys are saying, and like for me, batteries and chains, and like I've said this before, like dude, the chains, for me, it's a big deal. Like that's one of the most important things. So here's one of my other mods that I make. I take the stock chain off and I put a firepower chain on. So another mod that I make on my bike there. Fire, oh, firepowerparts. It's not stock anymore. Yeah, it's not stock. Shit. Firepowerparts.com <laughs> to learn more information from those guys about the products. Uh, the Chiz uses and A-Ray and many, many other privateers. Firepower Parts doing a good job. Um, Chiz, you just had three of your better races in Dallas. Looking forward to Atlanta and the track? Yeah, like I, like even before the season started, like just looking at the schedule and yep. when they did all the track maps, like Atlanta was like, at first I was kind of like, oh, it kind of sucks not being in the stadium. But then I'm like, no, I looked at the track map and I'm like, it actually looks really cool. Yeah, It almost like – not exactly, but it almost reminds me of, like, a straight rhythm kind of track. Like, mm-hmm. I feel like it's just going to be long lanes with a lot of jumps. And I think it's just going to be different instead of that same cookie cutter, same freaking right. track every week. I think it's going to be kind of cool. So, And it doesn't look like it's going to be, like, a Daytona-style track. So right. it looks like it's going to be really unique and, like, a just a weird layout supercross track. And I, I like when they mix stuff up and throw stuff at us that just, like, throws us off i hate when you look at the track and you're like okay we jump everything on the second or third lap and, uh, jt and chad know, we J- do it all day yeah. now jt and yeah. chad were just talking about that we had chad on before you and they're like you look at the track map and you're like okay uh come out of here three on off and four you know what yeah. i mean like and literally yeah. at dallas one dallas two everyone yeah. did everything by the second lap the yeah. second lap yeah. of the first practice yeah. done really? except i'm sorry they started you- going three onto that table Oh, out of the corner. Out of the corner. Yeah. That was that near was the end of the right. first practice. Right. That was it. I I always say, and this is no offense to the to these guys, because all the guys that are racing there are really great riders, but, like, when the B or C group and the 250 class are doing the same jumps as, like, Tomac and Roxon, yeah. there's a problem with the track. Like, that shouldn't be the case. You know, the B group and 250s, guys that aren't even in the top 20, should not be jumping the same stuff. On a two, at that level, on a 250, should not be able to do the same things that the top guys on 450s are doing. Yep. yep. It's just, yep. I don't know. I agree. No, I, that, I, I that agree. That gives it away there, yeah. Well, Chiz, thanks for joining us on short notice. Really appreciate it. Great work this year. It's yep. uh, it's fun to see uh, do what you do on the on the budget that you're on, on the bike that you're on. And, uh, yeah, I, I really feel like on social – like, I mean, even I contribute to it, obviously, where I'm like, hey, by the way, Chiz is chizzing again, in case you're wondering. You know what I mean? I feel like this thing's just yeah. a, a lot of fun on social. It is fun. I feel like I, like I, I enjoy it. I like, I mean, I appreciate what you do, obviously, for a lot of guys, like for the sport in general. Like, you you give, like, you give a guy like an A-Ray or a me or a Clayson, like people like that, a little bit of like a platform that, you know, people just watch on TV or read interviews. It's always the top five guys or whatever that people hear from. Yeah. So, like, giving us a little bit of that attention, like, I appreciate that. I joke, like, oh, you guys put pressure on me, whatever. But I enjoy it. I love that people can come up, listen to the show, and, like, cheers going to cheers, you know, whatever. So it's, uh, it, it makes it fun and um, something for – other fans of the sport to root for other than just the same five guys every week or whatever. So yep. uh, it's awesome. I appreciate it. And, uh, yeah, I look forward to seeing you guys at the races. Awesome. Thanks, Chiz. Good luck, man. Later, I'll talk Chiz. to you. All right. Hey, thanks, guys. See, See ya. ya. Kyle Chisholm coming in with the late. Is uh, that Bogle or is that Chisholm? <laughs> no, we did this. We did a contest, know, yeah, years ago. And I picked them out right away. Oh, like, you did? Oh, yeah, I got them all right. We, okay. got, we had Brittany Chisholm. Got Kyle and Bogle to say the same stuff, and I'm like, "That's cheers, that's Bogle." Like, I got it. Like, they they are close, but okay. to me, yeah. Oh. Um, hey, one thing we didn't talk about much. Uh, thanks to Cheers for coming on Artisport.com, of course. Thanks, Kenny. Uh, thanks, Watson. <laughs> big, big, big meetings. Big meetings. <laughs> thanks, Kenny. Uh, Jason Thomas brought to you by Fly Racing. Whether it's the uh, Formula helmet with Rion Technology, great helmet, great helmet. I don't want to blow Fly. Yeah, but like that is a really good helmet. <laughs> 
No hate comms on that. That's fine. Right from the man himself. Yeah, it's a so great thanks to Fly Racing for coming in. The Zone Pro goggle is a, a premium, delivering premium performance. Uh, of course, the uh, Muckoff Honda team running that. And, uh, of course, the uh, all-new light pant and the kinetic mesh. Don't, this, know, don't anything about that. This Friday <laughs> coming out. The 2021 line is deeper and better than ever before. The light deep, pant. Deep black. Flyracing.com. Please check them out. Jason Thomas brought you by I like Wisdom. how you just look at me this the whole, whole fucking commercial. It's like, awesome. I love staring it. Staring at me. I love it. You wouldn't know anything about that. You wouldn't, would you? <laughs> uh, hey, we didn't talk much about 250 class right now. Obviously, Nichols and Craig are coming up here shortly. But Justin Cooper, 108, coming off another win. Ram it. McAdoo, 106. Hunter Lawrence, 102. Who you got, Kiefer? God. <laughs> what would the uh, points be with without the net? Ooh, that's God, good. My, my net saved him. Uh, I am going to say, gosh, dang it. This is tough. I like Cooper. I think Cooper pulls it out. I do. I, my heart would love Ramit to do it. He's yeah. our guy. Got his I'm going to have to up. say as well, Coop. Somewhere. My, but sentimental for me would be Mac. You're right. I'm going to say Justin Cooper, too. He's been my pick the whole way. He's, yeah, I don't have any reason to go away from it. I, I honestly thought he would have a huge lead by now, though. Yeah. It's been much closer than I thought, yep. but I'll stick with my pick. Yeah, it's good. Hey, that, that class has been good. Hunter got a win. Yep. Uh, 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 what's his nuts? Hammaker got a win. Like, it's been good. What's yeah. It's been really good yeah. to watch, for sure. Well, leaving Orlando, you're just like, oh, Cooper's yeah. going to kill these yeah. guys. Yeah, no Jay Mart. Yeah, case. no, absolutely. Uh, silly season stuff as well. Uh, looks like AA pay, Aaron Plessinger. Uh, has a has an offer from Red Bull KTM. Hmm. So I hear from good sources. So, um, what do you do in this scenario? Well, it's funny because, you know, J Mart said, uh, "Hey, I want to go to. A, I didn't go to Pro Circuit. He loves Mitch. I didn't go to Pro Circuit because I there was no path for a 450 ride there for me. Mm -hmm. So I went back to Yamaha, the team. But he hated, by the way, when he left. And you know, he's looking at AP's contract coming up, going, "That's my spot. AP hasn't had the greatest two years." That's my spot. Mookie, I think, is, you know, supercross only, so that's a separate deal. Um, and Dylan signed for a couple of years. And now Aaron, through all the uh, hard work on his own, figuring that bike out, getting back with the star guys, whatever that is, Aaron has been riding really well. And uh, now we all – I mean, we didn't all, but we're, most of us are like, hey, I don't know what AP's going to do next year. Well, now he may go to KTM or he may stay at Yamaha. Of course, Yamaha could match the offer or, or – you know, Bobby Reagan, I think if this is any guy, many guys other than Aaron, you go to Red Bull KTM. You see the success that Cooper Webb had. You see the program, DeCoster, Ian Harrison. But, dude, Bobby Reagan and Aaron go way back, and he loves that team, and things are working out. I, I think he stays. Uh, here's what I think should happen. Okay. I think if Yamaha comes out with a new bike in 22 – which is which they're on par, right? Okay. Aaron should at least be granted to ride a version of that before he can make his decision. Or at least that's what I would do if I was him. If it's available and there's one there for yep. him to ride. Right. If that bike is better, because you'll know, if that bike is better than your 21, that will help your decision. Money aside, right? Yeah. yeah money's if gonna you be feel equal, like right? it's a sideways move, I think it's time to move on think it's time because you know that program is proven you get to ride with coop which he's friends with anyway yep, yep. uh roger you got ian you get all these smart dudes over there that can help you and we've seen what it does right i think that race bike is a better race bike um i just think he would uh i don't know man i think he would do better on that side of things he's been with yamaha a long time i think it's time for a, a, a different taste uh jt Money's not a factor, right? Yeah, We're yeah, because you figure like it's going to be close, be right? Yeah. Okay. Or close, yeah. It would. Well, first off, I would want to test the bike, which we know happens, right? right? It's a week. Yeah, yeah, they technically can't, but right. we know it's going to happen. Um, and then as long as the bike felt comfortable, I make the move. Find me a guy that hasn't that has gone to that team that hasn't found success. Brock Tickle. Trey. <laughs> <laughs> Extenuating circumstances on both. Trey Trey was at Trey was done. For a lack of a better term, Trey was done with in my opinion, his professional career had come to an end by the time he reached that team. Really? I believe so, okay. yes. I don't think he was the same guy when he arrived there. Tickle it didn't even race. Like he was hurt, 
then the, the yeah, but it didn't, water. It wasn't, it wasn't on an upward swing before the suspension for Tick. He'd been up and down. He wasn't, you know. I, I believe that that program Dean, is – Dean didn't crush is, it. Is right near the top of all programs out there. So if I had a chance to go there – I would go there. I, I would. I think you would be hard pressed to find anybody that, if that offer was on the table, they wouldn't take it. There, would, there wouldn't be many guys. Maybe Tomac, maybe Roxon, whatever. Yeah. But not many, not many other guys would pass up that offer. And I think that bike Are you has. Are kidding me? I think that bike has proven to be less bipolar than any other bike in the paddock. Between hard pack, what? soft, outdoor, supercross. Oh, look how good Barsha's been on it. I mean, okay, he right. was great last year too. Not that's nothing against Blue Crew, but he's been very vocal about how happy he's right. been. Right, the bike is consistent. Just it's predictable. When they just like you're saying, when they go to West Coast, East Coast, indoor, outdoor, the bike does the same things, right. and he really likes that. So just put it stock. Look at Chiz. Yeah. I mean, that's what Barsha ended hey, up buddy. doing last year. You know? yeah, yeah. And then that didn't work out. Uh, no, it, that'll be interesting, but. Full props to AP for now having two yeah. chance, two factory teams kind of going for him. And, like, the, and he did this himself by turning it around. The only you know? caveat that I would say is that I think the Yamaha is better for bigger guys and the KTM is better for smaller guys. So maybe that works inversely for AP. In, in, in an ergo standpoint? Yeah. <sighs> Honestly, I think Damn. that's so ass backwards now because if you get on a Yamaha, the cockpit is so fucked up. It's so n short. Like, it's built for a small dude. The pegs are high. The bars are close. You ask any guy that rides a Yamaha, that is the worst cockpit there no, is. No, that's the best cockpit. <laughs> a tall guy, like, I have to drop my pegs, move them back. Ask, Why ask, don't you join the front hole club? I don't, I don't believe in the front hole. I guess you need to I, join every, the front hole club. Every time club. I've ever UPS. ridden a Yamaha, and it's been a minute. They just feel big to me. And, and that, nah, it's, it's you big the, you as you got to ride the new one. I mean, and, and even the new one still feels big. I, I shut understand, your mouth. I understand that because when you ride a KTM, you ride a Honda, you have that narrow Quiet feeling, down. right? Mm -hmm. The Yamaha Quiet feels down. wide. Quiet down. It, it feels wide. Quiet yeah. down. <laughs> Jesus. That's Marks, dude. He's angry. Get the asshole drop, Marks. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I think it's just no built shit, for shorter asshole. guys. I, I'm fucking done. I don't want to talk about it anymore. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Speaking of Yamaha. The Yamaha LCQ Challenge. Tickets are 20 bucks. We've got 20 prizes. Nick Schmidt's in the lead for this thing. <laughs> what? what? Ah, nothing. I'd talk about it later. Uh, what, what's the points out here? Let me feel it. Uh, so, anyway. Schmidt's so, leading. Where, who's second? Cade? Or Cade's too good now? Jeremy Smith. Jeremy Smith? Yeah, Jeremy Smith second. 307? Yeah, 309. 309. Yeah. Uh, Ronnie Stewart's right behind that. Hey, the cat is right there. The cat, Ronnie Stewart, Jeremy Smith, and Nick Schmidt are going to the wire with this thing. Cade is riding too well. Got parked by A-Ray, though, in Dallas. Where's A-Ray on that? Is he out? Uh, yeah, he's out. He didn't make it. Too many uh, Joan Cross is in the mix. Starling was in the mix, but he's crushing it right now. So what, what's going on with Starling the LCQ? Like, that dude. Gone. So good. Gone. I was like, where is that dude at? It would have been great to him to ride like that the two times I picked him dude, in Pulp Mexico. that Fantasy. was impressive. It was. Colin Gardner's hurt. He's out. Bubba Pauly hasn't made the night show. What? What? Come yeah. On. Bubba Pauly hasn't made the night show the last two. Wow. Holy shit. Freddie's hurt. Is he? Yeah. Okay. I, had, I noticed so, he hadn't so been out there, but I know. My about. Yamaha LCQ challenge is. How much is it up to? Do we know? It's, it's not much right now, but it's the same as last year. Like, the, the, the money comes pouring in late. So, we, like, are you, do you give the amount out now, or no, you don't do that? I think it's about 21000 That's a lot. No, no, no. We, last year what, it was what, thirty, what, right? What, no, no, no. We, what did we get? 30 to the first to the place winner. person. Okay. We so had 50, I think. Okay. I think Holy had, shit. I think we had 50K. Um, wow. Who won last year? Mm, yeah. Here comes, here comes Marks with the yeah. big numbers. <laughs> Who won last year, Cade? Uh, all right. Just I'll worry about your headlines. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, pew, Cade, pew. Cade won, right? Worry about his headlines. <laughs> I feel tired. <laughs> uh, Cade won last year. 30, okay. 31,000 Oh, that's why he's at club. Because he's helped him pay for Club MX, which has helped him turn into the rider he is today, thanks to Pulp MX. So, anyways, tickets are twenty bucks. They're in my link on Instagram or on pulpamex.com. We appreciate it. Uh, twenty prizes, twenty bucks, hundred percent of the rider, hundred percent of the money goes to the riders. So I bought two. That's a really cool you really? thing you yeah. do. Yeah, thank you very much. Actually, it's really cool of Yamaha to do that. Yeah. But we've we, we've raised over a hundred k. That's bitching. Yeah, for riders. That's all awesome. gone to riders. You're a dickhead, though. Why am I a dickhead? <laughs> I'm just saying. Fuck my ass. People still think you're a dickhead. They do. I know. Uh, I cost you. I cost you a deal, didn't I? 
Yes, you did. I cost you a deal with a sponsor. Yep. They were going to sponsor you, and then they said, nope, because you're hanging out with Mathis. <laughs> yes, that's exactly. <laughs> that's, awesome. that's pretty much how it went. I love it. It's great. <laughs> fuck that. We would love to help you, Kiefer, but since you're associated with Mathis, really? fuck off. Wow. They can fuck off. No, no they can fuck off. Both sides can. Yeah, yeah. Clearly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you are. No, you are the fucker. Yeah, right. <laughs> like that Jade Spider Man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Spider Man, we're going to give each other fucking fingers. <laughs> they can fuck off. Um, all right. Uh, uh, X Brown goggle tear off time. Let's do this. Uh. It's the X Brand tear off <laughs> segment. 15 second rapid fire QA. Rapid fire. X Brand Goggles, the choice of champions everywhere. These questions are submitted by a Corey Moser. Never heard of him. No. Good no. on a grill, though, I've heard. Yeah, a real grill man. Who, yep. Tits? Nope. Oh. He's, he's a, as well. Tomahawk. Tits is really good at mountain bikes. Tomahawk. Stuff. And Tomahawk Tits. Yeah. Tomahawk Tits. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Uh, sorry. Did you send me that link with the two dogs? Did you send me that on the group message with the, the hey, what's your name? And they're oh, yeah. <laughs> the, <laughs> the oh seal. The, no, it's the seal yeah, and the dog. The dog. <laughs> yeah. Tony. <laughs> Tony. Oh, my God. Dang it. That's what made me think of that right. shit. He's uh, like, just stay, keep my mom out of this. Uh, <laughs> and then he's like, what? No, I, I made a fire name? over there. <laughs> <laughs> it's classic. I don't know who sent it to me. I don't oh even know where God. I saw I'm it. I'm dying you laughing. See, you see it? You know what I'm talking about? I, have, I feel out of the loop. Here. Oh, oh, my God, dude. It, it's fantastic. <laughs> it's a seal and a dog with voices over top. The seal's yeah. swimming towards him. He's like, what's your name? What? <laughs> what's your name? Tony. <laughs> I feel like I have, but it's been a long time. Yeah. That was okay. Good. All right. Next brown goggles. Uh, again, submitted by Corey <laughs> Moser. 30 seconds on the clock. Reaping fire. Let's do this. Steve. Yep. Who has struggled the most when you've taken them on a taser ride? Oh, Betts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Betts for sure. <laughs> Betts was complaining about his taint. He uh, he was in s- sneakers and like gym shorts. Uh, uh, he had normal sun. Like he yeah he was he was soul. He was soul. <laughs> uh, he had a great time, but he definitely like yeah he's yep. a not a gr- mountain bike guy. Yep. So you know, but yeah, bets. Fuck my ass. <laughs> exactly. Kiefer, if you used Lit Pro or someone unbiased was running the stopwatch, do you think Aiden is still faster than you? Uh, let's we'll, 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 let's we'll, save let's, that. We'll save this for later. That will re- that's going to take more than 30 seconds. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> JT, would you recommend Steve try keto? <laughs> Obby. Yeah, yeah, I think he yeah, would. recommend everybody try keto. I think keto. he would whine and complain and Everybody around him would be miserable, but <laughs> he would see crazy results, and then really he would care. he would not complain anymore. I keep your gypsy diets away from me. It's fine. Gypsy. Speaking of speaking of gypsy, is, yeah. Rhino, is Rhino keto? What is Rhino keto? You think? Don't don't do that. <laughs> oh boy. Do that. No no no. I, Rhino's a topic tonight. He's coming up later. Okay. Yep. Yep. Steve, why did Webb struggle so much on the Yamaha? <laughs> That's a very broad <laughs> question. <laughs> I mean, okay, okay. First of all. I mean, we're going back to Webb and not even Barsha. We're going back, back. Webb did get a couple of podiums on the Yamaha. He was also hurt a lot. I don't know if the team was necessarily in a great place back then as far as setup and things like that. So a little bit of everything. According yeah. to everyone at Yamaha, he loved the stock bike. Like, he raved about it. Did he, yeah. And it compre- progressively got worse. Right. Kiefer, what has been your favorite track that you've ridden this year? Well, Mesquite. Wow. Mesquite, the, the yeah. dirt You're welcome. Is, is insane. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, the guys at RMX series over what there. About, what about me? Thank you, Steve. I travel from Asperia to – I've rented the track twice. What about Harry and Lloyd? Harry and Lloyd's cool. They're basset hounds. They guard, People that they own the, the track oh, is wow. cool. The dirt is the most East Coast dirt that we can find out here. Very ruddy, very grabby. It's awesome for testing. Mesquite. That's where I had my brain bleed. Where did you? What double did you eat? It's shoot? gone now. Oh, yeah. okay. It was uh, uh, after that step up. Yeah. Coming out of the pit. Yeah. The left there was a double right there. Oh, okay. Before. Now it's a table. Yeah. The table now. Yeah. Yeah, it's a double. Oh. Yeah. So was it that same height, like far apart? Mm, I don't remember. Okay. Is that why you don't go with me? I don't feel confident. There. I don't like my the. I don't like the jumps. I'm not good enough to jump at it. So then I get you don't frustrated. Have to jump them. Ah, I get mad then. I get <laughs> mad. Yeah, it's stupid. I want to have fun. I want to. I yeah. want to be able to like. I. I don't need to jump every jump on a on a track. You know what I mean. I don't. I feel like you jump most of them. No. Okay. 
Kiefer. Uh, nope. JT. <laughs> Sorry. Bring it. Psych. Uh, who will retire first, Tomac or Roxon? Ooh, that's actually a good question. So I thought Tomac was going to retire at the end of this year, and that doesn't seem to be happening. I'll still go Tomac, though. He's younger. Or, I'm sorry, Roxon's younger, so I'll go I'll go Tomac. 10.5. Really good. Really, You're really good on it. You're on it tonight. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Okay. Hmm. Steve, if Filthy Phil was racing 450 Supercross, where would he be finishing, and how about if he was racing the 250 East Coast? Ooh. To the East Coast, he'd be – well, he, he claims he Top would be five. on the box. Yeah. Um, I feel like he would be around Chiss. 450? Supercross? Yeah. 15? 14? Yeah, 15? Sure. 16? Yeah. He's probably going to kill me now. He's probably How gonna... come we can't get a, an edit or a video of him riding his bike? Like, Suck it, Steve. I text him. I go, can we get a video of you riding? What, what, what's going on? He's all, in a, in a while, cunt. That's what he said. Okay. I'm yeah. like, okay. Good to know. Thanks. <laughs> I've seen God way too many times that day. All right. Kiefer, what do you like more about fly gear compared to whatever you're wearing now? <laughs> Screw you. <laughs> I think it's a great question. I'm good. <laughs> Pass. <laughs> wow. Uh, waffle, 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 waffle. I've this never This would waffle. never fly if it was me. I would just getting. I would be getting. Because I never waffle. You waffle right. all the time. What? Yes. All right. I'll, I'll, I'll say. The helmet. There it is. We'll fly helmet. It. We'll take it. I don't want to blow fly. Yeah. But, like, that is a really good helmet. 60 helmet's nice, though. 60? I'm it not is. talking about it. It's an FXR comparative. Oh, okay. Fly to FXR helmet, I will say the fly helmet is better. Do they make their own? Yes. They do? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I didn't they, know that. Exactly. <laughs> That's exactly what Fair I'm saying. Enough. Okay. Family first. All right. Last one. JT, what is a product product WPS doesn't sell that you would like to offer? Oh God! I, I think oh, I got an it. idea. I think oh, I got one. Too. I got one too. I, I, you know what? If we sold OEM motorcycles, so I could get a deal on one, <laughs> that would be cool. I mean, Ke- Keeper's hooking me up, but I'm saying it, there's been several years okay. where I haven't had a motorcycle. <laughs> that that would be that would be nice. But I, we sell freaking everything. What would be the base, the lowest you would go, or sorry, the highest you would go to pay for a motorcycle? One dollar. Oh my God! These fucking guys. Millsap, same way. Millsap is in here complaining about how he can't get a bike. It's like, dude, you're a multimillionaire. You can probably get a deal on a bike, and then you can sell it. Right. I just told him today. He's like, oh, I spent ten grand on a bike. Yeah. I'm like, okay, I understand that, but what is the price? It's not. $1. Do I get to keep it? Yeah, it's your bike. And you buy well, it. Yeah. Let's say, here you go. Here's a brand new Honda 450. How much would yeah, you buy? Yeah, then I get to ride it and then five flip grand. It and make money. Five grand. Yeah, sure. Because I buy make money on the back end of it. It's not the. That's not the answer I want. But it's it is a factor. But why are you tr- already thinking about selling it before you buy it? Because I don't want to spend a ton of money to go riding. Like, I, I just don't. So if Check you get, out my boat, if you dude. Can, even, and Okay, here's, your, here's the real answer. Okay. Whatever the number is that I could sell it for, I would pay that. You can make so money on a bike. So that's eight grand. Okay. I, I'm just telling you, if I, if, if I can ride it and get okay, out of it. Okay, but what if you ride it, money, no problem. get a shit ton of happiness and good days with your buddies, and then you lose two grand for those good days with your buddies, that's, that's nah, not no. a good deal? Nah. Okay. Yeah. Surprisingly. Neither of you buy bikes, by the way. Neither uh, of you buy bikes. That's false. So both of you are shaking your head. False. I no, buy yeah, bikes buy every year. For Aiden. No, I buy my you own. You buy your bikes. Yes. You buy all your bikes. I bought a Yamaha this year. You buy all your bikes. Not all of them, okay. no. He bought okay. a bike. Yeah, okay. I bought a bike. And he bought a Rockstar Husky last year. Yes. So but I I'm buy s- bikes. But okay, you, sometimes. Yeah, I, I yes. get it. Okay, fair enough. This guy doesn't buy bikes. No, he doesn't. Buku! <laughs> <laughs> no, listen, I bought bikes at a deal, and I would sell them and make a little bit of money, and, and I was that, I would, I would do that. Right. L- no would problem. you ride a different Blue Crew bike if they gave you one? No, why would I ever want to do that? Like a YZ252 stroke? No. Okay. Fuck no, I'm way too big for that. What? That's really? Not fun. No, that's you're not. not. Fun. Yes, I, that's not what do you fun mean? at all. Those are a lot of you're work. You're not too big for it. Yes, I am. No, too, you are too not. Heavy. Not too, too big heavy for it. it. You're not. Um, I'm 450 guy. That's what I ride. That's okay. what I do. 250F? You don't think you'd have no, fun? No, no, fuck that. I ride. Really? I ride a 450. That's what I do. <laughs> Man, I feel like you'd have a shit ton of fun on a 250F. Nope. He see, this is like an ego thing. Like, my dick I don't is bigger it. than yours. I'm gonna ride a four five oh. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's exactly <laughs> it. Uh, hey, I want to thank the folks at ORW for coming on board. Uh, again, they got locations in Corona, Temecula, Vegas, and San Diego. Send us an email if you want to deck out your truck and make it look sweet. Uh, we'll pass it on to the folks at ORW and they will give you a deal. So thanks to those guys. Thank you to motorsport.com, fly racing. 
Decal Works, Vortex Racing, Race Tech Suspension and Engines, Vertex Pistons, X Brand Goggles, Michelin Star Cross 5, Maxima USA, Skosh, ORW, Firepower Batteries and Chains, Pro Filter, FMF, Atlas Neck Brace. Atlas has something new coming out. Check it out real soon. Thanks to those guys. Works Connection, Pulp MX 20 is the code to save with worksconnection.com. Get Data, OGO Power Sports. If you want a bag, uh, a backpack, or a 9800, or like a carry on bag, if you want anything from the folks at OGO, uh, I simply love my backpack that I have. Um, please send us an email using the contact form on pulpmex.com. We will dial you in. The folks at Guts Racing, great company, great seats. I have foam and cover on my Blue Crew out in the garage right now. Same for me. Thank you for Guts Racing. WUSA, great wheel set. They sponsor a lot of teams and riders in the pits, of course, whether it's the Edge wheel set that you can get at a, a great deal or a Talon Hubs, one you want to build yourself. You can do it all, whatever colors you want. Follow them on Instagram. They have some sweet, really sweet uh, photos of builds for customers on there. MotorcycleNurseryJobs.com, the job of the week. Upload your resume for free. Job of the week based in Corona, California. It's a full-time job. It is a graphic designer for TLD. So uh, TLD is looking for a graphic designer responsible for supporting the marketing and the digital team, creating strong digital designs for amazing brand experience. Would this be for gear? Yeah. Or like? Well, it could be for a bicycle too. And for, for Okay. I was thinking it would be... No, graphic designer, they would be... Okay. Yeah. I'm would, thinking more of like a... They they could, a well, they could be doing ads, too. I'm thinking a website could be. guy. Yeah, could yeah be. ads guy. Yeah. Okay. The graphic could designer, be that. Though, yeah. The graphic designer in will theory, report... In theory, they're doing the same thing. Like they, yeah. It could be... It could the be graphic designer will report to the director of marketing in Corona, California. Full-time job, MotorcycleIndustryJobs.com. You want to get started there? A bunch of jobs at WPS on there a, a little while ago. So, uh, yeah, if you want to get started in the industry, it's a great way to do it. Uh, MotorcycleIndustryJobs.com. Thanks to those guys for coming on board. Ride Engineering Works Chassis Lab on board as well. Intense Cycles. JT rode a Taser today. He's never been happier. That thing's sweet, for real. Fuck yeah, it's sweet. Like they don't, they don't, they don't give me anything. So I have no right. reason to. That, that thing's they, bad, that thing's badass. I bought mine. It's cool. <laughs> Fuck you guys. <laughs> All right, I, I mean, I bought one too. Yeah, I'm, I'm just I'm saying, just saying I, I'm unbiased. Right. I have no reason to pump that thing up. It was really. I cool. bought a primer. And what? What's a primer? That's the acoustic. Acoustic. What's a primer? It's a, the model of bike. Oh, okay. Non e bike. Oh yeah. He bought I'm, a non e bike. I'm boost life. Give me all the boost <laughs> all the time. That's what you, you marks would be that way too. I can't. Yeah, I want can't one. Will you when you one. go on your first main voyage? Can I come? No. Why? I don't want anybody to be there because oh I might God. just I might just turn it around and bring it back to the no. truck. No, that's why I'm going. Tits Legendary is putting it together as we speak. You're gonna he, suffer. And Pit, Tits says this will be the most expensive paperweight. In history. And Tits is putting it together. That's probably why you don't have it, because he's taking his time, because he doesn't want you to write it. How sweet is a new Taser, though? It's awesome. Yeah. Are you glad that you got one yes. and sold the uh, MX? The Taser um, MX? I love, I love the MX, too. Yep. yep. Um, I'm not saying the MX Greg is a bad bike. And actually bought the MX. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I'm glad I went to an e-bike to add on to my collection. And you talk so much shit on e-bikes. No, and I'm glad you I came didn't. around. Yes, you did. I talk shit on you not getting another no, bike. No, you talk shit on e-bikes at first. I did not. Yes, you did. Oh. Fine. Check tape. Can we check tape? <laughs> I'm sure someone out there can. For, don't you feel like he talks <laughs> shit on e-bikes at the very beginning? None. I, no? I honestly don't remember. Yeah, oh, my right. God. Yep. I'll I'll get, the last, I, talent, remember, talent, hey, the last I'll, I remember was him talent, saying give you, you need 50, another bike. Talent, talent, I'll give you 50 bucks. I'll just, give you 100. Just, just, sh- just say, say the keeper did that. Uh, coming up to bucks. Robbie Wageman coming up. We're going to settle him and Kiefer's beef. There's no beef. From the track. <laughs> just say there's coming no up, beef. Coming up, the Heather Kiefer, Aiden Kiefer, Chris Kiefer stopwatch controversy. There's beef there. Coming up, coming up very <laughs> shortly on that. JT has some things to say. <laughs> I have questions. I don't have things to have questions. <laughs> JT has some things Statements. to say about this. Uh, Race Tech rant of the night, racetech.com. Please check those guys out. Uh, they've done a great job with my suspension, and they can do a great job with yours too. Get your bike some love. Change the fork seals. Change the oil. Change the spring rate for your weight and or speed. Racetech.com will dial you. Got anything with Racetech lately? Done anything with them? Yeah, we just did a Kawasaki KX450 suspension revalve. Okay. So we just did that, and we just did a KTM 350 Dual Sport bike with them. Nice. Because they do engine stuff, too. They do engine stuff. They do uh, suspension stuff. They got uh, great vintage stuff. I know their vintage stuff is, is killing it right now. So uh, thanks to those guys. I got my uh, Project 500 stuff serviced by SGB, a uh, Racetech outlet. There so, you go. Racetech.com, rant of the night. Call there. <clears throat> mention Pulp MX. Tell them you're a Pulp MX listener. They'll give you a deal. My, my rant is simple. JT's heard this a few times. Oh, boy. I just want pockets. Oh, in come on. 
my mountain bike gear. Why don't you wear shorts with pockets? I just want... You're the man with all the pockets and all the shorts. I just... This is your thing. I... This is your lane. Cargo like you, I've never seen anybody that can carry more things in his pockets. I know. And I know. But I can't you. wear cargo shorts on a mountain bike. Why not? Uh, on, a, on a mountain bike Why not? ride. Why not? Where's your spandex it? with pockets? My, sh- my shorts had pockets today. I agree with Steve. You need pockets on your you, jerseys. You, you need pockets. That's on your really far away from anything that I do. I, I, I am not a part of the bicycle team. But especially design. Even my A Star one I wore today, I wore an A Star shirt today. No pockets in that thing. It's not just. Fly. But that's not a jersey. That's like a, a T. But that. But I have another one like that that has a zipper. But I think I like, think the a cost of a zippered pocket, JT, is a uh, uh, th- two dollars. Understood. But I think put it in. I think the concept was to have the shorts in uh, the pockets in the shorts. That's why. Okay, but not everybody moved. does that. So put pockets in every cycling thing you have, and even. I have. I don't think that's going to happen. I, I have, know you can rant about it and yell, but I, I have think an it's Oakley bib. I have an Oakley bib that okay. I love to wear. It's very comfy. It's maybe the, my my favorite one I have. Patch. Yeah. Okay. No pockets in that bib either. Every bib should have a little tiny pocket for your credit card, for your keys, for something. I don't understand these cycling companies, and it's not just Fly, but but a lot of it's Fly, and I've been bugging Max and JT for years. They used to make pockets. They had older models with pockets because I had one one time about three, four, five years ago, whatever that was. I had a fly racing, short sleeve, cycling shirt. It had a pocket in it. So you make it. The, 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 the thing is there. Does fly make mountain bike shoes anymore? Shoes, no. Fuck. He's soul rider here. Scott, I'm still. <laughs> <laughs> so just, that's my rant. I don't understand you fucking companies. Just put pockets in them. What's the pro- it's, it's fucking $2. Put them in. It's easy. It's weird because everything that I own has pockets. That's what I've never seen one without. Every, I, I barely have anything with pockets. Huh. I have one bib that has a pocket in the back. I have a Alpine Stars that has a pocket. I'm going to get you the answer this week. You will. Why? We don't. Yes, I'm going to get the, I'm because I can't take it anymore. I cannot so handle somebody <laughs> Loud noises. Somebody found my keys in my uh, bed. That, can thing. I? That's my rant. Okay, hold on. That's fucking stupid. Yeah. What am I going to do with them? Put them in. I don't know. I got no pockets. Hold on. I didn't know I was going to go with it. <laughs> there's a wheel well. There's underneath. There's little areas in the ridgy you can put in there. There's so I could show you. Where'd you put them? In my whatever the fuck that's called that covers your tailgate. <laughs> tailgate cover for a mountain bike. The, the black thing that you put over tailgate. Okay. On the inside of that is a small pocket. Mesh oh, pocket. Okay. So I put it on the inside of that. So someone found those. Got into my truck, stole my credit cards and my debit card last week, and that sucks. Hey, everybody, but I'm my, a thief. Do you keep all your money under your mattress, here. I'm going to go check that. The, th- the good thing is is the dude left me all the ID and left me my wallet. Like, that was actually really nice of him. Yeah. Like, if you're going to take – and he left Super me th- cool of him. Oh, and I had $23 in there of cash. He t- left me three. <laughs> Took the twenty. <laughs> he didn't want that fucking three bucks, dude. <laughs> That's a waste. So if I'm gonna get robbed, at least I got robbed the best way possible. But he didn't. He didn't use your credit cards for anything. No. So no. what do you think he did with them? He probably uh, well, was going I, I, to. I, he was going to. Yeah. I'm sure. Oh, okay. I mean, you'd, I, you'd already canceled. I, yeah. I, okay. I mean, I got back to the truck and on the way. Yeah. Called yeah, yeah, yeah. Chase and. Not to, not to know everybody what your keys are, but are, you're doing a different way with your keys now, right? When you leave. Yeah, I gotta wear a pocket now every time. So now I can't wear a fly jersey. No fly jersey anymore. I can't wear a fly. The anything. jersey you wore today didn't have a pocket. Because I was with you two guys, I knew one of you would but have I'm a saying pocket. If, what if we weren't there? I wouldn't have worn that jersey. I wore that jersey because I'm like, ah, they'll have pockets. A lot of ins and outs. Yep. Skill. So very complicated. Does case. fly make a fanny pack oh, yeah. by chance? Uh, I ain't wearing no fanny pack. That'd be sweet. No. Some guys do. They make little tool t- pack. You know what they make uh, for bicycling is um. Like a Batman utility belt, little tiny pouches. It's not a back like a fanny pack is a big thing, right? Do you have? Do you put? Uh, hold on. Do you have a thing with a tube and CO two? Yeah, f- keys put won't fit in there. in there. Keys won't fit in there. It's really get a bigger small. one. Well, I I could do that. Yep, I could do that. No, it doesn't have to. There's magnets that you can put on your keychain. There's areas of the vehicle that you can put it onto. It's easy. If you're going to break in, you're going to look around for... You're, are you going to go underneath your original? Yeah. No. Yeah. you got pockets if, if, laying on the tailgate. Bam, bam, bam. Oh, shit. Keys. Boom. Bam. Gone. If I'm a thief, I'm like, well, this guy might have a magnetic key because he's no. out bicycling. Let me, just, think, let me just run my hand here. Oh, look. Here's my... Here's I'm going to tell you right razor now. razor blades under there. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now. Thieves aren't mountain bikers. I'll tell you that right now. Two documents. 
Um, okay, that's my race tech round of the night. That's 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 my race tech round of the night. What's yours? You not putting your fucking seatbelt on when we drive and the ding 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 all the way to the fucking mountain bike place. Hey, can you put your seatbelt on? Nope. It's it's Steve. Nope. Because I knew it would drive you crazy. No, you every time we go somewhere, I've not said anything and it does it. And you it's what that's your that's your that's your move. You he hey, he did do today what you said he was gonna do. It was like, you guys ready? Okay. Thank you. Told you. I was like, wow. What? <laughs> That's his move, I'm trying too. to shift and figure out how this thing works. That's what this guy does. That, yeah. Oh, I'm still, still a little tired today. I've been going hard. <laughs> and then did, get, to the, get to the to the trail. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking gone. gone. Yep. Well, I'm very familiar with those trails. Yeah. So I was trying to figure yeah. out which which shifts but and which front He doesn't break know where the break. fuck he's he, going. He road bikes every single day. I felt like he knew how bicycles Road bikes don't have boulders where he's riding. Like, this dude has boulders everywhere. Homeboy has the ding, 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 ding all the way on the fucking drive. <laughs> and he's talking like there's nothing going on. Right. I don't even hear it. It's like just. Oh, uh, my God. That I am for sure uh, uh, just tuned it up. Like, this you know, is ambient noise y- for yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, The first yeah, time I'm noise. looking around. Oh, I put, okay, I put my seatbelt on. Yeah. Second time it goes off, I'm looking around, and right. I see him. Yeah. yeah. He's got and shit blinking at him. Shit's eyes are popping up Trump's on the dash. He's yelling at you. Nothing. Loud noises! Dude. Just get some fucking pockets. For safety reasons, can you fucking put your seatbelt on? Okay, I will. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm can, sure can, Pookie would want your seatbelt on. Can you make on. some pockets in the fly racing stuff? I will fucking, I'm going to get you a magnet so for your keys. I I took Pookie, I gave her a bunch of fly racing jerseys, and said, take these to a seamstress and get a pocket put in. Like, how much is it? Like co- Betsy Ross? <laughs> What's Betsy Ross? <laughs> <laughs> she made the first American flag. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Hey, that's probably why you failed your... uh, Great great comeback. (laughs) You failed Um, your American system. So she took it around, and no one could do it. I don't even know. Like It seems like... Is she spinning on a wheel? Is she like at one of those medieval times places? Have you ever got some pants? you like a pocket in your house? Tailored? Have you ever got... Well, okay. Then you know fucking what I'm talking about. Pants tailored or pants brought in or... Yeah, that's what FXR does for me. They tailor my shit. What's up? Hmm. Silence. I don't want to blow fly, <laughs> yeah. but like that is a really good helmet. That those are your words. That is exactly Th- true. that is not twisting your words at don't all. Don't flip your, this conversation are... to a fly conversation. This right. is about you and your dinging. My, my race tech ran of the night. Get some pockets. Yours. Ding P- ding. Put my seatbelt on. Yes. All right, JT. Do you have one? Uh, no. My the only thing I had today was that I was like trying to figure out which, like the front brake and rear brake because they're backwards. Like I'm, and then you were just like I'm like. Holy hell, Steve's gone. Like you, you notice how I stayed in, with him. You were in Henderson. I was like, holy <laughs> hell. <laughs> Mark Mark says get a truck with a keypad. We can't all afford Raptors with keypads. So they have plenty of other trucks with keypads. Know, sorry, I don't have a Raptor they with ha- a keypad. They have plenty of other trucks with keypads. Need a keypad. You are pretty gnarly on your own shit, though. Like your own trails. Not really, dude. You've got good mountain bikers that come with you sometimes, and, like, yeah, Steve goes goes hard. Yeah, whatever. All right, that's Race Tech Round of the Night. Uh, Robbie Wageman coming up here shortly, two-stroke world champion. I love how Glenn Helen just everything's a world championship. Hey, did you see Jeff Alessi raced? No. Yeah. Wow. He was back with Tony. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, we got some voicemails coming up. We have an uh, uh, email here. All right, here's an email we got from uh, a gentleman named Steven. Uh, I know you do not have control over who NBC Sports has working for the Supercross Series, but they can do better than they have been doing. Lee Diffie is awful. He does not know the riders, does not pay attention during the races as he is too busy sucking up to the GOAT. Speaking of which, GOAT has to be the most overused word on every Supercross broadcast. I would say hit your marks is the most overused term in Supercross. Will Christian with her shaking, jerking hands, asking riders questions that are too long and usually meaningless. The riders do not even pay attention to her questions, and they just say what they are going to say. She is about as useless as the Monster Energy girl who did the social media bits. No, that's not true. Uh, why is it that NBC thinks a British accent gives somebody credibility? Todd Harris is great. Knows what is going on during the races and knows the ranters. Just a rant from someone who has participated in and followed the sport since the 60s from Steven. I will say this. like I, I checked the voicemails for the show. We're going to play some in a little bit. I haven't checked it for a couple of weeks. There's a lot of Rutledge versus DV on there. Yeah. <laughs> so I didn't didn't play I got all a of comment it. on that too, by the way. What's your comment on that? No, I when we talked about that. Okay. I... Um it seems like and I, maybe not, maybe it's just there are more people upset with this broadcast this year. Like between my DMs, my tweets, the voicemails, the phone calls, you and Kellen, um like 
the people are very angry about the broadcast. Here's my thing. Is anyone watching the dirt bikes on the TV? <laughs> because I maybe they do suck, maybe they don't. I don't really pay that much attention. I'm actually watching I'm with you on that. Yeah. I I'm don't. actually watching the racing. I'm not I hear the noise, I hear the background talking, but I'm not really paying attention to right, it. Right. Um I don't know. I think people would just like the bitch. I disagree with uh said emailer. Lee is incredibly prepared. I've been spotting some of these rounds, and so I'm, I'm behind the scenes. Like, Lee's talking. Ricky's talking. They're preparing. They're going through all these, you know, different steps of rehearsal and talking about building talking points with each other to make sure that they, like, hey, if this happens, go to this backstory or whatever. That guy's on it. So that's okay. Steven doesn't have to like him. I like Todd Harris, too, but – to say that Lee is terrible and dude, that guy is on it. Lee's been a broadcaster for twenty years. And he years. is I mean. so over prepared. Like he has notes everywhere. He know like he knows all of it. Right. I, people it's, just dude. Yeah. You don't I, have to put like that his style. guy in the booth and let's see how you do, bro. You don't like to have to like his style, but yeah. he is doing everything I, that you could ever ask him to I do. I just feel like Mark's like it's just all time complaints. Yeah, I contribute, so I don't know uh, right, how right. much I can say, but I would say some's warranted, some's probably a little exaggerated for sure. Right. But Talon, I mean, what about you? We just want it to be good, bro. I know. Yeah. I'm more with Kiefer. I just kind of watch the racing, and I'm usually hanging out with buddies. So we're talking about it. We're having our own discussion about the racing anyway. That's Tinder, pet peeve. Tinder chicks? Pet peeve. Tinder, yeah. 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 Pet peeve. What? I'm watching racing. People want to come over. I tell them, don't come to my house. I don't want you talking to me. Right. I don't want to get, 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 when I, I want to watch the race. Yeah. I don't understand how people have a party and watch the race you can't watch the, the race way. pookie got a little mad at me uh for dallas three because she was trying to talk to me and i was wow well, first of all i have a screen open with lap times yeah i'm tweeting for racer x in front of me and i have a hockey game over here i can't do that and There's then no. i have the supercross game so yeah. like i am i'm locked in right you know so yeah i don't yeah, get people want to talk there. about this and that and and i don't i just want to watch the racing commercial time let's bullshit back okay it's back on everyone shh. Right. We're going to watch the race. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, no, I agree. So um, it just seems like, man, like, uh, but like, okay. So I, I mean, I follow hockey pretty closely. Mm -hmm. I listen to podcasts. I don't feel like people are bitching about the hockey broadcasts. That's I'm not sure they are. True. I'm, I'm sure, sure they, they are. are. Have you seen the, the Bally's uh, scoreboard that people are complaining about? They're, they're putting you know, the scoreboard on the bottom so you can't see half the rink. People are yeah. very vocal about that. Uh, right a Rod gets a lot of shit. A Rod does Sunday night baseball for ESPN. Mm -hmm. People Dude. people hate A Rod. <laughs> Who was the Denver Bronco that was doing some sideline reporting? He was horrible. The the cornerback from UCB. Oh, Akeem Tlaib. Akeem Tlaib. No, he was great. No, no. he was good. He no, was no, horrible, no. dude. Nah, no, he was great. No. You didn't know what he was going to say. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I didn't want to know what he was going to well, say. He was a Bronco, honest. first of all, so he's terrible. Right. But, oh yeah, yeah. Um, you yeah. know that. Keep her mic off. Yeah, it's her mic's off. <laughs> okay. it's, it's coming in later, though. Um, all right, uh, Robbie Wageman coming up here shortly from the Nuclear Blast Yamaha team. Um, Kiefer, you got you did you did some uh, off road riding for Yamaha. Yeah, we did WR 450 test. You didn't show up to, so that was cool. Mm -hmm. um, I can't believe you didn't go to a Blue Crew test. Right, I try to invite him to all these Blue Crew things. Yeah, it's only for YZ. I'm a 450 guy. YZ. If it's how, a YZ uh, 450 guy, he'll show up. How much schmoozing are you gonna have to do in Atlanta with Yamaha? Yeah, I quite a some bit. things lined up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but the WR has been revamped for 2021. It has a lot of the YZ chassis engine changes that the YZ got in 2020. Best off-road bike ever, I heard. So it's really good. Yeah. I don't say ever okay. or the best. I heard ever. But it's easy to ride, fun, um, feels light, a lot less heavy feeling than last year. So, yeah, it was fun. It's fun to get out and do something different. TP went with you? No. Oh. I thought uh, Travis Ulrich and uh, Stevie did. Oh, okay. So that was cool. I thought you social media with TP working on one of these things. No? No, okay. TP is, uh, yeah, he's not coming to that. He's in-house or he's moto. Oh, that's it? Yeah. Okay. All right. So. so that's coming up on Racer X? Yeah, Racer X video should be out this week. Uh, pulp? Are we doing anything for Pulp these days? No, you didn't we, show up, so I didn't know what okay. you wanted me to All do. Right. Just checking. Yeah. I pulp. I do stuff pulp every week. Hmm. Been a little slow. Oh my god! <laughs> you did a Honda 450 thing last week. I at so. least give you one or two articles a week. Let's check the stats on that. Check it, please. Yep, I will do. Um, hey, so also before we come up with Robbie Wageman, like our buddy Rhino, we like Rhino. <laughs> We've had him on the show 
He said everybody should have two chickens, you know, things like that. But what is he talking about with the knee braces? Where is he going with this? Like, look, I don't agree with him on the neck braces thing. He's His whole thing about the neck braces is he, like, thinks about the first Liat that came on in 2000. That was a little restrictive for sure. That okay. was a pretty big deal. And I get his stuff about that. You look at the Atlas brace now or the new Liat, they're good. They don't prevent you from anything. They'll break away before they'll do anything. You know, they don't sit on your collarbones anymore. They don't sit on your spinal uh, column any Like, the new neck brace. I don't agree with them on the neck braces, but I can at least. Spinal. I can at <laughs> What? What did I say? That's a joke. Go ahead. Okay. I can at least understand his thinking on that, although I don't agree with it. I can get it somewhat, okay? I don't agree with it, but I can get it. He's not the fucking lunch on knee braces. His whole thing is Cooper Webb is able to put that bike wherever he needs to, and he doesn't wear knee braces. It's like, bro. And here's the thing. How many guys have worn knee braces <laughs> and just crushed everybody? Yeah. Stu, Ricky, Tomac, knee braces, <laughs> crushing everybody. I'm, I'm, I'm deep diving this whole thing. So I've been enjoying, deep, deep, I've been enjoying this content deep. from yeah, Rhino. Right. I enjoy Rhino's. That's probably the best follow I have. I like Rhino. I think he's a smart guy in a lot of areas. And his outside-the-box thinking, sometimes I agree with. Sometimes, like this, I, I maybe disagree, but I want to research this, right? So I got some of these TP199 EVS pads, and I got my CTI. Oh, is that what he's claiming, right? He's claiming the TP? I don't even know if he's claiming that. Oh, okay. But this is what he's wearing, right? So this is what I'm getting. Um, Ryan Dudek at Honda. You know, Honda helps Rhino out a little bit, so Ryan got a pair of pads. So I'm going to get those from him. I'm going to go back to back, and I want to feel this because I haven't did this, and I tried this a long time ago to go back to knee guards, yep. and it felt so weird to me. Right. Um, he said you can't grip a bike with braces. Bro, I've I feel had, like I can grip better. Dude, I've braces. had bikes with fucking digs in plastic from riders because they don't have the knee brace guard on. They can grip a bike fine with knee braces. There's right. no problems. Yeah, so this is what I want to research. I want to feel how I can grip, where my what it does to my feet. I sw maybe he's right. Maybe he's onto something. I want to open that box up and see what it's like for me. And I'm just going to hear, here's what I think for me. Maybe it's better for him. But I don't know if it's like, <laughs> if that's the reason why Cooper Webb's winning. I mean, I would assume Kenny's a knee brace guy. I would assume Tomac's a knee brace guy. It's... He just he says you know you can bend your knee like it's it's a matter of guy wearing a chesty or not a chesty like there's a lot of those guys too you want a chest he, protector he or did you're a, not? he did a deep dive on his he said I'm gonna take you in my gear bag and show you what I got in my gear bag I love it he whips out a jersey and goes jersey for protection <laughs> what's that doing Rhino <laughs> let me roost some rocks at you here stand behind me <laughs> how's that how's that jersey everything good <laughs> like. How do you how do you call a jersey a protective device? This is why it's great. He, You're missing I, it. I like Rhino. I do too. Stop it, Rhino. Stop no. saying Cooper Webb is winning. Do not because he doesn't it. have knee braces. Stop Keep it that. going, Rhino. He zoomed in on Coop's knee on social. I stay far away from all this. Do you follow him on social? No. Oh, no. You're scared. I stay very far away. You're scared. Have you ever watched? <laughs> like you've gone back in time, right? And you're like. You go back and ask, what, well, you saw this kind of unfolding, and why didn't you ever do anything or say anything to right. the, these people? You're like, well, we just we didn't really know. That's what I feel like is happening right now. Yeah. Like we're watching something that's going to – it's going to crest in some sort of event, and they're <laughs> going to come around to all of you and say, you saw the knee brace thing. Right. You saw this. Why didn't you step in? You saw the two chickens. Right. You saw the Hawaii episode. You saw the Wyoming van <laughs> breakdown. The Hawaii episode. <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't you step in? They're going to be like, well, I don't know. It's it a great. entertaining. Right. Right. That's this what is, I feel like we're watching right now. This, But I like this part of our sport because no one does this. Right? Right or wrong. And he, and he even said this. Fuck it. You don't believe in me? That's fine. I'm just expressing my feelings. That's great. This is America. I love it. I'm following you, Rhino, because of this. I'm not following Rhino to watch him ride. Do you not, though, and this goes back political ways, too. I don't want to go into it. But do you not feel like you, as Ryan Hughes, as a coach, okay, he's just an ex-motocross racer. 
He has no degrees that I know of. He's not a scientist that I know of. Okay? <laughs> now, he's done more on a dirt bike than I ever have. Yes. Don't you feel like, and this is the kind of stuff I said with Trump, when you have a oh, platform no, 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 <laughs> when you have a platform like Rhino or the ex president or any of these people, don't you have a responsibility to like hey look, a lot of people look up to me, a lot of people will follow what I say. Do you not have a responsibility to be a little bit like I can't exactly say what, you know, like I'm gonna offer this up like, hey, I think you don't need a knee brace. Instead he just goes all the way. Like, bro, you don't know. You don't know what you're talking about as far as knee braces. Like, you could say, hey, listen, man, I I, I've, I went back to back with knee brace and, a, and this TP199 pad, and I did a back flip. No. Um, and here's what I felt. Here's what I think. Here, instead, like, whether it's the neck braces, uh -huh. which he's been after for years, mm -hmm. or now it's the knee brace, guys. Like, he fucking trashes these play people, which the people who make knee braces and they make the, make the neck braces have studies They've done. They've done. They've done a, a hard look at things. They've put things through crash tests. Listen, they've you done, guys all okay, watch so this unfold. Why I know, didn't you I know. do anything? So I am. I'm going to deep dive this thing right <laughs> now. No, no. You guys are all witnesses and willing participants in what's unfolding in front of our eyes. I, there's going to be some sort of crescendo here, where it's going to be like, oh dear God, why okay. didn't we step in? Sooner? I think it's incredibly irresponsible. Of I, Rhino. I agree. No, uh -oh. Oh, oh, of Rhino. Of Rhino. I thought oh, it meant, uh, I'm saying of you guys. I think it's incredibly irresponsible of Rhino to zoom in with his platform and who he is and what he's done to sport to zoom in on Cooper Webb and tell his followers don't wear knee braces. Oh, I'm out. I'm that's, out. I, that's, I don't, I'm not calling anyone. Why? But why? Irresponsible. I'm out. Oh, go ahead. He can have that opinion. Yes. But to trash them is poor, in my opinion. Okay. You can have the opinion that I don't think knee braces work. No problem, because I have opinions about the Toronto Maple Leafs goaltending thing. You know, I mean, we all have opinions. Yeah. That's allowed. Right. But I, to, to, to zoom in and tell somebody that this part of protection that's been proven to work, you know, for a long time in our okay. sport. Wyndham didn't wear them either. No, yeah, Larry Ward didn't either. Um, you know, you don't have to have But I just think it's irresponsible for Rhino to do that. And I just I, – I, I'm fine with him having an opinion – but don't start telling your followers that the reason Cooper Webb is winning is because he can move his knee around, which is basically what he did. So what do you do? And I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm the other yeah. side. I'm going to play devil's advocate. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Please do. Uh, you're Rhino. You believe in something so much. And this is how passionate you are about our sport. Right or wrong. Which, okay. uh, listen, I've been on. I've been that with the tough blocks or what. Like, I right. get it. Yeah. Uh, this is what he feels is the best. So he wants to get that across. Now... You're not accepting that, but maybe there is someone out there that will listen and adjust, and maybe it will be better for him. I think it's irresponsible to say the neck brace companies have not, you know, done some research. Now, if you don't want to wear one, no problem. You don't wear one. I get it. Like, right. That's your choice. But for Rhino to trash them as you know, for as actually hurting you. Chad like, says the same thing. He, Rhino. Well, Chad doesn't. Put Chad on said that media. on the show before. Like. They're a piece of shit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, but yeah, I'm saying Chad doesn't opinion. go on his crusade, right? Yeah. Like, that's his opinion. I think for Rhino to put that on his social and tell everybody over and over and over when he doesn't really know, mm -hmm. he doesn't really know, that's just his opinion, is irresponsible. And it's irresponsible to tell people you don't need knee braces because of Cooper Webb. The thing about it is, though. You, you can have that opinion. Right. Just But you can, turn on, you can turn on the TV right now and find something, somebody saying that's wildly irresponsible. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you have yeah, to, yeah. you have to, as a human, Thank you. you have filter to be able through to it. filter through what's crap and what's not. I yes. agree. That's yes, I agree. That's everybody's burden. But here, out of the things that he says, there's things that I don't agree with. Two chickens. With. <laughs> okay, two chickens, uh, riding on the balls of your feet, unlocking, and we, we talk shit on locking the hips, but that is all good information. That is true. I'm not saying everything he said. Right. I'm saying in the cases of a neck brace and a knee brace, he's fucking out to lunch. As far as how, how much he believes, he has no data. He has nothing to back him up on. And if, you, if he has an opinion, again, great. But he's telling his followers. So let's say if he, re, if he, if he reworded it, would, would you be okay with that? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. If you want to say, hey, man, I wore knee braces. Because you know he wore knee braces at some point, right? Uh, he would have I would to. assume so. Yeah, I would assume so. Hey, man, you know, right. well, I believe in this and this and that. But no, no. He's saying Cooper Webb is winning because he doesn't have knee braces. And here, here's another thing that got it wild. Remember when that guy passed away, Glenn Helen? He got on yes. social media. Yes. He did that whole thing. I never took it as uh, – I'm trying to think of how I should word this. I never took it as 
you everyone needs a fucking trainer because you know you're spending money on all these parts uh, on I, your bike. I didn't think that was a very good look. I, it wasn't. Right. But here's what I took out of that. Like he is right in a sense, and that was the wrong time to do it. Absolutely, hundred <laughs> percent. Right. But there is some clout to that. Like you need to pay attention to yourself and help yourself before you do certain things just on a motorcycle. Bad timing. I, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. But I'm just telling you, this is all part of freedom in America, right? Yeah, yeah, no, no, I get it. You listen to this guy or you don't. You follow in this he guy because it's entertaining. He held up a jersey and told me this was for protection. Right. <laughs> I know. But maybe he, he said it tongue in cheek, so maybe he's talking shit. And he all even right. said in that video, before we wrap this up, yep. he said, take it for what it's worth, man. Use your own fucking brain. <laughs> he said that. Listen to me or not. He even said that. Listen to me or not. I don't care. Did you listen to that part? Was that the gear bag one? Yeah. Uh, I don't remember that. No. Yeah, but, he yeah. said, look, man, I'm just telling you what I believe in. You can tell me to fuck off or not. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So I, I feel like he's it, pushing his passion, whatever that he's directing it into certain things that really yeah. gets yeah, his I just, heat, him up, heat him up, right? So I just take what I want as a responsible human being and e what I don't. Has either of you who raced both at a high level ever felt that knee brace hindered your riding? I don't know. That's what I'm going to find out. <laughs> JT, did you ever have an issue with a knee brace? Uh, you I like had an issue with a knee brace. Yeah, I tore my ACL a couple times. Tra uh, but I felt much, much safer as far as stability. Could you do everything on the bike you ever wanted to with a knee brace? I on? could never do everything I wanted to do on a motorcycle no matter what. But I don't think that a knee brace right. was holding me back. A lot of riders, not just riders, don't use knee braces. A lot. Uh, oh, More than you think. Yes. Yes. Uh, I don't know about that. Uh, uh, Nick's, Nick's it's always line. It's always dangerous to state something as fact Absolutely. when it's an opinion. And that's all I'm at. Yeah. That's all where I'm at. He can say that. But, dude, you guys know. You read the captions. I mean, he basically tells you, you know. You know how I fix this? I don't follow him. Right. At all. Um, Nothing. Why? Nick, what's up? You want to talk about Rhino? I don't want any part of this. I don't want to be <laughs> hey, an accomplice, a witness. I don't want anybody. I don't want f forensic files coming <laughs> knocking on my door. I don't want any algorithms any, hitting you up with nope. another Rhino. Nope, nothing. Algorithms. Yeah, my, my call kind of relates though because okay. uh, I tore my ACL in a um, just a stupid bicycle crash a year ago, Easter Sunday. So just a couple like a day ago, uh -huh. a year you know from a year ago, and out of a whim, just like contacted rhino you know he was like isolated in hawaii with his couple girlfriends and, <laughs> yeah you know, living that life Whew. and i was like i'm just gonna shoot him a message man i'm like you know because we were locked down here in indiana and couldn't get mris and i got like got the ortho appointment a couple of days later could you know barely walk they're like yeah you tore it we just know how bad it is and you're gonna need surgery all that got a hold of him and i was just like hey what, what would you do in this situation he's like hey I, you know he he responded like it was like seven videos or he, you know, <laughs> selfie videos. You know, he just got out of the shower. I think this is more evidence. He just like got out of the shower. And, and, I love know, it. Just the fact that he could, uh, you know, respond but back with. You like, need to get your phone and, wiped. <laughs> get your phone wiped. <laughs> um, no, but again, like you don't. Guys, JT raced his whole career with no ACL. It happens a lot. Like, yeah. The fact that I they still want, don't have one. Yeah, yeah, the fact they want it, like. Then you can. If run. he recommended yeah. you to not have surgery, that that's not a massive you know that's a lot of guys don't do that no but just so, with the rehab things and yeah, like yeah. you know he pumped one of his products with like his foot peg thing and but he otherwise offered like you know rehab ways to, right. to get it no strong look, that's all fine know, nick, get back to normal nick you get what i'm so saying great, so. you get what i'm saying yeah. nick i just think like no one's saying that he doesn't know a lot yeah but he uh, surely does no. he's been around this sport his entire life i think steve is just saying i've been moto for a little bit and i was a like late adapter to the knee braces and I preferred, uh, I did like a, like a, there was like old school, like Brian Lopes, like motocross knee pad that was kind of like what he pumps today. It's like two things, like the knee sleeve, then the out, like the, just your normal knee guard. And yeah. I like that. That's fine. But just, but you know, that's when, fine you are, that you when like you're dealing it. with impressionable people that are going to take your word at face value, no matter what, and they're going to believe it's the gospel, you have to be really careful with saying things are yeah, and especially only on one internet, way. You know, you only one way, following, right? Yeah. That's, what I, that's all I'm saying yeah. is uh, stop it's, that. It's a fair Because uh, I just, he, that's his opinion, but he doesn't know. He acts like he knows. Look, it's not my way. Yeah. It's not your way. Right. It's not JT's way. But 
I still, I'm in on Rhino. <laughs> okay, thank you. Yeah, thank is it purely you. for well, entertainment, though? Say, no. Because I enjoy Rhino, and I'm like, you know, I, I've got to see that guy race when he was just gnarly and, and seeing, like, where he's came today with, like, uh, all of, I, you know, I, his I like schooling him. and all, yeah, everything. I like him. I get how he's very into exactly, you know, what he's into. So, I get it. Well, thanks like for the call. Passion. Yeah, thank you, man. I <laughs> hey, appreciate thanks, it. Guys. Thank you. I'm, I like his passion too. I'm just scared to death, right, of what where this is going. Uh, like, I, I really feel like something has taken a turn for him, yeah, like in his personal life, yes. mental psyche, whatever. And I don't like where <laughs> that's going to go long term. I, I don't. I, yeah, I don't yeah, think. I, I, that I, we've had him on the show. The Rhino's like been a great guest. The Rhino on the show. that I used to know and race against, right, 20 years ago, right. I don't feel like that's the same person. He's as now. He's not raping, killing, of not. committing crimes. Of course not. He's expressing his strong opinion on social media. But do you not it's feel not that the end of the something world. is different? Like there's yes, of course. But I think also social media, maybe this guy was like this before I we don't fucking think so. knew him. I don't think he so. did want to fight Jimmy Button after practice at Washougal when I was on PJ1 right. team. He's been gnarly all and his and life. Jimmy, Jimmy this, was going, this is a different kind of gnarly. I don't think it is. You don't. You, no. don't, you think the guy that was fighting Wapaglia is the same guy that's Got the hair and the double chicks and chickens. In I think Hawaii. this is a mellower rhino. It is, but I'm saying something. There's been a, a a break. Like something has happened here. Just don't say Cooper Webb is winning because he doesn't wear knee braces. That's all I got. That's all. That's it's a clickbait. That's, that's all I got. Clickbait. That, just don't say that. Like maybe this. Maybe this is better. I don't, I don't know. Uh, Morgan, you got but a, something's you got, different. Morgan, welcome to the show. You got a question for Chris Kiefer? Yeah, thanks, man. Um, I was wondering, I just bought some Renning gear, and I was wondering maybe if Keepers had a chance to maybe even look at Have it. Have there been any Renning? Right I know you just got your... Uh, I asked uh, to get some, so I haven't received it yet, but yes, I'm planning on, on trying it. Okay, sweet. Have you heard anything? Like, is it kind of a tighter fit or anything like that, or is it still kind of like... I heard it's like kind of similar to like the 360 Fox. Yeah, stuff. actually, it's not like a form-fitting uh, jersey or pants, so it's, it is a little bit looser, which I kind of think is a good approach for him. Um, I think he'll get okay. a wider range of consumer with that model. So um, from what I can see, and I've seen some... Uh, some diagrams on a, on an email that I have, and from what I've seen on other people that I've kind of felt in at a track, um, yeah, it's not mm -hmm. yeah, really that form fitting. We'll get there. We'll raise some more time. <laughs> Rider D. Rider D. Rider D. Yeah. Uh, thanks for the call, man. Go. Appreciate it. Thank you. Look for that. Yeah, no look for that Thank test on pulpamex.com. Come out and do a desert race. Yeah, I'm in. Ta Talon will race. Do it. Yeah, I, I rode. A, I, I raced a desert will. race a couple of years ago. Uh, yeah. All right. Thanks for the call, buddy. Come and do it another one. I, I will. So. Thank you. Later. Appreciate it. Uh, Marks wants to let us know that Axel Hodges does not wear knee braces, and that's checkmate. <laughs> so. I mean, you can't get gnarlier than no, that. You no, yeah, you can't. No, you can't fuck with that. No, Marks, Marks is weighed in. Uh, Vortex Racing, Dylan Ferrandis, Aaron Plessinger, who we spoke of earlier. Uh, Malcolm Stewart using Vortex Racing. The Star Racing Team all uses Vortex Racing. Uh, Kyle at VortexRacing.com. You want a handlebar? You want a sprocket from the folks at, at uh, Vortex Racing? They'll dial you an email. Kyle at VortexRacing.com. Ask for a deal. Uh, the V3 bar is an uh, oversized bar, and it's 29% stronger than the competition. You can ride with the confidence knowing that Vortex has put years of R&D uh, into testing the super strong bars without sacrificing weight and speed. Vortex Racing bringing you our next guest on the show. He writes with the Nuclear Blast Yamaha team. Uh, him and Kiefer are bitter enemies. <laughs> it's Ro Robbie Wageman. What's up, Wageman? How are you, man? I'm doing good. What's happening, boys? Thanks uh, for having me on the show. Thanks for coming on. So what? Suck it, Robbie. Wow. So what happened? <laughs> Robbie, Nothing take us through happened. this. It's just what happens, Robbie. I tell Steve a story from what happened a while ago. He blows this yeah, up. Yeah, but what, what is the beef in all There's jerky. no beef. Right. I like the kid. Well, He's a good kid. Let, it, let Robbie speak, uh, go please. Go ahead. All right, yeah, go. All right, Robbie, tell us what happened. Glenn Helen, set the stage. <laughs> no, it's not Glenn Helen. Oh, it wasn't Glenn Helen. All right, set the stage. Oh. oh, between me and Chris? Yes. Oh, yeah. There, There's no beef. There was just, you know, a little, little moment that went on between us out at the practice track. I was on a 125. Uh-huh. Um, I believe he was on a 450 and, you know, he was revving behind me. I don't know if he was doing it to be funny or what he was doing, <laughs> oh, but, boy. you know, as a racer, you get, you get a little upset. So I, yeah. I just break check, I break checked him in the nice. oh. and we had a little talk afterwards, but it was all good. We, uh, so, here's we gave, we gave here, a kiss. Okay. Here. Hold on. Hold on. Let me speak oh, here. Boy. So Kiefer yeah. does this podcast about track etiquette. <laughs> Him and Travis Preston. This is how you should act. <laughs> this is what you should do. Let me tell you. Don't you know? Don't do this. Do that. Well, Robbie, we've got this incident of you just trying to 
put in some laps. Just an innocent guy on a 125 trying to put in some laps. You have this guy behind you revving your bike. There's uh, at Miles at the State Fair, he goes after a kid, uh, tries to get in his face <laughs> oh about God. six months ago. So it appears that Mr. Kiefer here maybe needs to listen to a little track etiquette podcast. I'm huh? hanging out with Rhino too much, getting fired up. Right? You're choking out a kid at State Fair. Now you're yelling at Robbie Wageman. Look, it wasn't it, that. It happened. I was on it a four. The Yamaha sounds like you're revving because it sounds like a mean son of a bitch when you're behind someone. I and, was a little scared. I'm not going to lie. And he was on a 125. The dude was on a, on a 250F. He would smoke me. I would never see him. But he's on a 125, so he's at a disadvantage, right? So just get around him, bro. You're on a 450. I, I was going to, and then he completely stopped in a rut and then flipped me off. Because you braked, because you revved your bike at him. I didn't rev out. I was just fucking riding. And it sounds like I'm pissed off, but I'm really not. Okay. So yeah. anyway. I was scared. I heard a Yamaha <laughs> behind me revving their bike. I got a little nervous. I might have messed up a little bit in the rut, so I just stopped. And then <laughs> and he hit me. <laughs> so uh, I went and we had a talk we and we hugged it out. It's all good. Like, it's okay. Fine. Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Good to hear. Yeah. Well, this, wanna... this is great. There's a way to start the interview. Awesome. I awesome. just want to get this I want to get this beef buried. Beef Can we jerky. just talk about how good he is on a two fifty two stroke? Uh so Robbie, what take us through this. What was the deal? So two fifty uh two stroke world championship. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um no, it was fun. Um I went there with no intentions to race actually. Um Lucky my gear was in the van, <laughs> but um, I went there to sell our jerky uh -huh. and actually drink a few White Claws with my brother's girlfriend, Fran, and then, unfortunately, Josh Grant crashed in practice. Um, I hope he's doing okay, but um, I went over to Jamie Ellis after and asked him if he needed a pilot for that beast, and he said it was all mine, so I suited up and did zero laps and lined up for the first medal. Awesome. And Come on. And really? Ran with it. Yeah. That's bitching. So no practice, no riding a two-stroke. No I'm just going to line nope. up. Straight off Supercross and then lined up and hole-shotted and just ran with it. It was so fun. There's nothing more that I – I just hate guys like him. Are you going to choke him out? I'm going to choke him out. Yeah. Because <laughs> you bust your ass, you got your two-stroke running, you're practicing at Glen Helen every Thursday. Yeah. Then you got this dude. Ah, I just feel like racing. Ah. Smokes you. I had white claw, sold I wasn't some jerky. Even gonna race. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I was, I was gonna sling the meat. So, <laughs> like the first lap, are you like, where does the track go? Like, did you, did you kind of look at it and be like, oh, I got this layout down? Because like, I imagine it was a little different than a Thursday. Yeah, I mean, I watched practice. Um, like I said, I was gonna, I was supporting right. RJ, so I watched practice and. Yeah, honestly, the first lap, like, I had no idea where I was going. I rolled the hip jump the first lap. Like, I'm not even going to lie. Because um, usually, you know, you turn right to yeah. go to the hip jump, and this time we were turning left, and I just went way outside, and I came at the hip jump, like, at the wrong direction. Um, oh, wow. So I pretty much just had to, like, literally turn right on the lip of it, and I, I had to roll it. I felt like a goon, but it it worked. Wow. It worked. Um. So. Well, yeah, that that's pretty impressive. What were your moto scores? Uh, moto scores were one two. Trevor Stewart beat me the second moto. Damn. He was ripping. So. Is is was yeah. JD okay? By the way, anybody know JD fine? Or? Broke six ribs and a collapsed lung. Really? Oh yeah. shit! Yeah. That sucks. Damn. What did he do? Did he land on somebody? I'm um, I'm not exactly sure. I believe that in practice someone may have cut him off and he ran into them. Ugh. Don't. Don't right. count me on that one, but that's what I've heard. Um, so, yeah, so for, so for you, Robbie, uh, like you get on a 252 stroke, it's radically di – like did did you were you able to figure it out real quickly? Obviously you were, but how different was that for you? You must have been like, oh, shit, I got to shift all this. Like, you know, like how <laughs> weird was it? I mean, honestly, like that, that bike was a rocket ship. Like Jamie Ellis at Twisted Development built one of the baddest 252 two strokes I've ever ridden. Um, but I think just with all the adrenaline, you know, and going straight into racing, like you kind of just didn't really think about it and you just, you just raced it. So, um, it did take me a couple laps to get used to it again and it <laughs> vibrated the heck out of my hands and I got a big blister on my left hand. But other than that, I adapted to it pretty quick. Yeah. So, so you surprised yourself with the moto win though. I'm sure. Right. Like you were like, ah, I hope I can do okay, but there's no way you I, thought yeah. you could win. Yeah, I told Jamie before the race, I was like, man, I haven't ridden a two-stroke since last year's two-stroke national. I hope, I hope I'll remember. And he's like, ah, oh, don't worry. It'll come back to you. And I was like, I don't know, man. We'll see. Wow. 
Kiefer, no design for you, no no desire for you to go race it. I hate two strokes. You do, don't you? Yeah, no, <laughs> come on, Chris. We need to get you out there. Maybe. I'm good, bro. You you guys are way too good. I'll just get smoked. He was he was revving come at on. you just because you were on one. Yeah, he was angry. You don't want to get on true. one. That's, That's true. That's true. And then he bent his front front brake rotor yeah. hitting me, so now he's really not going to want to ride one. A little shithead. Oh, <laughs> man. Uh, Robbie Wageman on the Pulp Mech Show, uh, brought to you by Vortex Racing. Email Kyle at VortexRacing.com. Tell them you listen to Pulp, and they'll give you a deal on some handlebars or sprockets that the uh, Monster Yamaha team uses. So, um, Did you win some money then, too, Robbie? You got, some, got paid up pretty good? I did, yeah. I'm stoked. You know, for having zero intentions to race to having a little payday, I cannot complain about that. Yeah, that's, it was awesome. What would you make, like three grand? Uh, it was 2700 to win that class. The 125 class was actually three grand. It was more to win the 125 class. What? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. That's pretty cool. That's awesome. Like, you didn't even ride practice. <laughs> Zero <laughs> practice. Did your, did your brother race? <laughs> he did. He, uh, the first moto, he got a pretty bad start, and then I think he got 10th, and then the second moto, he got 6th. So, the second moto... He got a bloody nose, so we'll give him the benefit of the doubt on that one. Mm-hmm. That he, we'll we'll just say he couldn't breathe. Okay. And he got he was in fifth until the last lap, and he got passed. So okay. Unfortunately, he would have got fifth, but um, he couldn't hang on. The two stroke has too much power for him. That happens. Yeah, that happens. <laughs> uh, by the way, uh, uh, our jerky is on uh, Pulp Mex Fantasy as a sponsor. We have a code if you want to try the best jerky out there. Uh, pulp 20 is the code to save eatourjerky.com so please check that out right i got that right eatourjerky.com you got it right, right. uh pulp 20 is the code to save with those guys so please check that out and uh, there's even a seven deuce deuce uh is there still a seven deuce deuce flavor there is okay absolutely fantastic so please check that out and uh and uh yeah thanks to those guys for for helping us out on the fantasy side of things so um how rough did it get how rough did that track get Actually, I was really surprised. Like, it got, like, usually the two-stroke national, it's, like, two-stroke bumps and four-stroke bumps are different. And yep. this year, I feel like I feel like this year was more of, like, four-stroke bumps for some reason. They were – it got pretty rough, and I was not expecting that. And for, you know, the suspension was set up for Grant. So it was a little stiff for me, but we made it work. That's awesome. Did you go to up, all the way up Mount St. Helens, up that way, or no? Under the bridge and straight up? Um, no, we okay. went up from Showy Hill oh, yeah, up yeah. to the yeah. top. Yeah, yeah, backside. I would have seen this two yeah. strokes just <laughs> revved up. Dude, <laughs> there was a full, like, 30 guys on the gate? I remember Ernie on a two-stroke. Yeah. CR125, one of the last guys on a two-stroke, climbing that Mount St. Helen and just getting yarded. Oh, I raced 125 there. National. Yeah, but against other 125s, right? Yeah. But, but I'm no, just this saying, was, like, you're just wide yeah. open oh, for, oh, like, for, like, saying? an hour. Yeah, Ernie was the still, like, the low 125 against 250s, oh, right, 05, yeah. 04. He was on the Honda. Yeah. Yeah. And dude, yeah, guy's just blowing my was. Up what year was that? I don't know. Oh three, was it? Yeah, yeah. Anyways, uh, Robbie wasn't even born yet. No, he wasn't. Because he rode two yeah, big, no. big bike supercross and then dropped down. Right. Uh, <laughs> speaking of RJ, he's yeah, on, he's on line one. RJ, what's up, man? RJ. Yeah. Hello. 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 What's up, bro? What's happening? How you guys doing? Well, we just heard about your bloody nose. So. <laughs> Did your? Uh, yeah, I just want. To- did your chick show Go up? Ahead. Is that what? Is that what your chick was there? Yeah, she got upset because of the first moto. I didn't do too well, so then you know, she had to show me what was up and got a little bloody nose. And Robbie's chick <laughs> wasn't there. Robbie's chick wasn't there. Maybe, okay, maybe that's why he did. Better. Do you see I what? I, do you see what I'm trying to tell you guys right now? <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 wait! But we we needed somebody to man the R jerky booth, so no, my luckily chick she was sold there. a lot of jerky right. on Saturday. What about home life? Yeah, not not at local races. Oh, home life doesn't apply to local <laughs> oh, races. No, there's, there's I just exception. came up with this theory, uh, and the, it's working. The goalpost <laughs> moving. I'm going to drive it home like Rhino. <laughs> Fucking home life doesn't work at local races. you got to throw that out. Your goalposts move a lot. They, <laughs> they move a lot. Uh, but how's it going, RJ? It's going pretty good. I just wanted to call in and uh, shoot the shit with you guys. I figured if I had a chance to get on while Robbie was on, I'd give it a shot. So, yeah, uh, I just wanted to say what's up. Everything's uh, good. How surprised were you that Robbie went out and won? I mean, come on. It was honestly a bummer <clears throat> for me because I came off the track the first photo <laughs> and I saw him like sitting there with like the top three and so I looked at him and I was like, please don't tell me you just won this thing and he looked at me and he just put up his finger like number one and I was like, dude, you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> like I couldn't even believe it. Obviously I was pumped for him yeah, but at yeah. the same time I was like, this kid 
didn't even ride the bike. And he gets out there and just shows everybody what's up. That's, so it was cool. That's I'm not I'm impressed. I'm impressed. For yeah. no practice. That's yeah. Yeah. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> a guy who hasn't ridden a two stroke. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he hasn't ridden a two stroke since the two stroke national last year. Right. Hasn't even ridden this bike. Right. And, you know, it's all bent up from JG crashing and they fix it just in time for the moto and he gets out there and whole shots, which is, which is not that's big for my brother to whole shot it. Not yeah. only the first one, but the second hey, one. Give too. me some credit. And for then, this uh, one. yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, no, give give him some credit, Robbie. By the way, thank you for pulling through in Paul Max Fantasy at the Orlando Opener. By the way, yes, I pulled through for myself too. Like I, I love playing myself. Yeah, fifty-two points. I was on board. I was, I was championing you the whole time on our podcast. It's great. So you I'm really still waiting it. for my cut. Uh, so well. Waiting. The way I'm scoring in Pulp Max Fantasy this year, you're not going to get a cut. <laughs> you were about the highlight of my year, c- claiming that you were uh, value a value at what was his handicap, JT, for the first one? Was it 14 or something? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, 14. Yeah, yeah I was. Uh, I was like, come on, man. Yeah. And then you crushed it. Would <laughs> you ever reward the 250 guys like you, the 450 guys, in the Yamaha Privateer Challenge? You know, I almost think we need to do something different, right? Uh, next year, just just to switch it up, right? Yeah. Um, because. You know, like if Nick Schmidt gets money this year, which he looks like, that'll be three years in a row for mm-hmm. him. Like maybe I should give it to Because there are guys. 250 guys that right. could use it too, right? What if I did something with the top Yamaha guys? Top Yamaha privateers. Well, that'd be it. half the field because everyone's on Yamaha well, too. whatever, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I probably need to do something different. Yeah. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Uh, Robbie Wageman on the show, RJ as well. Um, um, so, uh, Robbie, how – What's how? What's your thoughts on your Supercross season so far? Like, what do you? How do you? How do you like it? There was one main, main event you didn't make, but uh, other than that, what do you think? Yeah, I'm having a blast. I'm happy with the way it's going. Other than I wish, you know, I was a few positions ahead of where I've been finishing. But mm-hmm. other than that, I feel like I'm improving each and every weekend. Like I feel like my, you know, qualifying practices are getting a lot better. Uh, my starts are getting better. Not where I want them to be, but they're definitely improving. Mm-hmm. So I'm I'm happy with where we're at. My bike is awesome. My team's awesome. Um, I just need to put the last piece of the puzzle together, which is the start. I hate to do this to you, but we do this to every guy on that coast. What if you were on the east, bro? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, mean, I have no idea. They're all working just as hard as we are. So, I mean, yeah. I'm sure they're all going just as fast. Um, so I, I don't know. I can't yep. really tell you where I would be. I don't, I'm not sure, but I do know that I'm in mean, the West Coast. It's pretty stacked, so right. Um, it's gnarly. The main event is definitely pretty gnarly in the West Coast, but it's it's been fun. Robbie Wageman brought to you by Vortex Racing on the show. RJ Wageman brought to you by EatOurJerky.com. Mm. There we go. Pulp twenty. That's right. Pulp twenty is the code <laughs> to like save it. with that. Uh, RJ, thanks for your support on the pulp fantasy side as well. I, I thanked Robbie earlier, but thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. We're so stoked to be a part of that. It's awesome. Uh, RJ, are you racing again, or what? Like uh, Supercross? Are we? Uh, if, if we come back with regular times on like Anaheim's and stuff, or, will you be racing? Yeah, I'd like to. I actually have a little plan here coming up at the end of the at the end of the year. I, I can't really share it yet. Uh, oh. We're big vloggers oh. now. Okay, so all right. All you're right. gonna have to stay tuned to our YouTube channel, and you'll find out YouTube. here in a couple weeks. Wow. Mm. Okay. Well, if you need it's some headlines, if you need some headlines, Marks can jump. My, my titles are tight. <laughs> So are my Marks can, <laughs> Marks can drive up some some clickbait headlines. It's not a problem for him. So, okay. Um, yeah, you know, cool. RJ that's is a, one of the holdouts, like Suzuki Army guys, right? RJ was a test rider over there at Suzuki. Yeah, but you you rode a Honda last year. But RJ. he still rode Suzukis. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What do you What do you mean you still rode Suzukis? Like he, I think he, at one point they said, "Hey, man, we would like you to race Suzukis." Right? They didn't like you racing a Honda, right? Yeah, I mean, it was they obviously preferred if I road and race the Suzuki full time. Um yeah, but I chose to to race a different a different bike at the time and uh now I'm Blue Crew. So there you go. That's fantastic. Blue Crew's <laughs> great. I, I actually long story s- short, there you go. <laughs> I saw I believe for the first time, I could have seen it earlier. I saw a twenty twenty one RMZ. I've never seen one before. Wow. Oh, okay. I just saw one on social or something. <laughs> I saw the graphics. I'm like, oh like I didn't know what one looked like. <laughs> I, I didn't see them anywhere. Like Wi-Fi the tuning. What they got? Wi-Fi tuning. Wi-Fi tuning. Oh wow. Okay. And they they they're, they're, they're the words RMZ look like old school mm-hmm. RM blue yellow yep. whatever. Anyways, I'm like wow. Look at that R- RMZ. 
That's, that's the Suzuki talk we have tonight, folks. Thanks yeah, for uh, joining welcome, us. Welcome for coming <laughs> up. God, you know, hey. Uh, Great people at RM Army. Yeah. RT Jr. still running it. Yeah. He is, he is holding down the fort he for the is, RM yeah, Army. Yeah. yeah. Poor yeah. ACL. He's got his ACL. He went he did it again. God, dude. This I sucks. will give him props. He does run good stuff on a Suzuki, though. He has good parts. He's got good parts? Yeah. Yeah. They're probably left over from Rich. Right. Uh, from from Roxon, probably. Yeah. Yeah, from I hope they build a new bike. I want to go back to Japan. <laughs> Get taken to Japan, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Um, well, RJ, hey, thanks for coming on. Appreciate it, buddy. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to steal the thunder. I just yep. called in. I want to know what uh, Robbie's favorite flavor of beef jerky was, and uh, I'm out. <laughs> okay. All right. What is your favorite, Robbie? Uh, see you, boys. My hey, buddy. Favorite, my favorite's probably the Western or, or sweet and spicy. Okay. I'm, right. uh, I'm not a big, like, spicy guy, so the sweet and spicy hits just right. It's got a, just the right amount of spice to it. Do you wear knee pads or knee braces, <laughs> Great, great question. Robbie? <laughs> I'm a knee brace kind of guy. Okay, do you ever feel like a knee brace holds you back from doing anything at all on a motorcycle? <laughs> I No, okay. I can't say that it does. Thank you. Are you a chest protector guy or non-chest protector guy? I am a chest protector guy. Okay. All right. Um, moving on. Um, so, Robbie, uh, your season, yeah, you've been happy with, it, with the way it's been going, right? Um, yep. What about your teammate? Yeah, he's awesome. I mean, he's riding good. He's getting better as well, I feel like, each and every round. So yep. it's awesome to see, you know, him getting better. He, he had a pretty good breakout ride at Daytona. Um, he's very but, exciting to watch. Oh, I know you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, he uh, he wants to win, that's for sure, as everyone does. But, yeah. Um, no, yeah, it was cool to see him get into the main at the last um, Arlington round. So yeah. I think – I think he's he's enjoying it. So uh, I, I believe this is his first year of Supercross. I think he might have done I one. Think he did one a last couple year. last year, Hardy Munoz. Mm-hmm. He did yeah. a couple last year, I think. Right, JT? One or two? I don't know, man. He scares the shit out of me. I'm going to be real honest. <laughs> <with you. laughs> it's hard to watch sometimes. Robbie, you got to tell him, like, dude, you don't need to scrub everything out there. Yeah, I mean that's that's not for me to say, but um, <laughs> I'm gonna say it. <laughs> he does he does rip though. I'll he does, he's, dude. He's, he does. he's a great starter. Yeah, yeah, great starter. Yeah, he is. He, he is. is. Uh, he's very exciting to watch on the track. I need I need uh, some of his his start technique to rub yep. off onto me. Yeah, that's actually, if both of you combined would yeah, yeah. because his his uh, strengths are your weaknesses a little bit like raw speed starts and all that, right? But you're yeah. you're in shape. You're, you can do the whole thing. You don't make mistakes. That t- where he makes a few. Well, you look at Robbie's technique too. Robbie's technique yeah. while racing looks better. Yeah, yeah. Did you like jumping well, the 450 last year, Robbie? Did you like that? I did like that, and I think I'm going to do it again this year at the uh, Salt Lake City round, the first one. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, that yeah. was uh, that was pretty good. I like to see that for sure. Yeah, you look good yeah, on no, it. it was yeah, fun. yeah. Thank you. I appreciate that. It's fun to just, you know keep racing and that's why i was you know glad i got to race a two-stroke race just because as a racer you know you like to keep riding and and racing so your your body and mind just you know you're doing what you know no absolutely do you uh do you like the uh three races in a week how's that going for you you like that i actually really like that yeah it's cool to be in like one place for that long time and then it's cool to just get three races done you know it's and for Arlington, the way they redid the track every single round was mm-hmm. awesome. So it was a new track every time we were there. And it was cool just to do Saturday, Tuesday. Like, it's Saturday to Tuesday is so quick. It's like your mind is just remembering <laughs> racing. That's it. Like, it's – Right. It's like, do, you, do you feel like no practicing, though, from the Tuesday to Saturday? Did that rattle you? Do you, do you care? Does, did, how did it affect you? No, I mean – it doesn't bother me. Actually, I did ride on Thursday oh, okay. before the Saturday round, so I did ride a little bit. But I mean, I feel like if I didn't ride, it wouldn't it wouldn't bother me. You know, when you get back on the bike, you remember right away, so it's not a huge deal. Right, right, right. On your contract, Robbie, do you get a little bit of money, or is it just bonuses, or how does it work? Um, it's just like bonuses, um, depending on how I place. So everything expenses paid and some bonuses. Correct. Yep. Okay. So that's why I need to twist the throttle a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah, to really get, right. um a little bit better of a paycheck on on Saturday night. <laughs> <laughs> Robbie Wageman brought to you by Vortexracing.com. Well, uh thanks for joining us, man, and congratulations 
on the race. It's unbelievable yeah, that you didn't job. practice, and then you jumped on a two-stroke and won. That's that's still weird and unbelievable. Uh, <laughs> but, thanks. But Appreciate yeah. that. And I'm glad that you and Kiefer can talk it out. Jesus. Really yeah, glad. no, we're we're great friends. We've always been. We just had one little mishap. It yep. was uh, maybe a 10-minute deal, but other than that, I mean, we've and we've always loved each other. Yeah, so, exactly. but, when, but when you combine the the thing that you guys had, and then Kiefer's issue at State Fair, and you start seeing the patterns, here's the thing: developing. I, it's not Robbie has nothing to do with it. Robbie's fine. Ours is fine. But the <laughs> other people, I think they assume I'm old, so I can't ride a dirt bike very well. So they fuck with me, and it pisses me off. We're gonna get into that when we talk about Aiden. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Just I was just gonna say, hey, I mean, Aiden, Aiden's ripping now. Yeah. And, uh, oh boy, well, here we go. Yeah, I heard he's faster than dad. <laughs> yeah. So I heard. I seen the video. I seen proof. Yep. Uh, we're uh, we're gonna tackle that next, Robbie. God. Um. Thanks for joining us, buddy. Appreciate it. We'll see you in Atlanta, man. Thanks for coming on. Good job, Rob. Yep. Yep. Thanks, boys. Thanks right. for having me. Thanks. Yep. Two fifty world champion. It's that's impressive. Dude, the to kid, jump on a track that you've never been on and on a two stroke. That's you ever raced without doing practice? Never. I've only done it once. I don't want to. Barcelona. <laughs> Scary as hell. Um, a I Supercross? Bet. Yeah. Holy shit. Scary as hell. Yeah, I bet. I did the first two laps. Like, I, I let everybody go on the start, follow the guys over the jumps, figured out the jumps in the first, like, two or three laps, and then just started going faster and faster and faster. And I knew I had to get to, like, ninth or whatever, and I'm just – the last two laps just hammered down, and then it got easier. But, yeah, not not a great time. He uh, – Robbie and RJ, I've, I've seen them since they were real little because mm -hmm. the daddy spring in the track all the time, and right. his dad – Dad was a very good racer as well, right? Yep. Russ Wageman. Mm -hmm. um, RJ is a great rider, but Robbie just has something a little bit better. And I've watched him over the years, and he's just technically really good on yeah. a motorcycle. He is. I agree. Um, all right. So thanks to the folks at Maxima, uh, whether it's Monster Energy Pro Circuit or Monster Kawasaki. They've got the four-stroke uh, additive with the or the four-stroke oil with the peak additive in it. Thanks to those guys, performance enhancing additive chemistry, unique and exclusive to, to uh, Maxima. They got the 927, the number one selling performance two stroke oil in most markets around the world. They have SC1. Great. They have FFT. Awesome. They have MPL. MPPL. MPPL. Yep. Yep. Multi, uh, multi purpose penetrant lube. There you go. Penetration. There you go. Penetration. Pen feel the penetration. Speaking of which, uh, are we doing key, key, grill your ass off, uh, dot com key for after dark? We got two, yeah. Okay, we'll we're doing do some of that after it's the show. Be a quickie. Um, oh, by the way, Race Tech also doing the motor in Robbie's bike as well. There you Folks go. At Race Tech, so they're they're making championship winning uh, products out there. Awesome. All right, so Maxima USA. What's your favorite Maxima product? Uh, does Bunzel make Maxima products? Wow. No. Wow. Oh, I don't know. I like SC one. Wah wah wah. I was kidding. Uh, Obvious, mine is obviously. Chain Guard. Chain Guard. Yep. Okay. Um, you know what? I'm going to go with something new this week. Okay. I, I've been building my, my project bike using Maxima stuff, and uh, I really like the grease. I'm using the grease. Okay. Yeah, really nice. Does it come in the tub still? Yeah. Okay. So it still comes in the tub. Uh, so please check out MaximaUSA.com. Pulp20 is the code to save with those guys. Speaking of Maxima. Yep. I, uh, so we've been so overwhelmed at work. Like, we've been pitching in at certain hours to go help the warehouse. If you're slow. Go help warehouse guys. Damn. I unloaded a full pallet of cases of SC1 the other day. I had to put it all away. Oh, nice. It's gnarly. Wow. It's a lot Good of Heavy. Yeah. Biceps. No, 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 no. There's a lot of SC1. Okay. Um, thanks to the folks at Skosh, by the way, whether it's this base link charger in front of us, whether it's the phone mount, the car mount for your phone, the bicycle mount, the dirt bike mount, whatever it is, Skosh.com will have you covered. Pulp 2021 is the code to save with those guys. Headphones as well. Uh, charging cords, uh, everything they, they've you got. got any extra boom bottles around? I have no extra boom bottles around. JT took my last one when okay. he won the trivia contest <laughs> with uh, Filthy Phil Nicoletti. All right. uh, boom bottles are terrific, though. They're great. Yes. Uh, so thanks to the folks at Skosh for coming on board. Skosh is pleased and proud to bring you our next guest of the night. Oh, She's been here the whole time. Oh, really? She uses Skosh products. I do. It's Heather Kiefer. What's up, Heather? How are you? Hello. How you are, are you? looking lovely tonight. Oh, speak up you. a little bit, babe. I'm speaking up. I'm trying there to keep it. Okay, go. so. Hello. I didn't. I'll be oh, honest. I don't even want to be in here for this. I, I didn't watch the video. I don't want to. Be I didn't watch the video. I know my truth. So oh, what happened boy. was I know my truth. I know my Kiefer, truth. Kiefer, Kiefer, just explain what we're going to talk about here. So I no. thought it would be cool to come up with some different content for Racer X. Aiden and I. Well, that bit you in the ass, didn't it? You can't do that, dude. Let me, well, let me set this up before you start yelling <laughs> at me. Okay. Let me set this up. So. <laughs> I was like, okay, it's great. Aiden's getting better. Yep. I feel like he's getting closer he's, to me on he's time. He's a very good rider. I cannot – from the, the time I went out with Aiden where he was a dickhead and roosted my goggles. <laughs> yes. Remember out in the, yes. on the track there? Yes. To when 
I saw him again at the at the Western Raceway Challenge. Yes. I cannot believe how much he improved. Well, that's even more now since then. Right. Like, whatever that was, six months, whatever yeah. it was when I'd seen him. Yeah. He blew by me at Western. I'm like, holy shit, this kid. So, right. anyways. Yeah. So, I thought it'd be cool to do a little father and son battle on two identical 250s because that's what he runs. And I think it's unfair for me to ride a 450 because I can beat him that way. Yeah. So I thought, ah, this would be a fun video to do. Who's Just faster? Who's faster? Father and son. There's not a lot of father and sons out there that rate at race currently together. Right. I mean, Barry, Nick, Barry, and Corey Carson. Yeah. Okay. Barry and Corey. But I feel like Corey would work Barry, right? Yes. So Aiden and I are getting to that point where we're starting to merge. So I think this would be a great time. So we did this video. Yeah. I brought his KTM two fifty or his two KTM two fifties. I rode his bike. He rode one of his practice bikes. We did a three moto format, twelve minutes each moto. Okay. Qualify on best each bike. Both out at the same yep. time. Yep. Best lap wins that moto. Um, Heather brought a stop uh, an iPhone for both of us. She did that did the laps, and then we did uh, a video after each moto to mm -hmm. talk about the moto and who won. Blah 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 blah. Yep. And comes to find out, Aiden was faster than me two out of the three motos. Which I feel like <laughs> <laughs> this is where it all starts to go south. Yeah, I feel like is bullshit because the first moto I beat him by two over two seconds. Yeah, you're, you're okay. So is I'm it like, possible though you're older, you're getting tired. You're no, okay. because no, as a rider, a hold on, you can totally talk after this. It was a second. Oh. No, it was more than two seconds. No, because cut her mic or? It yeah, was cut two oh six to two oh eight in the first one. Yes. I've, I've watched this. So <laughs> two seconds. So it's two seconds, Jesus right, JT? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so two seconds I'm thinking, is quite a bit. I'm thinking two seconds. So the second moto, I go out, have a better ride. I know what the lines are yeah. more broken in. The yeah. track is faster. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're, you have uh, thousands of hours on it. You know your, yes. you know your speed. Yeah. And I, my time is slower than my first moto. Aiden wins the second moto. And his magically found three and a half seconds. I'm like, okay, in my mind, I'm thinking, no. Nope. Hold on, I didn't Hold know on. this. Hold on, Aiden even, Aiden, Aiden even looks over at me. He's like, he looks over, he's like, he thought he lost already because he's yeah. like, I rode like trash. Right. And, he, and mom tells him that he won. He's like, really? <laughs> well, okay, then he's all stoked. <laughs> so then in my mind, without blowing it on the video, I'm thinking, okay, uh, Heather's sprucing this up a little bit for the video. She yeah. wants three motos. Oh, you were thinking she's in on this. I'm thinking, yeah, okay, yeah, no yeah, problem. Yeah, yeah. So I'm no problem with yeah, it, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Then the third moto is the truth moto, right? third moto comes i'm slower than my second moto and i'm thinking we're doing these motos 15 minutes break there's the track hasn't changed much yeah i'm getting through traffic way better this than videos aiden. on racerx online by the way you watch i'm it? getting through traffic way better than aiden has aiden's complaining about people holding them up blah 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 i'm thinking no problem homeboy two seconds faster than me i'm blown my mind and then his fastest lap is always at the end the last lap if I'm a judge, <laughs> if I'm sitting here, so thank a lot you. of circumstantial And evidence. I'm a judge. <laughs> like, what, what, what do I have to gain for cheating for Aiden? Nothing. What does Aiden have to gain? Nothing. You, I already asked you before we did this. Don't yell. Just counsel, calm. counsel. Do you, <laughs> counsel? Do Approach you the bench. <laughs> do you feel that this was uh, an error made uh, on purpose or a simple accident? Accidental error. I do not think she purposely okay. did this oh to God. to help Aiden. But Cancer, you'll have your moment. track yeah. record shows, yeah. Your Honor, yeah. <coughs> that she has bad track re track record with lap times. So this she is a clerical has, error. She has told me in the past, you are 15 seconds slower than Aiden. I transpose two numbers, asshole. And then, oh, and excuse then, me, counselor, <laughs> can you another please? outburst like yeah, that? Another outburst. Relax. You're going to have a conversation. You're going to be in contempt, <laughs> a contempt of court here. So I'm thinking to myself, she messed up. Which. Yeah. In the grand scheme of things, I'm fine with it. Like no. it's it's No, he's not. Excuse me. <laughs> One more and the bailiff will be taking you away. <laughs> I'm actually like Aiden's happy. He's yeah. walking yeah, yeah. his balls are hung a little bit lower. <laughs> like I'm fine with yeah, it. Like yeah. it's a good yeah, video. Yeah. I right. and then the loser had to go hold the sign up at a street corner and said Oh really? Yeah. Oh. yeah so we, we held up a, a sign on by Glen Helen. I had to be out there for a certain amount of time. And just tell everybody my son's the king of the house now. Okay. So that's what I held yeah. up. Yep. And Aiden just chilled out on eating Doritos, like on the corner. Right. So whatever. But as we get home, I'm starting to feel, feel like yeah. 
I was cheated. <sighs> That's all I gotta say. So I have, okay. I have a few hold questions. Hold on, hold on. She gets the oh, defense, right. and then Fair we'll enough. go to the we'll go to the uh, jury. The jury. All right, go ahead, Heather. I know my truth. Look. Oh, that's, that's your that's your comeback. <laughs> she needs a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> Even at Paula doing motos on Saturday, you were only two seconds faster than Aiden on your 450 in one moto. You guys had very similar lap okay. times. I, first of all, and you it was more than that. Yep. At the end of the at the end of the day, he had a 152, correct? Uh, well, at one point in time, sir. Uh, at one point, one time, point in time, correct. But at the end of the day, I was four seconds better, correct? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So are you saying in these, in these three motos, you were four seconds from the – No, no, no. You went two seconds to the moto two and two seconds to the moto three? You got times? I only have the first times. Okay. Because the first, after the first time, I'm like, okay, Chris is going to win this. Okay. And then I was like getting more and more – is there like going to be a punchline here? Right. Like what's happening? Why is Chris getting much so much slower? How is Aiden getting so much faster? What, what, where's the divergence going here? I, don't, I didn't get it. Yeah, go ahead. I'm in your, your, your floor. I mean, <laughs> were you, you so you were using two iPhones? Yeah, I had two iPhones. I and was then standing. right hand was Chris and left was Aiden or whatever, however it worked. Yes. Is that what you were Chris you're, was you're, on his phone, Aiden was on my phone. Do 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 do. It was very busy and noisy and she's on the on the on a on a platform. It was not busy and noisy. It was busy, yes, but I can And it was hard for I feel like at some point in time <laughs> Look, every time you come by, lap, 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 lap for Aiden, lap for Aiden, lap, lap, lap. You two weren't close to each other. You guys were on opposite ends of the track, so it's not like I got y'all confused. But Heather, you would admit that his being two seconds slower the, the for the track the second time. He's on a 250. Look at his weight. Look at Aiden's weight. Aiden's all fucking carcass. But one one f bomb. Wow. But but <laughs> but then you were slower the third one than you were the second one. I was slower again. Again, you were slower again. I just kept getting worse. <laughs> And Aiden kept getting better. Yes. Well, so I have a question. So what was the gap? <laughs> <laughs> so I sent you a stopwatch. <laughs> Which was via, awesome, by the way. Via Amazon. <laughs> because I'm on the couch. She's like, oh, that's to you. I don't know what the fuck it is. I never opened it. So she got home. She's like, what's this? I'm like, I don't know. You open it. She's open it. She's like, and, and literally, I had, the, I had the Mathis phone on because I, I didn't know. I'm thinking, oh, she got something. I thought that was something else, right? So I'm going to have the video camera out. And she's like. Oh, it's a stopwatch, and I just start dying because I immediately know who it's from. I'm yeah. like, that's fucking gold. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So can we now draw a parallel? <laughs> <laughs> these things, these a things happen. Line in the sand, Dave. These things happened, <laughs> and from that, we can now deduce that. Hold on, what? These, deduce? These deduce? Deduce. What the fuck is that? <laughs> that's right. A plus B equals C. Okay. Okay. Aiden would be the vet world champion. Yes, that's where we're. That's, that's where we're going to end up at. Like at. Mike Brown does not want to see Aiden no, coming. Not right now. Okay. Uh, can I just say that in the first moto, Aiden was a couple tenths of a second faster than you until you threw down that last fast lap. So Aiden was already beating you until that lap. But it doesn't matter. The time is the time. But I'm so just saying, like you act like Aiden shouldn't even be anywhere close to you. No, no, so I Chris disagree. Chris barely with that. beat him in the first one. No, two seconds. Oh, two seconds. Yeah, but th that was oh, when he threw down. He threw before that. he threw down, because I was like, "Oh hell yeah, Aiden beat him." And but then what I'm is is if you have two riders on the track and one gets four seconds slower from the first motor to the third motor and one gets four seconds faster, that seems insane. <laughs> <laughs> that seems. JT? I, I'm Don't not yell. using that word. I'm not gonna yell. I want nothing to do with that word. <laughs> that seems. It seems. It seems <clears throat> Interesting <laughs> to me. <laughs> Again, what do I have to benefit for cheating for either one of you? Nothing. I didn't even want to come because I didn't want no part of this. Yeah, what was our counselor, he says there was no intentional. He believes there's yes. no intentional cheating. He is not there accusing you of intentionally cheating. He is saying he's a clerical error. The numbers okay. were skewed somewhere. Yeah. Well, there's only one way to handle this. We need a redo. That's really the only way to settle this. Aiden says no. He doesn't want to. No. Do it. <laughs> okay. Shocking. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Aiden's the boxing champion. Yeah. Retiring. Right. I'm out. Right. Yeah, I'm out. No, you guys can have redo. There will be no rematch. Yeah, there will be no rematch. So if there is, there is a lit pro involved this time, or some kind of other device. Yeah. Right. yeah. Um, uh, well, it's just like a Glenn Helen, or not Glenn Helen, at Paul on Saturday. You guys didn't think I was doing the right time, so we had someone else do lap times the same time as me. They were the same. What's awesome is Aiden I got a text right here from a factory rider that said they witnessed this going down, and Aiden looked great. 
I do not. <laughs> fuck A Ray. <laughs> He's not a factory rider. This is a factory rider. He was at one time. He was at one time, but not now. He stole all the merch and they fired him. Uh, <laughs> Mark, <laughs> Mark, 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 where do you stand on this? Um, I, I'm I'm leaning towards the clerical error a little bit. Thank you. But Talent? if it was a clerical sorry, error, Talent? wouldn't it have only happened once? No. Oh. I'm having trouble bl- believing that Aiden straight up beat him too. Here's what I think happened. I think Heather did the first moto with like you here and then you and Aiden here and then second moto she forgot the right hand was you no. and the left hand was Aiden so the Absolutely. The, uh, the, the no. phone the, the, who was who got Never got thought mixed of it up. like that but yes. Right. No, it didn't because this is what I would do. I would sit like this and Chris would come by this is Chris's phone. See, see that? It's messed up. <laughs> <laughs> Chris would come by and I would oh, hit that lap. Was interesting. Not a great start. Not right. <laughs> right. Interesting. Because Chris was always ahead of Aiden. So Chris, and then I'd move the phone over. Aiden, and then I'd move the phone over. Chris. I do I'm not like that. That's not. That's no, that is not. Why? That, that is not a good way That to is do not it. efficient. No, that oh is not efficient. You know what? Time your own lotus next time. I'm done. Oh, well, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe if you twist the throttle and go a little faster. Maybe your kid wouldn't beat you. Dang. This is what I've been hearing. No. Can I tell you what a shit All show right. it's been in my house for <laughs> the past that, two dude. weeks? <laughs> you can't do that, dude. What? Go ahead. Tell no, the story. No, 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 no. What's been, been a shit show? You've been an asshole. I have? Kind of. Really? Yes. Wow. Snappy towards me. You have very, been. I heard this on Coffee with the Keepers. Yeah. Very short-tempered with me. This is this is the conversation the night before. Who are you taking? I don't want to take sides. I'm neutral. Nope. Just take Aiden. It's fine. Take Aiden. Because I was going to take you. Because uh-huh. I'm like, man, there's no way that Chris is really going to uh-huh. let Aiden beat him. Mm-hmm. And then he did. Are we need a redo. Can I? Well, at Paula, when we did this Saturday, we had, we, Aiden and I did motos. And we, do, we always try to do sprints before we leave. Aiden was go, trying to go. He got back. Mom told him <laughs> his times. He looked at me and goes, I'm starting to believe you, Dad. I'm starting to believe you that mom was wrong about Glen Helen. Really? So he's even trying to take so, my side. Uh, Heather, first of all, do you dispute anything that he said is fact is factual, like in his story? Do you spu- dispute anything about the times or the the the, 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 the moto lengths or anything about that? Yeah. What? I dispute all of it. Like I know my truth. Like I, you were or whatever. Like it doesn't matter what I say because no one's gonna believe me anyways. They're gonna think that I make us believe it. Like help us help you. If I was even, if I fucked up, just even, a, it'd be a second off. Now we're two seconds, we're four seconds, like. Right. Look at. I didn't you, mess up. But you have messed up in the past on times, correct? Yeah. Just hold on. I transpose. Besides that transpose one, there's been other times hmm. it's been messed up, correct? Yeah, I guess. Okay. That's all I'm saying. And the Everybody, only time, it's human error. That's fine. And the only time it's gotten messed up is if I go to hit lap and the lap doesn't go. Uh, that did not happen we have at a, all. We have a point from a caller, Talon. He wants to know if you just choked under the pressure, like at the Nationals. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, valid point. Valid point. Valid. You're obviously not very good at the one lap thing. You didn't ride very valid. well for these Nationals. Valid. I was a team manager. I witnessed this. Yes. Mm. Yes. Valid point. So you put on a stopwatch on and... Maybe I suck. I understand that point of view. And no, I do not feel like I choked. Aiden, I know when I'm pretty self-aware. I know when I choke. And I've admitted when I do. I didn't. When I came in... I was fairly confident we were done with this video after Moto 2. Two. <laughs> the video went another and then 12 you th- minutes. You thought, Heather, oh, she's playing it I up. was like, that's fine, babe. I didn't say it. And mm-hmm. I'm like, no problem. I, I see what she's doing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I get back to the third moto. I'm like, sweet. <laughs> Aiden's going to be holding the board. Right. And I was, I don't know if you, I didn't even look at the video because I am I was kind of upset. Yeah. <sighs> but if you if there was a close-up on my face, I was shocked. <laughs> could you Could you not mark him like on the track? There were so many people on the track, you couldn't do it. Aiden literally thought that Chris paid people to go get in his way. I swear, <laughs> every time this kid would get on the track, everyone just to Aiden. And here's Chris over here. Just and yet he by was himself. still the fastest. Yeah. More yeah. He, ha- he was. That. More, she's More burying evidence. herself. Yeah. Amazing that. No, because yeah. the last lap was always the last lap. Finally, it was like the seas parted. So and Aiden, then I had enough time so after Aiden I finished. Aiden is just this warrior where on the last lap. Of he, both time. He both pulls both. it together. He pulls it together. Hey. And if, if this is the truth, good for him because he's a better man than me because he has way more maybe he can go mental out status your, uh, than uh, I ever have. Let's take a Twitter poll, uh, please, if we can. Whose story do you believe maybe. in Stopwatch Gate? Right. Heather, Chris. Maybe he can go out and qualify for you for a national. This is what I get at home. Yeah. This is the abuse. Yeah. Oh. So are we doing it again? Will you make your kid do it? Yes, I'm going to make him do it. All right. 
And I what we're going to do to make it more even. No, no, no. You got to ride the same stuff. No, no, no. Hold on. Aiden, get his KTM 250 how he wants it. I will ride a stock bike of anything else but his suspension. It's like <laughs> riding a fucking dual sport bike <laughs> <laughs> with his suspension. Why? He's just... It's just... <laughs> it's so soft. He's 125 pounds. Right. So I haven't ridden a 250F All in right. X amount of time. Plus, I'm on a dick and rib setting. It's tough. See? No wonder you were two seconds slower. No. False. But in the first one, he was two seconds faster. Correct. So that's where we have the issue that's here. Exactly. If I was out of the gate slower, and I am not a first moto guy. I am. I need some time. I'm old. I need to get warmed up. Maybe Aiden's just a gamer. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, jury member. I, d- I don't claim to know what happened here. Yep. <laughs> I don't. I do not believe there were hijinks involved. Mm-hmm. Intentional hijinks. Intentional hijinks. <laughs> yeah. But I also, <laughs> there are a lot of inconsistencies that cannot be I- explained uh, without some sort of phenomenon involved, like something supernatural. Was Aiden no braces or knee pads? Went on. If here. the time don't fit, braces. There was the there was <laughs> something happened. There was a there was a werewolf involved. There were Northern Lights. Yeah. Uh, a UFO. It was uh, the Glen Helen God. Something happened. So, a leap year. I don't know <laughs> what happened. Okay. Heather, yes. What percent in your mind do you think that you made a mistake? Is Zero. Zero. Wow. Wow. Okay. Look, if I was lying. Do we have the Twitter poll up. Wow. Twitter pull up? If I was lying, I would admit it and be like, nah. I'm I, not I, saying you're lying. Or if I messed up. You know me. I, I can't lie. I understand. I did not say at one time you lied. No, but even if I thought that I messed up, I couldn't keep that from you. I would tell you. At, at JMac on Twitter says, why can't Aiden and Kiefer just line up and race heads up? Take all the stopwatches. It's out not of fair for Aiden. Twitter pull. I'm trying to make it fair for Aiden. Why is it not fair and for Aiden? Because I have too much racing under me. I would just work. Boat. Chris would punt his ass <laughs> off the track like he did in Leadville yeah, that one I year. I would just, I would intimidate him because he would just buckle. Okay. All right. Is that poll up? Yeah, it's, I just voted. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, Jury's go in. Go. <laughs> Jury's in, everybody. I don't have the poll yet. I don't know where it is. Uh, oh, there it is. There it is. And uh, I just voted too. Yep, where we at? There we go. <laughs> yep, I voted too. Marks, uh, please log your vote. Yes, Talent, I'm going please right now. log your vote. I and it, either way, it, it was a good. Video, it was fun Nine for me. Nine votes right now. You're in front. I feel like we should get Aiden on the phone. And no, it's not getting riled up. He won't get Here's riled up. Here's the thing. Up. No matter what, I like what this does for Aiden. It put him under some pressure. He Ball, had to try to perform. His balls hung a little. I like, I like this is helping him for his racing. Like, he had to perform. But Okay, but no one likes the society we live in now where everybody gets a trophy, where the, yeah. kid, where the kid gets a win. Right. I don't either. But if mom says, you know, the time. Can we get Greg on you and – no, Greg on Aiden and her on you. I don't know if we want that. All either. I know <laughs> is for, for round two, if this goes down again, A&H is going to be out. Yes. I yeah. can see it hey. bubbling up. It's A&H coming. has been very mellow this Fair year. Fair enough. Agreed. Agreed. But what, I can what? see it coming. <laughs> what like, was, I can see it coming. <laughs> what was the consumption of White Claws before the timing? None. This was an agreement. The same agreement that I had with Aiden not to shoot him, uh, video him sleeping. Yep. We had to have an agreement with mom that she's not allowed to drink at the races. Okay. <laughs> All right. Fantastic. <laughs> so things are happening. Things are moving around. All right, no more videos of Aiden with his hand down his shorts sleeping. Yep. Yeah, yeah, right. So um, things are evolving in our family. Right. That's very good. You guys have a really nice stuff. Um, I asked Aiden how I could be a better father, so yeah. I'm working on that. What was your thing again? Just don't video me, Dad. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Mouth open. Yes. Yeah. I agree with that. You're, you're a dick for that. Yeah, for sure. You, uh, you're, but A&H yeah. has been in effect. And I would just give you one example. 61% you have the lead right now in the poll. That's not much. I will give you an example of how I know it's still here. Okay. Before we pulled up to your house this afternoon at 11 a.m., she was already looking at area qualifier <laughs> results from B class from last <laughs> weekend. Oh, yeah. I'm driving. <laughs> yeah. She's looking at results. Uh, there was no one there. There's no one there. Well. Who's this? Who's that? I'm like, I don't even talk to her. I don't listen. I'm like you and Pookie on the couch. I don't talk. Right. I just do well, my own thing. I'll tell you what. If this is, if this is all we have in front of me, I, I'm. Uh, I, I think there was. I think there was some irre- irre- irregularities going on. And you yeah. know me. I, I, like if I feel like I lost, I would say, "Yep." You know me. If this was a COVID test, you would have to go quarantine <laughs> until we could get more a more conclusive <laughs> result. 
COVID test. Oh, oh, hold on. Oh, boy. Aiden, what's going on? Yo, what's up? What's up, buddy? <laughs> How's it going? Fastest man in the family. <laughs> King yeah, of the house. Yeah, fastest keeper right now. I mean, yep. I'm sitting here on the couch, retired, you know, watching YouTube. You're retired? Yeah, you're. so okay, yeah. Aiden, you are not going to do a round two? No, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I don't care if he makes me. You know what? He can video me sleeping all he wants. I am not doing a round two. I'm out. Because he so, knows mom's time to say this. Aiden, you're not helping <laughs> me <laughs> at all. No, 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 I don't think mom cheated at all. Okay. All right. we, no one. We have not accused. We have no, no one, cheating. There wasn't cheating. No they think I messed up. No one has accused no. Heather Kiefer of cheating. But you no, even but you even said on Saturday I just Saturday think something that happened. You. There was a lunar eclipse. <laughs> uh, something went on. Can I just I don't say. Know. The swell was bigger that day. Can I day? just say that when High Heather. Tide. High tide. When Heather <laughs> demonstrated for the jury her technique. Very bad. That oh was my gosh. terrible yeah, technique. I'd seen that with the shells. Like, right. And I had that, to give the guy five dollars. Is that, is, is that, that is, a fair <laughs> game over there? What is that? I get a goldfish if you do the right thing. Stop it. Heather, that's a that's a that is not a solid technique of a timer to start switching phones over. Why? Because I'm. I think her timing was fine. <laughs> yeah. you do. Shocking. Yeah. No, Aiden's on board. Yeah. yeah. Whatever mom did was great. Yeah. Hey, you didn't you like my dad. You're just mad that I just beat you fair and square. Found four seconds on you, last two laps, too. It's, it's okay. I, <laughs> I mean, mean, like, it's rough we don't even house. see Tomac dropping four seconds, no. you know, on Roxon and for, on the last lap. Like, we just don't see that. Or Aiden just had the sandbagging attitude. The first moto is like, I'm just going to let him think he's good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And as uh, Heather explained, caught up in all the traffic. Yep. Traffic all the time. Here, swarmed him. Here's yeah. the thing that I felt, okay? After the second moto, mom gave the results. So I'm in my third moto out there at Glen Helen. I am going to blow this KTM up because I'm going to lay it down. <laughs> and I want to make sure I laid at least two really good ones, clean air, bike smoking, Tomac clutch burning. Right. Like, yeah. burning. Yeah. I'm good. I laid a few more just to, just in case. Just in case. Just in case. A little icing on the cake, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. just to have that. A little kush. A little kush. A little kush. Come back. <laughs> Got the daggers right in my heart. Just <laughs> two seconds. Now I want to watch this video to watch your face on video <laughs> saying, well, my kid was faster than me, everybody. It was not good. That was uh, good. That was a good feeling. Well, congratulations, <laughs> Aiden. Congrats, Thank man. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. I'm yeah. looking at my number one plates up here, you know. They're mine now. I'm the, I'm the 40-year-old Redwin champion now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just sitting here looking at my number one plate. Wasn't there a, it looks pretty nice. Wasn't there a boxer who just refused to, 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 to defend his title? They stripped it from him eventually? I think there no, was a boxer I mean, who was just, like, like refusing to fight. For... <laughs> Aiden, you're going to have to defend your title. Yes. It's, it's why, just... why can't? What happened to you, Steve? Why aren't you defending your four Manitoba titles? Where, where are you at right now? Well, I, I, that's actually not really. <laughs> it's not to do with, Yeah, that's actually nothing to do with anything. That's fifteen-year-old reasoning right there. Yeah. <laughs> um. Well, I. I mean, I just. You're. <laughs> congratulations, Aiden. That's all I got. <laughs> I mean, Thank I, you. I, I don't. Thank I don't. I mean, we'll we'll see what the poll is like tomorrow. Let's remember to check on that, everybody. Oh uh, and we'll see what that poll stands. Aiden, the jury member over here is yep. weighed in. Aiden, were you frustrated with mom at, at Paula Saturday? Yes or no? Okay. Yeah, I was mad. Okay. Thank you. I was pissed. Right. Because how do I go? How do I go from doing 150s and 149s to 155s? Right. Because you were slow. Okay. You were tired. That's all yeah, I'm saying, right. jury. That's all I'm saying. And you'd already done three 20 minute motos, so that's why you're left. Yeah, yeah, to... yeah. So. Good. Don't, yeah, yeah, yeah. Congratulations, you were not son. On my now, side. uh, make sure the dishes are done when we get home, okay? Please. Thank yes, you. Yes, uh, Yeah, I'll, I'll, um, I'm waiting for you to get home so we can get ride tomorrow. Can't wait. All right, Aiden. Yeah. Thanks for calling in, buddy. Congratulations on the win. Thank you. All Thank right. you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. That's Aiden Kiefer, the fastest man in the house. <laughs> God. Dark he's side. Be, he's gonna be sleeping in your guys' bed when you get back. <laughs> Probably. Dark side. Who do you uh, who do you side with here? <laughs> I've already had this conversation. I love Heather, but it's fishy. I, I'm, oh my gosh, Dark Side! Don't I, don't I, be I trying actually, to get back at me just because I said you couldn't win the prize. <laughs> no, <laughs> the start connects. The start. I watched, all these years later. I watched the video. I watched the video, and after the second moto, and Kiefer thinks he's faster than the first. 
and Aiden thinks he's slower, but he gained four seconds. I instantly stopped, and I was like, this is bullshit. <laughs> right. But do you believe Heather did something intentionally, or do you believe her, no. her shell game of stopwatches? Shell her shell game. game. I I a, not. Oh, my God. What's the fuck? It's I like a, a Price is Right game. Uh, no, what's Chevy Chase in Vegas where they're doing that It's 25-cent tables and the guy has all these weird yeah, games? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, uh, Guts step. Racing and Seal Savers and Michelin Bicycle Tire, of course, <laughs> presenting the wrap-up show this week. What number am I thinking about? <laughs> Seven. Nope, five. No, five. Uh, <laughs> Jeez, you guys. I swear. Poor Heather. Yeah, poor Heather. I feel bad for Heather right now. Yeah, it's fine. Well, she didn't really unleash very many F-bombs right now, which is good. I had one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. True. And I called, well, no, I said one, and I called you an asshole. Kiefer's been on her, man, on the coffee with the Kiefer. He's, he's kind of, he's been hard on her. I know. I'm not hard on my wife. Trust me on this. <laughs> it's been rough, dark side. Couple, couple of weeks of rough. Heather has it me. really easy. Trust me. Uh, I hear you. It's I, uh, always entertaining, at least. I listened to the last wrap-up show with those Australian guys. Yeah. Yeah. M wasn't bad, Dark Side. Keep it up. Was it a five? <laughs> oh, I appreciate that. Yep. I'll mm -hmm. take was it. Was it a five? It was probably a five and a five. Five, five, six. Yeah. Five point five. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, five point five. Not it was DV and Rutledge. I'll take so. that from Steve. You know that DV and Rutledge. Yep. Lots to talk about with that. Yep. Poor Rutledge. No. 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 Not poor Rutledge. Oof. I think you guys totally mis misplaced that whole thing. Okay. Uh, this is the way DV talks. It's not, he wasn't mad at Rutledge. He told him. He told the guy that he goes to the bathroom when he's on. That's not being mean in DV's <laughs> eyes. <laughs> That's not being mean. No. Have you listened? You've had DV on here plenty of times. When he's passionate about what he believes in, aka Rhino status, he says those kind of things. He wasn't like screw this dude, but he was trying to make his point. That's it. And this is, how, this is why we all love DV, his passion. Marks and I are not buying it. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I thought it was great. Oh, it was great, but yeah. poor Rutledge. Yeah, well, <laughs> if he, yeah. If he doesn't know DV, then yeah, I could yeah. see that. Right. Yeah, poor Heather. And then, and then when Rutledge said, I've never even heard of you. That, well, that doesn't help. Right. 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 Yeah. And she's, um, I hit the mic. Yeah. Calm down. All right, Dark Side. Anything else? Shell game. Oh, uh, yeah, this week. <laughs> so t Wednesday night, we got uh, Dave Drakes from Collective Experience. And. Uh, Heather will like this. Seth Rarick will be on the wrap-up oh. show. Oh, I'd like to time. hear Rarick's opinion about this whole thing. Rarick right. will take my side yeah, for sure. Yeah, I'd like to hear this. Yeah. Well, we're, we will definitely get into it. And uh, I also want to give a shout-out to Justin Inglis, who won the Yamaha LCQ Challenge tickets that the Moto X Pod Show donated. So, nice. nice. Yeah. Appreciate everybody buying the tickets and playing the game. Pony Pod stepping up, helping out the privateers. Also, Marks, can we be can we maybe clip – the video of Heather's shell game, and we can say, "Do you does this look like a a a a, uh, a, a you know a, proper technique a proper of, technique of timing oh somebody?" Yes, you'll be happy to know timestamps are already noted for that whole segment. So Thank you. We're Thank good you. To go. Show what Heather is timing does. I mean, often, <laughs> hey, I can't tell you how many races I've been to where I saw DeCoster just moving iPhones <laughs> up in that manager's tower, just moving iPhones. Uh. <laughs> He's got Webb and Muscan on iPhones. That's actually how my mom used to score. Right. In, in the tower. Right. They just really? had it. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. Uh, Whatever. Uh, I know my truth. <laughs> I know, that's all she keeps saying. That's I know what, my that's truth. That's her go-to. <laughs> I know, yeah. yeah. I know my truth. Because I feel like I shouldn't. I don't. Yeah, whatever. All right. Nah. Not a good. Not a good count. No, 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 no. I'm not on trial here. It's fine. <laughs> you kind of are. You uh, kind of are. Yeah. yeah. Well, then I, I guess. I still love you no matter what. We all do. Yeah. Listen, babe, it's okay. That's Aiden's just Aiden's getting good. Yes. He's ramping up. Yep. Man, it's tough when your kid gets better at something than you. See, I, I, I Yeah. Go no, ahead. Uh, I, I, go ahead. I feel like this is part of your problem. You're like not wanting to let go, but you want to let go. JT, want to weigh in on that? You said you had something to do. I let go a long time ago. Yeah. So, it's <laughs> fine. Uh, I let go. It's fine. He is a bet. He's way better than I was when I was 15. I've already said this. I know. But it's just not time I, yet. For you or for him? For him to beat me. I'll I'll know when it's time. I know. We'll, we'll, we'll get there. Time. <laughs> we'll get yeah, there. We'll get there. We'll get there. We'll get there. I like your impression way better than his uh, actual. All right, Dark Side. Anything else? No, nah, that's it, guys. Thanks. All right, thanks Bye, for calling Dark in. Side. Check out the wrap-up show this week, everybody. It's going to wrap up everything on this show. Jesus. Right. First name Dark, See last guys. name Side. Yeah, Berm Lord. <laughs> Lord of the, the Berm Lord. 
see you okay, We'll get those graphics. We'll get those graphics made like overnight. We'll, we'll, get, we'll get there. We'll, we'll, get get the we'll get the graphics. We'll get the graphics. Save them for Loretta. All right. Thanks, Dark Side. See ya. See ya. All right, everybody. Let's go to commercial break here. We'll come back. We'll uh, do the motorsport.com tweeted talent segment. We got the grillyourassoff.com KAD, and uh, and we'll call it a show after that. So thanks for sticking around. Uh, we'll go to the last, last commercial break. We'll be right back after this, everybody. Or if you're a little bitch. Those who love motocross know Motorsport.com has the knowledge and expertise to make your next ride your best ride. Motorsport.com has a broad selection of in-stock parts and gear at competitive prices. We specialize in bringing you OEM and aftermarket parts, riding gear and accessories for dirt bikes, motorcycles, ATVs, and UTVs. All thanks to the most dedicated and experienced team of gearheads in the industry who use the very parts we sell on Motosport.com. Motosport.com always offers fast shipping and free delivery on orders more than $79 to ensure you never miss a ride. Whether you race on the track, ride the trails, or commute on the street, shop motosport.com today for the best customer service and experience when buying the parts and gear you need to stay on two and four wheels. Make your next ride your best ride only at motosport.com. Maxima Racing Oils was created for world-class racers who challenge the limits of possibility. Their demands on equipment drive us to look beyond conventional ideas and to exceed industry standards. It's in our DNA to identify problems, formulate solutions, and execute at the highest levels of competition. Case in point, the championship-winning Factory Kawasaki Race Team, longtime Maxima partners who extensively use Maxima throughout the bike. Maxima's USA-made products exceed JSO requirements and can be used in all motorcycle brands. Kawasaki, Honda, Yamaha, Suzuki, KTM, Husqvarna, and more. Maxima Racing Oils. Experience the difference. Visit MaximaUSA.com for more information. Hi, it's Tomax Superfan Dylan here. The only thing I love more than seeing Eli win is Michelin Motorcycle Tires. And Michelin is introducing many exciting new tires for 2020. For V-Twin riders, the Michelin Commander 3 Cruiser and the Michelin Commander 3 Touring Tires offer improved wet grip and enhanced tread life. For sport bike and track day riders, the Michelin Power 5 tire and the Michelin Power GP tires feature the same architecture and profile for effortless sport bike setup from street to track. If you'd like to have the same tire that won the 2019 Red Bull Ayersburg Rodeo, the Michelin Enduro Extreme Tire is the tire for you. And the Michelin Star Cross 5 tire range is now available for young motocross and off-road riders in sizes for 50cc bikes and up. To learn more about these and all other Michelin two-wheel products, check out www.motorcycle.michelinman.com. Visit your local dealer or online retailer and follow at Michelin Motorcycle on Instagram and Facebook. Want a chain and sprocket kit but aren't sure what you need? Then call Vortex EK at 800-440-3559 and get hooked up with the right sprocket and chain kit for your bike. With more than 30,000 possible gearing combinations, Vortex EK has more gearing than your garage has room for. It's a ridiculous amount of gearing for nearly any bike. Join the ranks of Star Racing Yamaha and Supercross champion Dylan Ferrandis and run a Vortex Sprocket. Available in red, blue, black, orange, silver, and Kawasaki green. Yes, green. Call a doctor because things just got sick. Warning may cause extraordinary power, excessive performance, and speed so fast your eyes will bleed. Call Vortex EK at 800-440-3559 and mention promo code PULPMX2021 and get the best deal on your next order. FMF Racing is proud to celebrate over 45 years of fun, building every FMF exhaust right here in the USA. Owner and founder Don Emler may have started FMF Racing in his garage 45 years ago, but Don is still hands-on in our 100,000 square foot state-of-the-art manufacturing facility in Southern California. FMF's goal? 
Design and manufacture the world's best performance exhaust, 100% in the USA under one roof. FMF is a proud sponsor of the Lucas Oil Pro Motocross Championship for over 25 years. Steve. Kiefer. Do you want to hear about one of the best rides I've ever had? Dude, it's not time for After Dark yet. <sighs> Chill down, dude. I just want to talk about Race Tech stuff. Oh, that's it. Okay. Gosh, go man. Basically, I've had the chance to do some stuff with Race Tech recently with the CRF 250R and, of course, the KX250. And as you know, I've talked about on the show, I wasn't a real hardcore fan of Race Tech stuff back in the day. But since Rob and Andrew and those guys have assembled at Race Tech, the stuff has been great. So um, for you guys out there listening, if you guys are looking to get your engine work done or even some suspension work, or as Steven says on the show sometimes, Get your seals and <laughs> your oil rebuilt in your, fork, in your fork and shock. Get it rebuilt. It helps. 15 to 20 hours. Head over to Racetech.com. Check out. They even got a cool little simulator. You can look at uh, what size spring rate you might need for your bike. So a lot of cool features over there on the website. But uh, And as you know, Yamaha Blue Crew guy over here, you guys have some of that on your bike. It's fantastic. Zombie Blos uses it. Jerry Robin uses it. Starling, all of those guys over there. Malcolm Stewart won a Supercross with Race Tech stuff a few years ago. Pulp 19 is the code to save. Mention Pulp MX when you when you call. You can save on the service. You can save save on motor work. You can save on springs if you just want to do that and get it put in yourself or do it yourself. Race Tech is the one stop shopping for motor and suspension work. You can also mention the code Home Life 2020. That's better. That's a better code, I think. We'll do either one. Just <laughs> listen, people. Give your bike some love. Get your suspension modified service. Get your motor modified serviced with the folks at Race Tech. Good people. For over 30 years, Decal Works has led the industry in quality and customer service by offering the best custom motocross graphics, plastics, seat covers, and Rider ID products. Decal Works is officially licensed with Honda, Kawasaki, Yamaha, Suzuki, KTM, Husqvarna, and Gas Gas. Their expert staff will go above and beyond to make sure your questions are answered. Decal Works is a proud sponsor of Red Bull KTM Factory Racing and the Rockstar Energy Husqvarna Factory Off-Road Team. Visit decalmx.com and be sure to use promo code PULPMX at checkout. Quality, service, and knowledge is what makes Decal Works stand out. Decal Works, number one for many reasons. Hey, Pulp Nation, Andy from Guts Racing. We are the leaders in seat technology. We feel like for any need that you have with your seat, we've got you covered. For 2021, we're going to be adding more colors to our, our product line, and we're going to be adding more merchandise to our product line. Also new for 2021, we've expanded our distribution through motorsportoutlet.com. So please support the people that support Pulp, support Guts Racing, and also support motorsport.com. Hope to see you guys at the track soon. Once again, this is Andy Gregg from Guts Racing. Thanks again to Pulp Nation for all the support. Over 65 years ago, Vertex Pistons was born out of a small technical workshop in northern Italy's famous Motor Valley. Expanding and maturing among the racing legends of Ferrari, Lamborghini, MV Augusta, and Ducati. Today, Vertex Pistons are the pistons of choice for motorcycle riders and teams throughout the world. Because of their renowned reputation for exceptional quality, Vertex Pistons is a factory piston supplier to KTM, Husqvarna, Beta, Gas Gas, and TM. From the Motocross, Supercross, MXGP, GNCC, National and World Enduro Series, you can find Vertex Pistons winning championships. Vertex Pistons strives to provide you with world-class factory technology at a very competitive price. No matter which brand of bike you ride, when it's time to rebuild your top end, Vertex Pistons will have your engine performing better than new. To see our full range of two-stroke and four-stroke pistons in replica, high compression, or GP-style configurations, visit us at vertexpistons.com or stop into your local dealer and ask for a Vertex Piston Kit today.
Hey guys, it's Mathis. Look, if you're still not wearing a neck brace in 2020, it's time to go get one or at least think seriously about it. It's been over 15 years since the neck braces first came out. They're not the clunky, oversized devices they used to be. Atlas came in and changed the way all neck braces were designed by introducing flexible technology to the world and proving that neck braces can be something you can actually ride in while performing at the highest level. Look at Jason Anderson winning Supercross championships or look at Martin Davalos or anybody else. Don't take my word for it just because I have two Manitoba championships to my name. Wait, I have four. Just look at how many other brace designs look like the Atlas one. Atlas pioneered all the modern neck brace features and have been refining them ever since then while the competition has been trying to catch up. Grab the brace that's been leading the pack. Check out atlasbrace.com. Get yours today. There is a pulp discount if you check out sponsoreddeals.com on pulpamexshow.com. So be like Chase Sexton, Martin Davalos, and many other guys that wear the Atlas brace. Atlasbrace.com. Our guys at Works Connection have always been there for the Pulp MX show, and they're there for you as well. Uh, they're just as passionate and as dedicated to the sport as you are. For over 30 years, Works Connection has been designing and producing innovative products like the Pro Launch Start Device, the 123 Easy Build Elite Perch, Elite Axle Blocks, and much, much more. You'll find Works Connection products on AMA Pro Riders bikes under the canopies of Team Honda, HRC, Star Racing, Smart Top Honda, as well as top teams and privateers alike. The best part of this deal is Pulp MX20 code saves you money at worksconnection.com. Stop by your local outlet and check out the new lineup of Works Connection products for 2021. I've got the perch on my bike. I've got the engine plugs. I absolutely love it. Great product. I've got the uh, start device as well, which helped me in one moto at the World Vet Championships and one moto. Not so much. Worksconnection.com. Pulp MX20 is the code to save. Please check them out. All new. 2021 products now available. Thanks for listening. Mesh. What, what, is it? what is it? Kinetic mesh? Kinetic mesh dropping this. Wow. Friday? Saturday will be the riders will be in it? Do we he's, know if, he's new to this. It's fine. I know. I thought it was uh, kinetic mesh something else. I thought it was like another spring. or That's just what I don't know. It's Can we get him some word. light hydrogen? He won't wear it. No, he says. He blames you. What? No. What? He blames you. Blame he JT? says, JT will not give it to me. I, I did not say this. I did oh not say this. Oh, my God. This is not, this is not truth. What, what? Can you just send him some? That's a ridiculous statement, so I hope he didn't say that. Yeah. I mean, you guys will send me whatever I want. Yeah. Yeah. Except for pockets. Why won't you wear light <laughs> hydrogen? I don't need gear, bro. I have so much gear. I don't ride enough. I have gear coming out my ass. Okay. I'm good. All right. I really like the kinetic mesh. I've always liked that stuff. I do like the Evo as well. So Evo's good. Um, I'll be wearing Evo tomorrow. Ride Desk Engineering, the Ride Engineering 2021 split triple clamps are here. They're available in red and black. They come in two offsets and cost 649 bucks, but you save 130 bucks uh, using the Pulp Fan 20 code at ride-engineering.com. If you know someone at Ride, you may be able to get a set in silver just like Kiefer's. Benefits of these triple clamps are improved comfort and stability and the weight savings of 10 ounces. Stock 22 millimeter offset available for tighter tracks or Supercross. While a new 23 and a half option calms the steering at a track like Glen Helen or Paula. Uh, Kiefer, you tested these. I just did it last week. Uh, he wanted me to, to try some things. And I'm a big, com just a big advocate of a 24 offset on a, on a CRF because it's a little bit twitchy. And also the bike is rigid feeling. I complain about that a lot. So uh, for me, he wanted to sell a 23.5 offset to be a little bit different than X-Trig 24. Uh, I tried it. Wasn't expecting much because I have a lot of history with Honda. I was at Paula. It was the end of the day. It was rough, a little choppy, dry. Dude, uh, I was like, holy shit. 
just to confirm, like, I wasn't full of crap. I had another guy. Is Heather timing you? No. Okay. Uh, I had another guy that owns a Honda, Works Edition, having rod, rode my bike, uh, ride my bike, and uh, he was like, wow, it's way better. So it calms the chassis down a little bit, a little less vibration because Honda does vibrate, and better steer into the corner, not so you don't get a lot of oversteer. So for me, I'm, I'd be on a 23.5. And they're split clamps, so less rigidity. Um, it, it's a good product. I told Adrian this at the end of the day. I go, look, you haven't made something this good in a long time for oh, me. Nice. So. Nice to say. Ride-engineering.com. <coughs> use, use the code PULPFAN20 to save 130 bucks on the 2021 split dribble clamps as well, depending on what offset you want. Uh, or just use the PULPFAN20 code to save at Ride-engineering.com on anything they have. So um, the Kiefer's definitely got into it a little bit. Uh, earlier over the uh, stopwatch race. So if you've been in a motorcycle car accident, Kiefer, did somebody or some idiot take you out? You know, I want to say, you know, anything happen, happens. Right. right. Uh, call Arthur Draper. He's a friend of the show. Uh, I've known Arthur for a while. He used to be a mechanic back in the day for a privateer rider. And now he's a slow moto guy turned attorney. Uh, he takes the time to know the clients and will take the time to talk to you personally. Consultations are free, but you got to give him a call. More importantly, Arthur only gets paid if you get paid. There's no risk to you. Help is only a phone call away, and Arthur's got your back. Visit ArthurDraper.com, A-R-T-H-U-R, Draper.com. So please check him out if you've got an issue. Uh, California, uh, Nevada, a few other states I know he can do, and he's helped out some of our listeners. So thanks to ArthurDraper.com if you need some legal advice, uh, you know, if shit goes, shit goes wrong for you. Uh, thanks to Offroad Warehouse again for coming on board, O-R-W, uh, Mumphy, and Shock. Sponsored riders. you running the ORW butt patch on the uh, Chaparral FXR Honda team. So please check those guys out at their locations. If you want a deal, email us, offroadwarehouse.com. We'll pass it on to one of those guys, and they can dial you in. So thanks, thank you to those guys for coming on board. Uh, we have some voicemails to play, right? Uh, let's do a couple of those if we can, Talon, and then do the motorsport.com tweet at Talon segment. Uh, my name is Trevor. Just got a general question in regards to fuel consumption. I'm uh, just trying to understand. So back in the day, I remember guys racing outdoors where we're out of fuel. Just wondering if now is that not the case because of EFI purely, or was there any other changes? Thanks. Uh, no, they're still running uh, fuel bottles. Yeah, there's no no nothing to change with EFI at all. Yeah, because Dunge ran out when there was an EFI on yeah. Suzuki. Yeah. So. All right. Uh, this uh, question is for uh, Chris Kiefer and uh, Steve. Yeah, I'm just curious uh, what you guys think about the uh, 2021 Suzuki RMZ 450. Uh, I kind of saw the rollout uh, video on YouTube, and it looks like uh, they're still pretty far behind everybody else, even with the uh, app to uh, control the, the uh, fuel injection and whatnot. So just curious what your take is on that and uh, when you think Suzuki will get together and uh, be more competitive with the rest of the bikes with the electric start and uh, the other technology. So thanks. Here's where we just clip your standard Suzuki response for the last three years, which is it's a good bike. That's the, um, you're, yeah, it's it's eight grand if you want to buy a new one. Look, there's, right, eight grand. It's not the cutting edge of technology. There is a market for Suzukis. If you like riding dirt bikes, you want to get involved. You want to have a solid dirt bike. You want a new dirt bike. Suzuki is a great option. I don't want to spend twelve thousand dollars. I want six to eight. I want to have a new bike, have some new technology, a good set, of, a good set of suspension. There's nothing wrong with an RMZ two fifty or four fifty. There's nothing wrong. Yep. Like this is your people. This is your just people are oh fuck that. You got to kick it, dude. We've been kicking dirt bikes for how long? It's it's not a huge deal. Right. Sure. Do I like an E-Star? Yes. Wait till tomorrow when JT gets on the E-Star Honda. I know. It's going to be good. He, he's, last time he was kicking his RM. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I have ridden. I mean, we have a Husky at I WPS know. that I ride that's electric start. If you're a member of the RM Army, you have a handshake, you have a wave, you can bro down at the track. You get in trouble at the track. Your Suzuki brethren will have your back. Well, no, you just kind of look at each other and go, hmm. Yeah. yeah. Is that the you just shrug, like is that the you're that's like, like the Jeep wave of the <laughs> Suzuki? <laughs> yeah. What you just like? Yeah. Well, we're still you still ride by the pit. You're like we're yeah. still kicking our bikes. We're a few horsepower down. Right. It's fine. What are you gonna do? Right. It's right. a good bike. It is a good bike. Hey Matt, this is Kyle. I was listening to 457, and I gotta pause it midway, man. Leave you this message. 
some guy was sitting there complaining about how, you know, quote unquote creeper talks. Dude, that's just who he is. Some of us aren't, you know, Travis Pastrana, which I love Travis Pastrana, but dude, not all of us are like cookie cutter to the T, never cuss. You know, we got better things to do than worry about who we're going to fucking offend. It's like, it's 2021. Everything's got to be so politically correct. So, fuck that guy. Kiefer, keep being you, dude. Some of us just like to express ourselves with profanity. And I, I don't think that that makes us any less intelligent. But anyways, yeah. love the show. Right. Keep it going, guys. Bye. I, I agree. Passion. Steve, man. This Rutledge guy that they got coming on the broadcast could not be more of a clown. And I know they're trying to grow the sport, but th this is a clown show. The dude is on there. He asks Ricky, oh, Ricky, did you ever read your pit board when you were a racer? Uh, he's asking a rider if he can do a backflip. They have him doing a segment where he's holding up the pit board for a privateer writes a good job on it when the dude's riding around in 16th <laughs> in the LCQ. Uh, they have a segment with him uh, where he's acting like he's learning how to flag and he's playing it up like he's a goofball. I mean, what are they thinking with this? Right. It, it, it makes the sport look so yeah. pathetic. And it, I know this has been touched on before, but man, like, Really, what are they Poor doing Rutledge. here? No. It's not a good look for the sport at all. Not to mention just the broadcast in general. Half of the main event is that dual screen picture in picture. You can't see shit. You know, you, you get a little glimpse of Marvin on the ground unconscious, and then they don't mention, mention shit for the rest of the night. What is going on this year? I mean, I want to give them slack, but I don't buy Weege's explanation of this just being covid this has been years of a terrible mm, fucking broadcast. You. Broadcast complaints. Can I? Can we talk about that for hey, a second? Hold okay. on. Okay. All right. The Rutledge caution flag segment. Mm -hmm. I was embarrassed for us. <laughs> and it's not Rutledge. Yeah. The production. Co whoever said, "Yeah, that is cool. Let's run that." That is a freaking disgrace. That is embarrassing to me. That was bad. That those caution flaggers, m it made them look like idiots. Those guys save people's, they could save people's lives on the track. And that whole segment was, ha, ha, ha. I get it. You want to have, right. have it be appealing and, 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 and fun to a new audience. But, dude, the way it's portrayed, it is embarrassing. And I'm never like that. Like, I could care less at most things. But yeah. I was like, who said <laughs> green light on that whole thing? Do you remember me barking at that on the living room? It, it's bad. What do you? Did you see it? Not really. I don't think I paid attention to it. Like whatever. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't. I, I don't have strong feelings about being embarrassing for the sport. Look at. I know like we I, always complain. There's somebody sitting there being like, "Oh, I didn't know that." You know. I know, uh, but I, I, it's just if someone came on to our sport, and I know that's few and far between, at that moment, and saw that, I'd be like, "Oh my God, we're wrestling. <laughs> we are WWE." This is lame. Well, yeah. Marks, what would you think about it? I know you're probably a big fan. Uh, I don't have a big feeling about that particular segment, oh, I but you. but I think they try to cater to, to new fans, quote-unquote yeah, new fans, they will never too stop often, that. Yeah, they will and, never and that stop just that. falls into that category. Oftentimes, I watch NFL, and Troy Eggman's like, so here's the football, folks, and there's four downs. No, they do not. I've never seen that. I'm kidding. Oh, okay. They're not explaining. You sounded real serious. They're second. not explaining football when you just turn it on. I will say Carmichael has been better at explaining certain sections of the track while riders have been doing things. He he can go a ways, yeah, but he's better. Yes, I agree. I he yeah. talked about hitting the knuckle like a little kick, and right. he explained it, and I'm like, dude, that's what we want. Right. Even though I know about it, it's cool to hear about. Right. All right. Steve. I don't know if you talked about this or not already, but why in the middle of the main event when there's great action passing going on, do they cut to talking about Cooper Webb flipping over the bars from over a year ago, mm -hmm. Broadcast so on and so forth? I mean, I can't stand that shit. It drives me up a wall. I'm sure I'm not the only one. No one wants to see that anymore. No one cares. What's up with that? That one I do have feelings about, just in case anyone cared. 
I mean, yeah, I, I, they, they, it's, it's ridiculous. It's like Kenny's crash or, or whatever. Like, dude, but they're trying to be everything to everybody. And when you're trying to be everything to everybody, you can't be what you want. So they're trying to get the chicks in with the Rutledge Wood stuff. They're trying to get new viewers in. Uh, they're trying to get the gory people in for the crash and burn segment because, you know, people will stop and watch that. Rutledge Wood is for chicks? Whatever. Just people who don't know much about the sport. Like, oh. yeah. And, and so they're trying to be everything to everybody. And then you miss what you actually are. Do you think we'll ever be, and uh, this no. might come up a lot, no. like F1, no. where no. we have our no. own little app no. and we can watch certain mm, cool... Well, maybe that, because uh, this, the whole world is going that way, right? With, I with, just feel with, like that is a great way. Or, like, or, or his stupid sport. MotoGP. Uh, the street bike racing. Does MotoGP have that? Oh, yeah. It's okay. great. Yeah, it's awesome. You can, you can re-watch things. It's oh, right yeah. there. It's yep. like... Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Oh. Steve Mathis. Rocky Mountain ATV. Kiefer tested with his son. Questions and answers. That has got to be the worst podcast two <laughs> minutes I have ever listened to. Two I minutes? think I'd rather listen to my cat scratch on a goddamn window. Unbelievable. Clippy, clippy. <laughs> That's awesome. I, he, he's not I don't know fan. what he's talking about. Really but. Like it. I, well, I think he got two minutes in, and that oh, was it. Oh, he's out. Yeah. Okay, got he it. He said so many things all at once. He was naming sponsors. I, I was and long. then uh, is Catch Scratch a window? Is this a specific podcast you I, do? I think it was when we and Aiden did the race. Maybe that's what it was. But he said, I'd rather listen to my Catch Scratch a window. Like I don't feel like that, that's that that's bad. That's not that bad. No, that's, that's not, not that a bad. chalkboard. No, like, yeah. 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 It, would so. be, it wouldn't be that way. So actually, I'm doing pretty good then. Right. Yeah, it's not bad. Thanks, sir. Yeah. Hey, Steve, my rant is with NBC Sports. Todd Harris, Rutledge, and Diffie. Todd Harris just said Shane McElrath won the second heat when it was Cooper Webb. These clowns don't know our writers, don't know the sport. What in the fuck is Uh, NBC doing? Rutledge. I've done broadcasting as JTS2. Like, they you, make mistakes. You fuck up. You do fuck up. Right. You do fuck up. I, I, I said one time, a, a, a rider's used to getting used to things. Like, yeah. 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 Like, yeah you say dumb things. Yeah. You, you say the wrong thing. You say dumb. Yeah. Let's so, move on. It's fine. Yeah, Watch it, the racing. Right. Dude. Todd Harris and Lee Diffie have been employed by a major network to call, uh, you know, cheerleading competitions, uh, dirt bikes, uh, F1, um, Olympics for... 25 years they're good they're fine they're good yeah. they're not somebody said i think we're done with this guy but i think this guy says get fro back in with ricky who's calling the action then like that was fine too like i had no big deal about that either like who's calling the action if you put fro and ricky together who's doing the who's play taking by you to play? commercials right and in and out who's and doing like the reads it, who's doing the reads who's telling you but about even then telling you I about dateline mind. right <laughs> like, it's ridiculous there's a lot happening all right, motorsport.com, tweet at talent segment. Let's do it. No, that's my mom. It's the motorsport.com, tweets at talent segment. <laughs> what the hell is that? No. I forgot about that. That's yeah, it's a new intro. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's definitely new. It's new. It's, that's like a it's cat take, scratching on a mirror. It's taking it? the world by storm. <laughs> it really is. It's the talk of the pits. That intro. Cat scratching on a window. Motorsport.com. Those who ride dirt bikes, motorcycles, ATVs, and UTVs know Motorsport is the best place for OEM and aftermarket parts, riding gear, and accessories. Their dedicated team of gearheads have the knowledge and expertise to help get your ride working at peak performance. They've got uh, uh, free shipping, uh, free delivery on orders over $79. Uh, you can get it the next day in some cases. You can have great return policy. The guys all there will help you out. Guys and girls down there will help you out. They're really, really handy. I get my OEM parts for the Project 500 from them. I get my aftermarket stuff from them. Go through the banner on popamex.com or popamexshow.com if you're making a purchase and we get a small slice of that. We have a specials on there as well from some of our partners. Like right now, if you buy a set of Starcross 5s, you get a free set of tubes. And that's on the Pulpamex Show section on motorsport.com. So please check that out and help us out if you can. We really appreciate it. Uh, these are questions submitted to at Pulpamex Show on Twitter. And uh, the guy in the corner over there reads them. Reads them out. I don't pick the best ones this week. Okay. I was just Oh. From last week, you said I didn't pick the I'm best sorry, ones. bro. I didn't get anything down. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm tired. Okay, I'm tired. Todd Harris would have got it. Yeah. I'm tired. I'm just tired. <laughs> I feel tired. All right. First one Are from... Are you kidding me? Parker Felish 107. Is Mookie racing outdoors? Thought he was SX only, but he sure is riding a lot of outdoors with the team. Is he just helping develop the bike or racing? I don't think he's outdoors. 
I don't know why he's been practicing outdoors so much. Maybe yeah. just because they're all riding outdoors. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, strange. From Pimmy Tatterson. We think Craig will be on a four fifty outdoors yeah. for them. By the way. Yeah. Yeah. He is for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Pimmy Tatterson. Do you think J Mart at KTM could be a possibility if AP passes on the deal? No, because he said he's probably going to ride two fifty again. He kind of has to, right? Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. From T Smith O nine one forty one for oh, JT. Yes, Cooper is very talented on a bike, but does his mind games put him a step ahead? And does Roxon playing the nice game hurt him? Uh, yeah. I mean, Webb's one of Webb's biggest strengths is certainly his mental uh, outlook and tactics that he plays. I would say that Roxon is more naturally talented on a motorcycle than Webb, uh, but Webb is he has a lot of other talents that he brings that kind of make him a complete package. So. Um, yeah, I don't. Two two questions there. The first one, yeah, Webb's one of his biggest strengths is mentally for sure. All right, next one from Studio Cat Five. Steve, whatever happened to Lee McCollum after JGR closed up? I don't know what he's doing actually. What is Leroy doing? Do we know? Mm-hmm. Um, he was, he took he was one of the last guys to leave JGR. He had a lot of stuff to do for the for the shop and everything. So I don't know. I'm going there next week. I'll I'll ask him. I think next Wednesday, everybody. The Papa Mech Show will be on next Wednesday from JGR HQ in uh, in Charlotte, North Carolina. So uh, stay tuned for that. What so is, what does Buzzard do now? Buzzard retired, got fired. Yeah, I don't know. Just yeah, nothing. Yeah, nothing. Is yeah. J Bone working for the NASCAR team? Yes, he's working on the NASCAR side. What's his title? Do you know? He will be on the Pulp Show next Wednesday night. Okay, tune in. Awesome. Thank you. From Stu Baca, two forty three, could Stu Baylor run top fifteen in a motocross race? Stu doesn't look like he's like an Iron Man in shape. But Caleb Russell, Josh Strang was top 20 when Strang came out. Remember on an RMZ a few years no. ago? Yeah, yeah, I get it. Strang was top yeah, 20. Yeah, he was. He ran there. Yeah. He was 20, 21st. Uh, so he was the national? Yeah, a couple Strang of did? Really? Yeah. yeah. I don't remember. Uh, I think he'd be around. I think he would qualify and he would be good. I just don't think he'd no, score points. Of course, points. we saw Caleb. I've never seen know? him ride, so I have no idea. Right. I'm just going to shut up. Yeah, he's good. Blue crew. Blue crew. Uh, KRM 732. What do you think, Townley? You're the off-road specialist on the Pulp Mech Show. I uh, I think we'll see top 15 from Caleb Outdoors this year, but what I don't know about Stu. Stu. Okay. I, I Honestly, I think Stu might be quicker one lap speed than Caleb. I don't know. I've never really seen him on a moto track, but he yeah. rides moto a lot. He practices moto a lot. Caleb's riding 250, though. Josh Strang has no motocross results. And then he didn't get a point then. Yeah, that's what I'm no, saying. He, was he like, would still get. No, he he'd, would st- he'd be in the vault. He raced. He's not in the vault. He should be in the vault. He raced. He's not. I gave him goggles. Okay. He's not here. He did race. No, I agree with Steve. He did race. Yeah. I think it was like Southwick or one of those. One I think he did a couple of them. Yeah. Hmm. From KRM 732, do you think that Eli not getting to go home each week and train at higher elevation due to multiple races at one venue could be contributing to the decline in performance? No, no, I don't. I don't. I don't believe so. Uh, from Tyler Connor five nineteen. What was the reason McGrath left Honda after ninety six? Um, Josh Strangs rode Red Bud eleven years ago. Okay. And he got twentieth. He scored a point. Oh, nice. Yeah, in twenty twenty eight. Twenty twenty eight. Yep. Uh, McGrath did not like the 97 CR frame when they switched to aluminum frame to answer the yes question. Rigid. RC valve. Or, as I like to tell Shane Drew, he quit because of you because Shane was going to be his mechanic. <laughs> really? Yeah. Huh. Shane was set to be his mechanic because uh, Skip left. And I always tell Shane it was your fault. So. That's fair. Yep. From T Hall 767. Can riders who sell merch possibly get links on the fantasy site similar to sponsor links? I'm trying to think of ways to get these riders to think positively about fantasy. Yahoo has links to buy players' jerseys on your team, so something similar to that. I don't know an answer. Why, why are you looking at me? Well, can you give these guys um, links or you're going to be a dick? They're probably going to be a dick. <laughs> okay, you're going to shit on privateers. <laughs> being honest. Pew, pew. Yeah. No, it's not me. You don't have a reason. <laughs> you don't have one? I'm asking him. <laughs> oh, but he said no, so how come you don't have a pew? Here, 
I got you. Uh, right. Yeah, on myself. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Don't care. <laughs> Don't Mark care. Just pewed himself. <laughs> you pewed yourself. <laughs> From Jason Hall One, JT. I'm 200 points off the lead in fantasy. Is it time to send it? Uh, sure. Five rounds to go. Yeah, but man. I don't think you really have to send it. You just need to get a little bit more aggressive. If you if you go full send, you're just going to blow your team up. I have a major announcement for Pulp MX 2022. Chris Kiefer will be joining and playing every week. So nice. stay tuned for that. I am not. Bring yep. it in. Yep. Nope. My pay will have to go up. Hey, buddy! And Pulp MX payroll to go play this game. Can that just be a requirement of all Pulp MX employees mm -hmm. that they have to play? And there's a fine every week that they don't enter a team? Yeah. Can I be a I'm exempt, of course, because I'm done playing. He'll be so. Marshawn Lynch. I'm just here so I don't get fined. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right. From Beaks and Talons, how do you think Dean Wilson's next few years play out? Results aren't up there, but he has a large, uh, large supportive fan base. What do you think? I think he's on his own next year. I think he'll have to find something else. Yeah. See, I think he could. I think he would end up at a place like Rocky Mountain KTM, something like that. I mean, if you look at the situation they've been in, it's been like Benny and is Bogle. Is Bogle out, by the way? I don't know. Oh. But I'm just saying like – No, Dean I meant is Bogle out for the five rounds? I, I don't is know. he hurt? Okay. I don't know. Okay. I didn't mean next year. Yeah. Um, but like he would f he would be a nice fit in yeah. somewhere like that. So I, I don't think he'll be on his own. Maybe not Rockstar Factory Husqvarna. Yeah. But he's pretty talented. He can be a top ten guy. He's going to end up somewhere. Dude, he's done it on his own two years and got rides out of that deal. Right. So he's not even scared to do it like for the yeah. first little bit, right? Uh, from Brandon Knoll 7 for Kiefer. Will Pro Circuit ever sell the short TI6 muffler that they run on the team bikes? Also, did Steve, uh, Steve, did you guys get a new Bassett? Uh, no, they will not sell that ever. There's a lot of things that uh, <laughs> PC, FMF, Yosh, that they make for the race team. How's the Acra thing going? Uh, did I help with that at all? Yes. Okay. Uh, and it. Yes, you did. Okay. And it comes to find out she I was emailing her, and for some reason she wasn't getting the emails. Mm. Okay. So it has helped. Okay. Um, but, yeah, production consumer products are sometimes a little bit different than uh, race team products, which is one of my pet peeves in our industry, is um, if you're going to make something for your guys, and granted I know certain mufflers only work for their engines and things, but yeah, I have, I I mean, have yeah. ridden with race team stuff on s production engines, and it has been really, really good. And I've always asked, why can't you make this? And I always get the same answer, two answers, cost and I don't know. So if it is a cost thing, why not mark it up a shit ton? I bet you it would sell still because you could call it a race spec muffler, mark it up, sell it, it would go. Okay. Smorsky 281, JT. Why is Steve so hard-headed, stubborn, and unwilling to see the other side when it comes to certain That's topics or opinions on things he doesn't agree with? Oh, like JT and Joe Robbie Stadium? Like that? <laughs> uh, I don't know. He's been that way as long as I've ever known. So that's going on 23 years. I don't think he's going to change. Hmm. Fuzz Sanders for Kiefer. What is JT working on? He is so into that computer. Dude, I don't know. Homeboy has been on his laptop that, that is, since the start of this show. That's my number one complaint with him. Do you have this thing open all the time? Yeah, he, he's sending emails. He's on his phone. When we do podcasts, you'll miss a complete sentence. And then you'll circle back and be like, huh? Who are we talking about? <laughs> and we'll be like, like you got, you, you're always it multitasking. Happens. There's always something going on. Like, Weege has phone issues. I'm multitasking. You just Your gotta, takes are terrible. Like, you, somebody, you, somebody has a got, weakness. You got to... <laughs> You got to settle has, in. Everybody has a weakness. And focus. Everybody has a weakness. We got shell game over here. We yeah, got all different right. kinds of shit. You got to focus. Just everybody has a weakness. It's fine. From Steve's Hot Tub, who does MCR sign next year? This I year has been horrible for them I listen this to year. all these sports shows, podcasts. You know, I mean, I'm into it. You know that. I've never heard the guests on the line be like, hey, what do you think of, uh, of uh, John Elway signing of this quarterback, which is probably terrible, by the way. But if what do you think of John Elway signing the quarterback? I've never heard the guests go, who are we talking about here? <laughs> like, th and that's what you do. Do they do six a week? It doesn't matter. Sure but it does. Then you go, who are we talking about? Huh? And I'll be like. Shot who? I'll be like, Sexton. We just said Sexton. Speaking of hot tub, why aren't we doing a segment in the hot tub again with the ladies? Why can't I we don't do think we knew Heather was coming up. Did we know that? Oh, but we can plan it. We can, yeah. Okay. Big hit last time. Yes. Yeah, big hit. How's the views on that YouTube uh, uh, clip? Yeah, oh, they're good. Okay. They're good. All right. 
Shocking. Si- side boob is huge. Side boob. So I remember, I, I did read one comment that said, if I had to drown, I would want Heather's boobs to save my yes. life. Yes. I think that was the most, uh, most liked comment on the video. Yes. There we go. Congratulations, Heather. <laughs> All right, next question. From Steve's Hot Tub. Who does MCR sign next year? This year has Ooh. been horrible for them compared to years past. Well, they have Vince Freeze. He'll be back. I'm riding Vince's bike next week. Are you? Yeah. Uh, honestly, Don't McEl- take anybody out. <laughs> I just go ape shit on the track. <laughs> <laughs> McElrath could go back for sure. I mean, we don't know what he is yet. He's had back injury. You know, like, I don't feel like the jury's in or out on him. Benny's having a terrible year. Tick's not been good. I yeah. don't know. There'll that. be someone like that. Yeah. 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 And they'll be on 22's real bikes right. next year. Yeah. Maybe Mike races. Jeff's back. Mike he, is Jeff, racing. Jeff Loretta's. Race. Open from, Pro Sport. Uh, from the voice of the drunken people for JT, what in the hell is up with Ducati's start devices, and does Kevin Moran's have one? Oh, my God. Who? Is this MotoGP? The first part is. Yeah. Kevin Moran's is not right. MotoGP. Uh, they are impressive they get the whole they get starts by like a mile i don't know they have a front one and a rear one and then you add in the fact that the ducatis have more power than everybody else anyway so it's it's but really impressive is, to watch is, is what the gentleman is saying is the is the nobody uses the front one they do they all do yeah so this is a rear one they're too. just better they have it a better setting for it and they have more power than everybody else so it's like the combination of those two things kevin Rance does it not a, have the ducati start device does he have a ducati motor maybe yeah well, is Vale still racing? I can't say what Roger Nian got for him at Arlington. Maybe, maybe you, it was a Ducati. Do you, um, what did you say? Is Vale still racing? Vale. Yeah. What's his name? Forty six. Colorado. No. Forty six. Valley. Valley. Valentino Rossi. Yeah. Uh, yes. Okay. He's not doing very well. What How old is he now? Forty two. It's not going well. It, um, do they have? A, is their start device like a Moto One? Just plug it in. This, the fork, it's it's fork uh, collapses and they put it in. A f- yeah, but they have. It, theirs is way more advanced. It's <laughs> shocking, not hooked shocking. into a fork guard. Right, right. <laughs> shocking. They have buttons and hydraulics and yeah, all kinds yeah. of shit going on. Right. They when they're in the in a turn, they have a setting now where the the rear is held down so they get better traction. Oh, no way. Exiting yeah, yeah, the corners. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's insane. Wow. Those bikes are so. So great. they hit a button. It goes yeah. <sighs> New KTM is gonna be. So like you know if it would decompress yeah and come up and then you lose traction huh. they have it holds it down right like it's yeah. crazy all right all right last two uh, MX Racer 540 home life seems to be pretty good for Tomac after seeing he has another baby on the way so why isn't he blazing fast no, like the previous I, I, years I, I don't know yeah it's, if it's not bad he's not bad so why is he it's with his lady is he gonna be he's gonna win the outdoor title okay fair enough. Last one from <laughs> Jesse318. Are you surprised COVID hasn't been more of a factor in the series? From the outside, it doesn't look like the title contenders are concerned about testing positive and having to miss a race. Who are we talking about? See? <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, Let's just be a drop. Yeah, we we thought someone would. Well, A-Ray got it. <laughs> Shocking. What, anybody- what did I say? What did I say on the show before all this shit happened? Like, who do you think? That was the question. Who do you think is going to get it first? I said A Ray. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't feel like that's a wild off the mark guess. I'm just saying. Right. Fuck my ass. <laughs> <laughs> He's oh, just. That's horrible. <laughs> in my ass. <laughs> yeah, I'm surprised uh, more people ha- haven't tested positive for sure. I had a rider tell me the whole thing's an illusion. An illusion? The nurses. Like a magic trick? Are not nurses. They're wind up toys? They are just. Paid by Feld. Is this like Willy Wonka's chocolate factory? Nothing. There's no tests. There's, they're, they're, wait, they're making you wait for nothing. Oh, the Feld testing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Got Feld it. testing is, 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 a, is nothing. You know, I, I watched them do the test. Like, they mix it up. They shake. Like nope. Wait, uh, no. It's all it's not for an, show. It's not an AV test. And I said, I said okay. I've read about. Shake it like a sauce. I said, but these nurses have been different. I've seen the nurses. Yeah. They're, they're different. And this, this person said, nope, there's two sets of nurses, and that's it. That's and they're all true. on the payroll. That's not true. No, listen, I'm just... I'm, Is it I'm, a good rider or just a rider? It's a good rider. Okay. And I'm like, I don't know what to tell you, man. Like, I feel like it's a real test. I feel like they're really checking people. I feel like this is a... Is he a flat it, earther? It's, it, no, I don't believe so. <laughs> I don't believe so. That's, it was not Tevin Tapia. <laughs> no. So, anyways, that, I was just telling you guys. Just, listen, COVID's real. It is what it is. It's like... But do you believe that Feld is 
no. actually doing tests. Do you no. know how much of a pain right. in the ass and how expensive this has been for Feld? Well, actually, we pay for the tests, so. I'm saying COVID, like oh, yeah, as yeah. an entire. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I, he's talking the tests. He's he's talking. The Why tests. would they do that? What do they? What would they <laughs> care? I know. It's I'm, I'm crazy. I'm this is crazy talk. What? Yeah, they're doing the times. Yeah. <laughs> is that me? Okay. <laughs> I do feel like someone I we talked before the year. JT agreed. We thought a major guy would miss races with a COVID test because if you look at NBA, NHL, I mean the Vancouver Canucks aren't playing right now. Yeah, go to the uh, get a COVID party going. That's what I'm, t- that's uh, what I'm saying. NHL got NBA. Like every sport has had major people miss time yeah, with COVID. You need a COVID party. And in Supercross, just Alex Ray. They they listen to the show. They I said, stand, "Fuck it, let's get that I guy." I stand by yeah. my get COVID early, and then you're good. And I think probably most of those guys probably had it already. Think so? Yeah. I don't know. I do. I did think somebody would miss it. Yes. I would like to know if I had the antibodies because I I really didn't stop traveling like last year. I was all over the place. You never got sick. I, I mean, I could have been asymptomatic. I don't know. But have you been sick? Like this is just a normal sick. Not really. No, not really. I had it. You had it already? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I would not be surprised because I mean I was here. I was in California. I was I was all over. Like I didn't stop a whole lot. And for me, there were people that never left their house. I know the people that stayed yeah. working and they got it. So I traveled the world and somehow didn't come into contact with it. I would say I probably had it and was asymptomatic right. would be my guess. All right. No! That's horrible. <laughs> All right, everybody. That's a wrap on the motorsport.com. That is tweet the at worst talent. intro and outro I've oh, ever take heard. Take it up with the – I don't Mr. even know it, what it Mr. is. Mr. Swizzcore. Sounds like a horse being That was us violated. Uh, Crushing the beaks for Daniel Blair's. Uh, Ta- what his is name it? is Talon. Oh, the Eagle Grit. The his Eagle name Grit. Is Talon. Yeah. Yes, crushing the beaks. Talon. Lone Wolf. Talon of beaks. Ah, got, got it. it. Yep. <laughs> all right, everybody. Uh, Motorsport.com. <laughs> uh, tweet a Talon segment. Uh, all right, Kiefer, are you ready? Oh yeah. I'm gonna list off our sponsors. Okay. First thing that comes to your mind. Oh, am I in this too, or just sure. one? Sure. Yeah, one. Oh, yeah. yeah. Give are me you paying attention? Yeah. Or are you on your phone? Well, okay. depends. Motorsport.com. Uh, Stanky. Fly racing. Me. Decal works. Boobs. Race tech suspension engine. Paul Feed. Vortex racing. Uh, Team Yamaha. Vertex pistons. Mitch Payton. X brand goggles. Rich Taylor. Mission Starcross 5. Randy Richardson. Firepower batteries and chains. Uh, 490-2531. <laughs> <laughs> Maxima USA. Dogger. Pro filter. Pre-oiled filters. Skosh. Oh, those boom boxes are awesome. Oh, yeah. Boom bottles. Boom, boom bottles. Yeah, boom yep. boxes? Whatever. Oh, boom bottles. Oh, ORW. I got two of them. Uh, truck parts. You could have said Mumphy. I, yeah, I don't yep. know much about FMF. it. FMF. Little D and Big D. Atlas Neck Brace. Chiz. Works Connection. Steve Lamson. Guts Racing. Andy Gregg has hot secretaries. Okay. Get Data. <laughs> Lots of stories about Dan Truman. <laughs> OGO Power Sports. Pilo. Yeah. Art of Sport. Everything's under $10. WUSA. John Anderson. Ooh, Kristen Anderson. <laughs> Kristen Anderson, <laughs> Thank yes. You. Let's take that back. Uh, Unbelievable. MotorcycleIndustryJobs.com. Alex Baylon. Works Chassis Lab. Uh, Michael Lindsay. Intense Cycles. Boost Life. Boost life. <laughs> Boost. <laughs> Thirty minute rides. You can't be on Boost Life. Yeah, you can. It's bullshit. You can. All right, do you want to do Key Feather Dark? Um Yeah, why not? Let's do we have a couple questions. We'll make it quick. What's a quick hit? Okay. Pull yeah. out your uh I'll pull it out. There you go. Pull out your uh your read. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Uh all right everybody, we're gonna go to we're gonna go uh fade away here. We're gonna come back with Kiefer after dark. So if you have any little ones or any if you're offended by some heavy duty uh, sex talk. Uh, uh, please turn the show off, and uh, and we'll 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 see you next week. But for now, thanks to uh, Chad Reed, Robbie Wageman, and Chiz for coming on. No thanks to Kenny Watson as well. Uh, all right, we're gonna fade right back. We'll be right back with Kiefer after dark. <laughs> I'm here for the gangbang. All right, everybody. Grillyourassoff.com. Love this company. Love these spices. Uh, Ma Deuce is fantastic. It is amazing. Uh, you like Willie Pete? How are we doing on Willie Pete's at home? 
We're good. Okay. Go on, Willie, Willie Pete. You're good. Yep. Um, love go your ass off. Com. Please use it on meat, chicken, poultry, which is the same as chicken, or use it on chicken or poultry. Uh, Todd Harris wouldn't have fucked it up. <laughs> uh, grow your ass off. Com. Use code PulpMX to save yourself money at those guys as well. Um, Kiefer, you love it? I love beating my meat, Steve. I love beating my meat. That's right. That guy said it. How much do I love it, Steve? You love it a lot. Yes. I'll do it on the back deck, in the kitchen, at my neighbor's barbecue. Oh, God. Just about anywhere I can. The only requirement is that I use grill your ass off to really top off that tender meat with a variety of flavors to satisfy even the pickiest, pickiest taste buds, Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> with flavors it's like not a porn read, like, <laughs> with gun, kind of is. Yeah. with flavors like gunpowder for steak, infidel for pork. <laughs> you can't go wrong. Check out the full lineup of seasonings, jerky, sauces. I'm here to fix the cobble. <laughs> yeah. And gear at grillyourassoff.com. That's where you go to get uh, those special seasonings. Stuff. Have you tried it, Marks? Anymore? <laughs> Have you been using it? Yes, I do. Uh, I don't use it as much as I would like, but when I do, I thoroughly enjoy it. I need to know. I need to ask I need to the grow your ass off guys. If you so generally speaking, I'll get some chicken. Uh, put put Heather's mic on because she have something to tell you about this. Okay. Yep. Yes. If I have some chicken or some steak, I'll plan it a day ahead and be like, "Hey, Pookie, I'm gonna have some chicken or steak. I'm gonna have chicken or steak oh, chicken tomorrow. Or poultry. What do you want? <laughs> tomorrow. So then I get the meat and I put the grow your ass off and mm-hmm. I put it in the fridge. So I leave it for 24 hours okay. before I cook it up. Yeah. But sometimes I'm like, ah, grab a steak. We'll have it tonight. And then is that enough time for the for the seasoning to really work? Yeah, because I just put it on when I'm cooking. Do you really? You never you never pre-season anything? No. Not setting-wise, no. And it'll still taste just as good? Mm-hmm. You want to know what it kicks ass in, the, mm-hmm. the Willy Pete's? What? So you, you Willy Pete it in the, in the poultry. Yeah. Right? Uh, Chicken. Because you've cooked this how many no, I'm, times? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell JT oh, no, something. He, he just sits on the couch. And I know. bring him dinner. Right. Easy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Chicken quesadillas with Willie, Willie Pete's. <coughs> I haven't had chick- quesadilla in three years. I know, but <sighs> that's what we go to with you. Chicken quesadillas. That's what your go-to was back in the day, it right? It was. Right. That is money. So if you want to try it, grill your ass off. Willie Pete's no. chicken quesadillas. Ma deuce with steak. Do a steak quesadilla. With my deuce. Right. It's amazing. All right. A mm-hmm. couple of questions, really short and easy. Tonight. I want to get everybody's uh, answers on these two. GrowYourAssOff.com. Okay. Uh, John says, Kiefer, what is your preference for the ladies? Bald is beautiful. Landing strip. 70s porn star full rug. <laughs> and do you have a say in what Heather runs? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, yeah. I got to say. You okay. want to know why? Yeah. Babe. Yes. How are we looking right now? Bald. Right. What was it before last month? What was that about? L- landing strip. Boom. I say I need this this month, this this month. Oh. And just oh. mix it up. Oh, you mix it up. Yeah. What do you like, Stephen? What is this like a Willie Pete's thing? Like you have different Maduce Willie yeah. Pete's. Bring it to me now. I need uh, a <laughs> I need a strip. Bring it to me now, <laughs> tech man. Uh, uh, I'm a five. Like whatever. Yeah. No. <laughs> five. So you don't care, bald muff. We don't. You don't care. Yeah, I don't want the '70s porn <laughs> uh, rug. I'm gonna t- I'm gonna XNA option three, but whatever. Put JT, oh God. you prefer? I don't play this game. Why? No. Come oh on. Oh my God. I guarantee you know what Marx's chick does. Stripped. Of course. Yes. She all Brazilianed up. Yeah, always. Not uh, not always, but yeah. Hey, Beeks. <laughs> <laughs> what, you, what do you like? Uh, landing stripper shaved. Okay. Not like 70s. I'm with Steve on that. I don't mind. Like, I would like Heather sometimes just to grow a full muff. No, no, no. no. Nobody wants that. JT I, might. Maybe that's why he's not answering. No. I, I'm, I, I'm, I feel sick to my stomach thinking about it. Okay. So, so bald or strip? No, 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 no. Certainly not option C. Okay, well, option C is off the plate. Just turn your shirt, I don't, I don't, turn I'm, your shirt I'm inside out, out and let's I'm talk. Out. I'm not on this game. <laughs> turn your shirt Continue on. Out. It's not really a game. It's a segment. He's yeah. like Travis Preston right now. Oh, he is. Him and Travis. Although on. I think Travis would actually answer the question. No, he wouldn't. Yeah, he would. No, he would All right, from CJ. I really like that Kiefer guy. CJ, uh, Kiefer, you often mention home life for racers. What is expected from a female counterpart to fulfill home life duties and make it easier on racers, privateers, and factory guys, daily routines, after dark fulfillment, Etc. I'll let you take it. This is great for you. This is what you do for me. 
Do they, you're really good at do it. Do you mind the timing? Oh, yeah, you answer your own question. Besides, <laughs> besides that timing thing, like, what do you do to make everything easier? Pack your lunch, make you dinner, take care of your gear bag, wash your gear, get the van dialed in for you. Yeah. Um, she pulls out gear on race day. She'll set it out. She just gets things organized. Although, I did put his gear away a week ago. Oh, boy. And homie uses his jersey to tie it around his waist to get undressed. Yeah. So my junk ain't coming out, yeah. right? I'd already put everything away and zipped up his bag. Well, then he throws his jersey at me. So I just unzip it and throw it in a compartment. We get home and hell breaks loose. Why the fuck's my jersey? I'm like, I don't know. I put it in your bag. It's not in here. I fucking lost it. La, 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 la. I'm like, what it is your problem? It was a test jersey and I needed to take a picture of something, right? Mm -hmm. And I thought it was gone and I didn't F that much. I just said, dude. Oh, uh, you were pissed. Aiden comes in. He's like, dad's on one. Watch out. I'm like, yeah, I know. Yeah. Well, she found it. So she takes care of things. Yep. Mm -hmm. A woman uh, off the track, she'll handle stuff for you. Um, that maybe you need taken care of. Like you said, you take care of dinner. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, she takes care of dinner. I witnessed it. It's good dinners, right? Yeah. Like great dinners, but then you sit on the couch and she brings you everything. What do you do when Pookie makes dinner? I'm making dinner with her. I'm helping. I shredded cheese the other night. So you're telling me Pookie just never makes dinner on her own? No, I'm usually helping. Hmm. I mean, I'm sure she has. Who barbecues? I do. Oh, yeah. See, I try to barbecue. She won't let me. No. Yeah, I barbecue. So anyway, you just take care of a lot of odds and ends mm -hmm. for me and helps alleviate a lot of other things that I should do, but I don't have to because she does it. I wouldn't let Wygant barbecue. <laughs> no. Wygant no. told us the other day he can't cook burgers. He keeps burning them. He goes by feel. <laughs> so he said he cooked He said he said cooked his burgers for 30 30, minutes. 35 minutes on 240. 250 degrees at 35 minutes. <laughs> oh, my God. Were they just this big when they pulled them out? Dude. He didn't know what he kept. He kept going in five-minute intervals, and I'm like, how hot are you? 250 degrees. What the hell are you doing? 30 are minutes. Are you smoking this thing? Oh, my God, <laughs> dude. It's he can't much. cook burgers. It's like a Thanksgiving turkey. Like he he has no idea what he's doing. So the wife's on it all the time. Then obviously. Well, she won't let him have any like the pink. slightest pink in the hamburger at all. It's got to be on that too. Well, it's got so he's into this spot where now he's just cooking charcoal briquettes. <laughs> like <laughs> it's not going well. Uh, he is thirty minutes. Put sauce on. Thirty minutes. A oh burger. My God. I said, Weege, that's like seven minutes aside. Flip it, done it. Call it a day. Oh, that is awesome. Oh, yeah. Oh that's God. right up your alley, though. You like your shit chard. I do. I don't like no pink. Right. He likes no pink. Yeah. Really? Yeah. And then he puts A1 on a steak and uh, ruins a well good steak. Well, you have steak. to if you cook it that. Yeah. <laughs> if you, good God. If it's fried, you have to do something. I so. made tri-tip last night, and I cut it. You know, I let it rest for a little bit, and then I cut it, and there was a little bit of pink on yeah. some of them. Yeah. Oh. This food, like, it was not it was like the juice that was red and this was like <gasps> oh man that's that's I'm where out. it's at i like well done i had to go stick it back well on I'm the grill you got to ever like go to like a nice steak place and they're like you excuse me yeah they don't like that yeah, yeah. no no they tits, don't like uh, that. tits's tomahawk was too rare for me though yeah tits so good. was mad was so good too. tits was mad yeah, yeah. you're ruining it yeah. um and pink. as far as after dark stuff for home life oh yeah i don't mm. we don't really have that problem right. you know like i'm a i'm a two times Two to three times a week, sex guy, right? Yeah. I don't. I don't. Ha I don't need sex a lot, so two to three times it's average. I love beating my meat. So. Mm -hmm. All right, we have a KAD on the phone. Okay. Yeah. Snow. Snow. What's going on? You got a key for after dark question? Uh, brought to you by GrillYourAssOff.com. Uh, yeah. How's it going, guys? Good. What's um, up? So, first of all, key for two to three times, man. Uh, I'm. I got at least. Four to five, maybe, maybe even. More. How old? Are, how old are you? Uh, Twenty-eight. Yeah, That's probably yeah. the difference exactly. there. But yeah. It's, Do you have kids? The God forbid, there's like a knot hole in a tree. It's it's fucked up. Right. Wow. Hey. Uh, wow. Um, so, question. The. Uh, Spit it out, bro. There's, there's. I'm, I'm trying to think of how to word this correctly. I'm not going to go full Jake Weimer on you though. Um, Mm -hmm. So being being in, or at least, well, actually, this might be geared more towards JT, actually, now oh. I think about J it. JT's <laughs> out on this. He's not listening. <laughs> oh, shit. what I get for not listening all this whole night, huh? Come on, man. He pro he's probably a little more on the, the single life game right now. Yep. I feel like this whole pandemic has just screwed 
the all the single people. Why? Because no one wants to do anything right now. I mean, all nah, they do. To they do all that. Just just show them a negative COVID test. You're good. Is that what it is? Yeah, you got to email <laughs> them over a negative COVID test. Send them your right. ad- address in the subject line. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and we have a lot of single friends, and honestly, like for single, honestly, I, from, well, I speaks over there from. From my single friend side, as guys, they get more action because they don't have to go do anything else. The chick's just coming over to bang, and she's bailing. Talon, how are we finding it on the pandemic-wise? I mean, obviously, you've broken your back here, so maybe things have slowed. But Yeah, I haven't really tried since the back, but I'm sure, like, Tinder's still going. I'm sure it's Did a chick sure break your back? Uh, my blue crew, if you want oh, to. She's okay. a chick, yeah. No, let's see. Then maybe it's di- SoCal's a little different than NorCal because NorCal, I just got here, like, six months ago mm-hmm. it sucks it is terrible i've never had this kind of bad luck this so, is a terrible run so far alabama they don't they didn't give a shit they don't they don't care at all over mm-hmm. there it's like free for all um but yeah i got here and it's, it's no good maybe i need to take a trip down to socal then if that's the case yeah uh, move your location yeah, I, on your app there and put it down to socal and see what you can swipe <laughs> that's actually a pretty good idea right my, my that and then send over uh, maybe i'll just post a picture of the of the of a negative covid test and we'll be, we'll be square well, that if you swipe right in socal and she's da- she's dtf you can drive six hours for box that's not a big deal uh, six hours for box <laughs> yeah i mean we'll do that then fuck yeah. it all right. Yeah. all right thanks for calling in buddy <laughs> thanks snow and good luck good luck with everything uh all right well that's another great edition of keep after dark probably grow your ass off.com crew were you saying K-E-D earlier? K-A-D. K-I-D? K-A-D. Okay. It's a little Keith bit of E-A. <laughs> yeah. uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, thanks to Chad Reed, Robbie Wageman, Kyle Chisholm for coming on. Uh, Kiefer, thank you. Thank Real you. fun day today, uh, that five-mile ride. Thanks, uh, yep. thanks Sorry for about that. that. I yeah. thought it was great. <laughs> uh, but good. Hey, have fun tomorrow riding. We're going dirt bike riding. Oh, it's going to be good. JT is red, ride red now. Yeah. No wing, no prayer. We need to set a sag. Probably. Yeah, we need to. It's a 130 pound child right here. Yeah, yeah. All right. We'll work on that sag. Yeah. What do we sh- What should we run? Uh, 105. Okay. Yep. All right. How many inches is that? That's about uh, four and a bit. Four and four inches. Yeah. Uh, all right. We'll check that out. Uh, so please check it. And thanks to Jason at Western Raceway for prepping a track for us tomorrow. Nice. Very nice. Yeah, good show, boys. Awesome. Good show, B. Uh, Talon, thank you. Thank you. Better uh, than tits. Marks, thank you. <laughs> nice. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. Uh, we will be uh, on location in Charlotte next Wednesday for the show. And then we're back the Monday after that uh, with Paul Parabinos in studio. So that should be great. Um, and JT, thanks for coming in. Appreciate you're it. Welcome. Always fun times. Thanks to our guests. Thanks to you people. Buy yourself a Yamaha LCQ Challenge. Heather, thank you for coming in. Mm-hmm. You're welcome. God bless <laughs> you. Kinetic Mesh know. Friday. Kinetic <laughs> Mesh Check Friday. It out. If you don't hear from me yeah. by tomorrow right. morning, right. come look What's the me. poll at? Before we go, what's the poll at? Uh, it's about like 64% Chris. Yep. All right. Well, fair enough. We'll update that tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Sorry, Dominion's going to come in and flip that shit real quick. Thanks to, uh, <laughs> oh, thanks no. to Pookie. Thanks to uh, Swiss Core. Thanks to Moser, of course. Uh, and uh, thank you people for listening. Marks, did I thank you already? Yeah, you can thank me again, though, if you want. Right. <laughs> you're welcome. Thanks, Marks. Yeah, you're welcome. All right, everybody. We're out of here. Thanks for listening. Lipstick on your dipstick? There's something I want to get off my chest. And it's about that summer. When you went away to community college, I got an offer to do Playgirl magazine, and I did it. I did a full spread for Playgirl magazine. I, I mean spread.